try this one. Pick one, two. Check one, two, mic check. Thank you for saying something on YouTube too. Sorry about that. I'm doing a bunch of work here in the background. I apologize. Um, yeah, I'm trying to change the music up. I'm trying to get some music so we don't catch any more copyright strikes. I'm, I'm, I'm about to, like, they're going to shut my channel down. That's pretty much where we are with that. So uh, I'm going to try pretzel and see if that works. It's like 20 or 30 bucks a month. Uh, we'll see if that works for us. I might, I, uh, so I had a, so window, the new windows, what it does is when it updates, it, um, it's like intuitive and how I use windows is probably inappropriate, right? It's my, windows isn't built to do what I'm doing with it. So, uh, whenever it updates, it goes back in and resets, uh, a bunch of, I've got a, like a, uh, a uh, mixing board that's virtual and then virtual audio cables and I have to manage I don't know six different inputs of sound to a mixing board with expanders compressors with global settings and local settings and all this other crap and uh, what it does is it comes in and it resets I gotta reset my displays and then it reset uh, where my home my main display was and then it also um, that impacts, uh, of course, Streamlabs, what it picks for displays. And then it messes with all of the audio from the uh, Microsoft Windows side all the way into Streamlabs. So I got to go in and like reset every local setting and then every um, global setting and then the Windows settings. And I got to go through 12 different scenes to make sure that they're all right. So as we go through scenes this morning, uh, there's a few things I haven't done yet. I just had to reset my computer again. So um, give me one quick second here because you guys can't see some of the, not can't see, but there's nothing there until I uh, bring it up for you. Just give me one quick second here so I can prep uh, for the day here with you. Give me one quick second here. Okay. Good morning. How's everybody doing out there? Good to see you all. Um, tried to get some rest. I'm losing my voice here uh, pretty badly. Um, I lost my voice last night, and then this morning I woke up. I was really fucked up. And I have to uh, programming note that I have a um, an affiliate meeting this morning with um, the boys, with uh, Joe Donut. Every Thursday we do it at 1130 to 130. 
and it has to be during the daytime during uh, re normal business hours uh, so we're going to switch over and just take a quick look at some stuff here it's really fascinating um, you, as you guys know i've been um as you guys know over the years i've traded paramount on a merger deal in m a and it looks like something finally has happened uh for paramount but even just the chance of a of a of a mer of an M a with uh paramount it's like a seasonal trade take it in like december and you hold it through q1 and they finally got theirs or i think they might have gotten theirs um so and that's good what else did i do yesterday oh and then of course i'm talking to uh mr yen yesterday and I went, I was like, damn, I got this new, I got a new arm. I got this expensive, like, arm that I've never used. I've got this, like, uh, XLR microphone that I haven't used because I went down the rabbit hole of a, so or a soundboard and interface. And, uh, of course, I went down that rabbit hole last night again, and I'm still in the rabbit hole again with no decisions. I don't want to make a wrong choice because they're so expensive. They're, like, they're like 700 bucks. Uh, they can go up to like a thousand bucks, and I don't want to fucking pay the money if it's the if it's the wrong thing. Uh, so, anyways, this morning, uh, what do we got this morning? Uh, do do uh, oil prices could spike to one hundred dollars if Iran directly attacks anal uh, Israel? And I'll say, yeah, that's just an oil trade. We're in season for some of this stuff too. It's kind of weird. I was uh, last night. I was reading. I get some articles for you this morning too. But last night I was reading some articles, and I'm like. All this shit these people are talking about is just seasonal shit that they want to trade. Or not trade, but buy. It's like ohm. It's all ohm shit. And I'm just like, why are you acting like, like, why the fuck are you acting like? It's just like this story right here. You know, oil prices go to $100. Gas prices could too. I'm like, you're at the, you're like right near the end of your season, or I think you're in the start of the season for, ga or for gas and end of season for oil. So whatever. Um <laughs> Uh, city says this high risk, uh, but attractive global stock has 200% uh, upside. Wholesale prices rose 0.2% uh, in March, less than expected. Uh, that's good to see. Goldman Sachs uh, promotes head of strategy and investor relations, Carrie Hallio, to build global treasure. Congratulations. Um, the super core inflation measure shows Fed may have a real problem on its hands. We'll talk about that at some point, too. Um, the, the mechanics of all this stuff. Uh, Russia claims it foiled a British-led sabotage plot. 200,000 left without pop power. Pff, that's bullshit. Uh, Ford recalls 43,000 SUVs. I heard about that because of a gas leak they can't fix. Uh, Goldman still expects U.S. inflation to fall significantly as markets uh, alarmed by recent rise. We'll talk about the mechanics of all this stuff at some point today if we can, if we can get to it. Uh, there's a lot going on in the background. There's a lot of, um, like, we're, we're getting into that stage of this. Um, where we're going to have more more questions, I guess, on uh, rates and impact of rates um, on inflation, stuff like that. So we'll talk about that if we can today as well um, as, P as this gets this information gets digested. And also last night in the um, also last night in the market brief, I had said uh, the thing that really piqued my interest was um, the thing that really piqued my interest is uh, so Lane Bernard, uh, Lael Bernard was kind of hinting that we were going to get a soft print. And then Bostick, the hawk, of course, uh, kind of confirmed it as well, right? If you listen to Bostick, he came off as very dovish. Uh, so I was left with, like, piqued my interest. I'm like, you know, this really reminds me of a, um, I didn't want to say this in the market brief. I don't think I said it in the market brief, but, uh, well, I did say something about, I think they're ad adversarial. Uh, it reminds me of them being adversarial in, like, I remember 2017. Uh, they were very hostile, and it makes me think. I didn't know this part. I don't know if I said it in the market brief, but I wonder if there's some hostility because of the constant uh, uh, argument that the Fed is uh, acting the way that it is because of the president, uh, that the, the president's bitch, right? Um, they're beholden to the elections, and it was maybe like a little bit of a of a like a what do they call that like a monkey bite or something right where you just turn around or something and you try to bite the hand on your shoulder and the fed to me um it's making me think that uh it's it's a warning to not trust the fed and what's fascinating is jerome even said uh the last fmc minute or last last fmc and the one before i think he even specifically said we're not adversarial 
Uh, but this report right here makes me think that they are going to become uh, more adversarial, or I would at least say, be aware of it. If you are a market participant that has not been in this market uh, before COVID, uh, the Fed used to be very adversarial and they were very dangerous. Um, it didn't matter which way we were going or whatever the market thought was happening, they would come out and fucking bend people over uh, at the worst possible moment. They would telegraph things and then they would come out in public uh, Senate hearings, they would do it all the time, and it was just brutal. Uh, so I wonder if that's coming uh, coming our way in the future as well. Vietnamese property tycoon sentenced the death of the country's biggest ever financial fraud. This is systemic fraud within Vietnam, of course. Uh, you should read. This is a fascinating story, by the way. I was able to read that this morning. Um, Google launches uh, launching AI photo eraser for iPhone and Android phones in May. Uh, Trump media director accused of hacking files and attempted corporate coup. The lawsuit say, says, uh, Vertex, pharmaceuticals, bets on kidney disease, treatment $4.9 billion. Uh, what else do we see here? Uh, Biden administration may, may start for, uh, forgiving loans, student debt before 2024 presidential election cycle. Okay, uh, that's all we got right there. On the financial juice this morning. We got Barkin, Barkin this morning. Uh, we should talk about some of this stuff. Um, Japan's going to come into play here uh, with the dollar and the yen um, right now. And the, Japan needs to do something uh, right now. The, the USD uh, JPY, oh, man. I don't think it's going to keep going higher. I think it's going to, you might get like a FOMO trade higher possibly. A bit, so maybe some more squeeze into 155 maybe 164 and a half depending on how crazy it gets uh but be aware of that uh usd uh, jpy trade and also the dollar right the strength in the dollar uh is a concern as not a concern but kind of concern as you see though the stuff going on with yelling over in china uh as well at the same time uh what else do we have here now yeah, we got some russia bullshit down below we got lots of fed speakers just blabbing blabbing uh, there's some other stuff we're going to talk about today, too, with the um, uh, EU and stuff, uh, ECB, what they're going to do. Are they going to cut rates before or after the U.S. cuts rates? Uh, so uh, EU or e ECB is re almost ready to cut rates by June. Uh, so that brings up a question of will they not cut rates until the, um, until the U.S. cuts rates? They might be bluffing us that they're not cutting rates. we got to talk about this today at some point. There's a lot of shit going on. There's a lot of like, there was like bullshit with like, well, we're getting 13 fucking cuts this year in November, December. Now people are like, we're never getting any more cuts. That's all bullshit too. You are likely, I know, I know J Jimmy's out there going to say that ain't happening, but uh, I don't see us not getting a cut uh, this year. I don't see it. I don't see it with the ECB. So and they're going to hold off until uh, we make a cut. So we're, they, they could force us into a cut, uh, believe it or not. Um Feds, uh, Feds, George, a long-term strong dollar could become financial worry. I agree with that as well. But they're, Yellen's, of course, trying to uh, cheapen the dollar again. Uh, IMF's managing director, uh, George Giva, China must take on new economic course because what has worked in the past cannot be sustained in the future. Feds bark in the latest inflation data did not increase confidence uh, that disinflation is spreading in the economy. Uh, the latest inflation data. This is bull. Some of this is bullshit. We got to talk about this shit. Uh, we have to talk about this stuff. Uh, they're like they're associating uh, inflation coming down with like prices going down pre 2019. That shit ain't ever happened. Never. Well, it can happen if we have a disinflationary period. That's that's a recession. Uh, Impossible. That's a recession. It's the only way that that happens. So, are they saying they're trying to create a recession? I don't know. Uh, so there's, it's like counter, it's counter to, um, uh, to them saying soft landing. There, there's also another map. There's also another path that no one really talks about. You, you always hear the hard landing, soft landing. There's also a no landing situation where that's probably what we're going to focus on today, uh, which is a no landing situation. So Williams is out here blabbing, blabbing, blabbing right now. Barkin's out here blabbing, blabbing, blabbing right now. Uh, inflation data raises the question if we're seeing a shift, um, you know, we could be seeing a shift to a no-landing situation. And we'll talk 
If you guys don't know what a no landing is, we'll t discuss that this morning at some point. Um, on to uh, economic news, right? Today is Thursday. Uh, let me see here. Are we on the 11th right now? Yeah. Uh, we had initial claims at 8.30, uh, PPI at 30 core PPI at 30 PPI year over year, blah, 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 blah. We got Bowman speaking at 8.45 this morning. Then you have uh, Susan Collins speaking at 12. 12.45, we've got uh, Goolsby. And then we've got uh, Bostick speaking at 1.30. I'm fascinated to hear what, what Bostick has to say particularly. Uh, normally, they come in and they kind of clean this shit, shit up on a... Um, I wish they had just done it with a rate cut. They usually clean this shit up with um, like whatever the, whatever the reaction is to the Fed. They, they come in on like a Thursday, Friday, and they reinterpret for you what, what's happening. Uh, I wish they just done a fucking... Two, this should have just done a 0.25. We would have rolled the market straight down. The depths of hell if they had just given one rate cut. Um, it would have been easier. And then they could have added another. They could have uh, raised rates down the road. Uh, would they have done this in the past? I'll show you examples of it later today. Uh, so anyways, uh, we've got all that crap coming out here today. And then tomorrow we've got the import price index. We've got the consumer sent, uh, sentiment at 10 a.m. Uh, for Also for today, uh, being Thursday, we've got, uh, do we have any, uh, yeah, we got a 15-year mortgage rate at 12 o'clock 30-year mortgage rate at 12 o'clock the big one though is at 1 p.m 30-year bond auction so put that on your calendar uh for today at 1 p.m uh be sitting on your hands regardless if we're going up or down uh, uh in case the opposite trade ends up happening uh this morning for tomorrow some of the bigger things coming out of course is uh, consumer sentiment uh we've got the export and import prices at 8 30. And then let me see if I see anything else here. Not too much. Uh, Bostick, is he speaking twice? Oh, fuck, dude. I don't even want to hear this fucking guy. I'll be honest with you guys. I don't even want to fucking hear him. Because uh, now I don't trust him. Now I don't trust anything that comes out of his fucking mouth. And I don't trust the fucking Fed from this point forward. Uh, I've got zero trust. I, I, in my view right now, they are adversarial. adversarial so I'm not going to trust them at this point forward. Um, so we'll get rid of all this stuff here. Boom, boom, boom. We're going to go over to the open ground position. I got a lot of work to do here. Okay, so let's take a look at the marketplace here and see what what uh, has taken place since yesterday. So now we've got this whole zone, right? Consolidation zone. We are underneath the daily trigger. This was the low. Let's take a look at that really quick. This was the low that we needed to get a new low on. <coughs> Excuse me. Where's all my jams over here? Where's all the chat? Hold on here. Give me that chat. chat so tiny. Get that chat back up there. There we go. I'm going to get that chat back up there. And uh, where is uh, my ugly mug? I'll put that back up there. Whoa. And uh, where is there a frame or something? I got a frame over there. Um, Jim getting coffee. Open the bells. Open the balls. Uh, why is this so far over here? All right, I don't know why that is, but it's kind of wonky. So let's look right over here. So I just want to show you this, okay? So you got to always watch what the robots are doing. Uh, always want to be watching what the robots are doing, what the algorithms are doing, and you try to you try to be like right to the tick. So right there, that yellow or that white line, I'm gonna make that yellow. So this is the uh, prior low, right, of the break of the daily trigger. This is a lesson moment, right? We break underneath the daily trigger right here. First time we did, right, broke underneath it. Recovered here, but they pinned the market as the hourly trigger was coming down, right? And so we are looking for a rejection of the, uh, where we're looking for price to break through the daily trigger, create its low, which it did right here. It's at 511.27. And then you're seeing uh, the hourly trigger. We're waiting for the hourly trigger to come down, right, for a retest. So we got that retest this morning, right? And as a matter of fact, the low this morning in pre-market, way down here, right? Whoop. Way down here, this is the pre-market low. We're also going to snap a line there. Or, oh, can I do a little box right here? A little tiny box right here, because this is the fake money, right? We all know that uh, futures are fake, right? Pre-market's fake. Futures are fake. The squeeze up at the end of the day is fake. All that shit is fake. 
uh, you want real cash market pricing, right? That's where the real market is. I know a futures trader is going to be in, in the background at home going, fuck you, man. <laughs> but it's fake, fake money, right? Uh, low volume environment. So right here is the pre-market low. Uh, so the first thing you're looking for as a bull is do we stay above the pre-market low? And we still have not broken uh, the low from uh, the break of the daily trigger. So you got this one right here, this one right here. This stuff right here still has not broken. It has to break. Um, and the reason being is this. I'm going to show it to you right now. So you get the cross this morning, right? Uh, we come down here. We get the cross. We escape the cross. Whoop. And the bulls can't hold on to the hourly trigger, can they? Uh, which is bad. So that is good for the bears, right? Check mark, bears, yay, big smiles. They're happy as all hell right now. They're like, hell yeah. The bulls were not able to hold on to 5, uh, 15, 0, 5, I think it was. Um, and the bulls needed to do that. And they did not do that, did they? You can see it right here. We squoze above, right before the cross. Squoze above, bulls not able to hold on to it. What did the bears do to you? Sent it right back down, right? Fuck you. You get a, a five trigger cluster, sent it all the way down. So now the bears, though, still have not confirmed a fucking correction. Even now, they're at the last point of it. This is the last part of the trade for the bears. They now just need, they've got the uh, break of the daily trigger with price. They've got the hourly trigger about to cross. It still isn't crossed, but it's, they're right there. And they're sending it right back down right now to get what? You guys know? They're sending it down to get, uh, they've got the cross of price below daily trigger. They've got the hourly trigger cross down below. And now they just, all they need literally is to come right here. Just a tick. So the algorithms only need to get right here. If the algorithms are able to get price right there, you have a confirmed correction. You get, it's very dangerous. Uh, from that point, you'd be selling and not buying a dip. You'd be selling a rip until conditions improve. Listen to that closely from me. Uh, you, will, you will, from this point on a new low, any rip, you're going to sell. Every single one on the half hour trigger uh, to start until conditions improve. You need a piece of paper and pen. You want to come back and rewind all of this so you can write this stuff down. I go over it with you all the time. I go over it with you in the market briefs. I go over it with you in the show all the time. Uh, so you want to be very prepared for that this morning if we get that new low. That new low is 511.26. 511.26. All a bear needs. They're, this bear, these bears right here, that will confirm a correction. That's all they need. Or it'll confirm that we're in a, in, in a corrective uh, environment. Uh, so we'll see if they get it. If they don't get it, uh, and we can get back above that early trigger before the cross, uh, the bulls will be, you know, fighting for their fucking lives and seeing if they can escape. If they can pull a Millennium Falcon and get out of here. Um, okay, so uh, that's where you are right now, where, where the market is right now. Uh, if you're a seller, you want to see this happen. Sellers want to see that confirmation. Sellers want a new low change this up a little bit and sellers want a new low uh, to confirm a correction and that's not like um oh we're gonna the correction's over that's we're starting a correction we're not we've we've been in a pullback believe it or not if you, i don't know if you know that or not We've been in a pullback. We have not been in a correction. As a matter of fact, price this morning uh, was at uh, five sixteen zero one. That was these these are this is the middle of the consolidation five sixteen zero five. Uh, so th so we're not even we haven't even gotten started. If you if you think we've gotten started selling, oh no 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 no. <laughs> we you haven't seen shit yet. If we if we start to correct, it's gonna get bloody bloody if it happens bloody okay so now let's pay attention to this see what happens you know how to trade this already uh this is diddle in the middle you always want to be uh you always want to be selling off these back tests right here and if you are a bear you're going to be using from this point forward the half an hour trigger uh and get aggressive on it not even the hourly trigger i i tend to use the um 
the half power trigger for the first three down moves, like one, two, three. And then right towards the end, you can usually get a pullback to the hourly trigger. Um, and once that each leg is down, we may come back up and retest the daily trigger. But you want to be getting fucking aggressive on this half hour trigger right here if you're a seller. Uh, let me get rid of that. This is your place right here to sell. I'm going to draw it out for you, make it really simple. Right there, you're selling that shit right there. Right there is what you're selling. Well, I guess on this on this part of the trade, um, this is for visual representation. You're likely going to be selling just the one-minute trigger here. Back test one-minute trigger, bam, straight down right now. But if you're a seller, you're, you're, you're like posting up right on this, this gray bar right here. You just post up on this fucking thing. And uh, you're gonna you're gonna get some kick-ass trades, kick-ass trades, and I'll be I'll be trading it with you, so uh, I'll become a seller with you here. I want to see this happen first. Though. I want to see the new low. Right there, put it right there. Okay, let me get rid of some of this stuff and do, 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 do. one quick second. Uh, so rotating charts, I had a bunch up, I had to delete them or not delete them. I had to reset the, um, computer. And so I got, oh shit, we got to go over to the main screen. Hold on. Here. Hold on there. Hold on. So I did, I did have to, uh, close all of these charts here and, uh, I'm going to bring them back up for you right now. Okay. Uh, so the first one is the, I put Dixie up. If you guys want to call out some tickers for me to put up here for you in just a moment, uh, after I get the regular charts up, you can. Give me a few moments. I'm not going to read your chat at the moment as I get some of these up. So there's Dixie. I'm going to do the VIX 9 day. And, uh, oh, wrong one. The VIX 9 day. And I want to show you this one particularly. I'm particularly interested in this one. Uh, because we are coming up. If you this is VIX nine, what where does it say VIX nine day here? The reason I want to show you guys this one is because right here. The reason I want to show you this VIX nine day is because we keep pounding into this monthly resistance here, uh, with declining uh highs. It's very bullish, and you've got a cross now of the daily over the weekly trigger on the VIX nine day. Now we have normally been selling off this VIX nine day, put on a daily, hold on a second, put on a daily basis for you here. Uh, but when we do break above, anytime we do break above this stuff, I want, oh, we did have a VIX nine day in here. Okay, whatever. Uh, what I wanna show you about this though, is if we break above the monthly and quarterly trigger right here, it can be an explosive upside move on the nine day VIX, right? straight up here and what ends up happening is we ends up coming back down but you'll get a violent move down in the uh spy and Qs and all that kind of stuff so uh be aware of this this morning of the vix nine day and if it does begin to break above uh the right here break this right here i'm gonna leave this on a 30 minute basis but uh, let me see here I'm gonna leave this on a 30 minute basis. But I want you to let's watch well, let's put back to the let's put back to the daily here. Uh, let me see. Give me one quick second here. Right down in here. Bring this to a 30 minute basis. And I want you to see this right there. I want you to keep your eyes on uh, this nine day VIX if it begins to become explosive. And it's, it looks like it's setting up. So you see where we are right now. It looks like it's setting up for us to, you know, get a squeeze up to the half hour trigger and straight bloodbath down to the depths of hell. Straight bloodbath up to down to the depths of hell. You saw my target earlier. That's 506. In the market brief right down here. That's a pretty nasty move right there, right? Talking about 
A nice, what is that, 514 uh, down to 506. That's a major drop, right? Major, major drop down there. Um, so we'll see if they can get that corrective action going today. This will be some hot sauce if this happens. This is going to make the rest of the week look like child's play. Uh, straight up, straight up child's play. Uh, we'll get we'll get some we'll get some moving. We haven't had anything like this in uh, since October. I think we had one pretty decent pullback once, but it still wasn't a correction because we didn't break below the daily trigger. But we, if we start selling, it's gonna get. You want to see some fucking fun? It's been a while, right? It's been since uh, October twelfth when the last time it ended. Last time we got really nasty with the selling. Okay, so we'll keep our eyes on this down below. Uh, let me make sure I got this right. Make sure I got the, uh, make sure I got the target right down here. I don't want to be telling you guys something that's not real. It's right about there. Right about there. Damn it! God damn it, Kenny. Who said or who said this morning? Um, someone said something about babies' kids this morning. That shit made me laugh my ass off. Whichever one of you said babies' kids this morning, you had me almost in tears. <laughs> you had me almost in tears here <laughs> this morning when you said that. Someone made a comment about babies' kids. I haven't seen that show in so long. Didn't that guy die like unexpectedly? I think he was like a comedian and have dying um uh unexpectedly. If that's the case, uh I haven't seen Bebe's kids in like uh I don't know. Uh fuck, it's been like long time. Long, long time. Uh what else? Uh okay, anyway, so um, you guys know what you're looking for here. Let's put this back over here for you. I'll make this smaller. It doesn't need to be a bit that's so big. 28. Right there. We're going to leave that right there, just like that. Uh, okay, Dixie on the rise right now. VIX 9 day, we're paying attention to it, right? Uh, we got the Dixie, the VIX nine day. We're also going to do a bunch more charts. We're going to do um, Dixie, VIX nine day. We're going to do the, um, we'll do the uh, USD, uh, JPY. There it is. Uh, we're going to do the um, USD, USD, JPY. And the reason I want to talk to you about is this. Um, USD, JPY. It's at historical a historical high. Well, this is a bigger conversation for later on. I want to show you guys this really quick. See where you are right now. Uh, this is not good. This is going to require an intervention by the B of J, one way or another. There ain't no way around it. And uh, this should be reversing here, and it's not. I want you to see this. This should be reversing, and it's not. So what happens is when you bang on the door this much, when you're, like, slamming on the door, let me go down there and just show it to you. Am I in the, am I in the wrong goddamn chart? Come on. Oh, there we go. So this is the uh, USD uh, pairs trade. This is not good for bulls seeing this, okay? They had a pullback. Or there was an expectation uh, that we would actually roll. Not just roll, but roll down to like 140. Like way down here. Like 140. And we've been pounding for the first time. Like pound, 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 pound. What that means is that you end up getting a FOMO trade. And they squeeze uh, the US dollar and J uh, JPY. And the target is high as fuck it is uh 155 right here that's your first target and this actually turns into support 
in the high target. You ready for it? You're not going to believe this. If any of you guys trade pairs, it's like 165 and a half, way up here. That's the high trade. This will force uh, an, an intervention if they ever, if we ever get that high. Um, but be aware of this because this is real dangerous to, um, real dangerous to. Um, this is the collapse of the yen, basically. Uh, and it's a it's a very sketchy thing, uh, bank failures, that kind of stuff in Japan. So just be aware of this stuff. Uh, this is really a real threat to um, our markets, believe it or not. So you want to pay close attention to USD, uh, JPY, um, dollar yen. Next one we're going to look at is uh, we got Dixie, VIX nine day, US uh, dollar, JPY. What else are we going to look at here? Um, we're going to look at um, Qs, of course. We'll do the Qs. Q's still hanging on right now. They haven't fucking rolled over yet. They're still hanging on for dear life. Buyers still stepping in down below. Still a new low. So still no, still no uh, defi definition or definitive um, call on Q's right now. IWM. We're gonna do that one next. Smalls, baby. Small caps. We'll do small caps next. IWM fighting its way back. Uh, they did get a new low though. Uh, so smalls, uh, what is smalls telling us here? They are in a correction right now. And, uh, why are they in a correction? Because they're telling you that we're not getting a great cut, which I think is bullshit, but they are in a correction right now. So be careful of IWM. Stay far away from it until you hear the discussion start back up that they're going to cut rates. Um, so IWM. Very unhealthy right now. Uh, does not look good at all. Uh, will also likely dull any kind of upside movements in spoos. Won't stop upside movements uh, from happening, but uh, this is not good for the market. Uh, this this makes the market pretty sick right now. And they did get their new low down below. Uh, let me change this. I'm going to expect a new low down below now on IWM. And they are trying to sell the hourly trigger right now. I want you to watch this right here. They got their new low. They're rejecting off their hourly trigger and their half an hour trigger. Uh, as of right now, new target to the downside. Bam, right down. The, oh, hold on. I expect that move to 194, believe it or not. Um, 194. Until conditions improve, stay the fuck away from IWM if you're a bull. Stay away from it until conditions improve. That would mean that we'd need to be above 204 today. You need to be above 204.23 uh, with a successful back test of the hourly trigger on a cross above the daily trigger with the hourly trigger. So you got Q's, IWM. We'll do Tesla next because uh, everybody's been on Tesla. So we'll look at Tesla as well. And you already have, you already have my uh, charting of Tesla here. I told you Tesla would reject, and you would get a low of 140, and the correction in Tesla will be over. Uh, you'd be expecting, it's not going to be a straight shot, but after that, you should be expecting a move to 300 uh, on Tesla. Move to 300 on Tesla. Uh, and I do want to warn you of something else. If 140 is lost, if 140 is lost on Tesla, right, if we come down here, we break 140 and begin to reject, you will have a meltdown in Tesla to the quarterly uh, trigger. That is currently at eighty dollars seventy nine change. Uh, you'll have a quick trip down here, and I would tell you one more thing: you should expect a major news announcement on that bloodbath down to the quarterly trigger. Whenever we uh, lose this purple line, whenever we lose this quarterly, and we go down to a um, a uh, six month trigger. Normally, uh, there is material uh, problems for a company, CEO change. Uh, accounting shit, uh, merger and acquisition. It's always something really fucking bad. Um, as a matter of fact, when we, when we lost this up here, I told you guys on Twitter, I said, whenever this, uh, whenever we reject here, it was earlier than I expected, but I said, whenever we do reject this, expect bad news. And they just rained back bad news on you across the company. 
I would expect uh, not this move, but this move right here. You're going to expect whatever you heard the past few weeks, that ain't shit. Uh, you're going to hear some really nasty news at some point. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it'll be, but it'll definitely come out one way or another. Uh, so Tesla uh, still on its path to 140 at this point uh, this morning. What else do we got here? Um, so we got Tesla. Bam. What, how about uh, you guys give me some charts that you want? What charts do you want to see? I got to make this bigger. Hold on. I can't read shit. Dude, I went and got uh, NVIDIA, Apple, um, BA, AMD. Uh, let me take a look. Okay, so the first one I'm going to do here is um, Apple. You know what? I was thinking about Apple last night, too. Oh, Palantir, we have to do, too, don't we? Uh, so Apple, you know what I've been thinking about with Apple? I spent some time thinking about them last night. If you are a longtime follower, if you are a longtime follower of mine, uh, you will recall that I constantly told you uh, that they would cut the legs off of the stool one at a time for an orderly exit from the COVID trade. And they would leave behind the indexes and uh, any of the uh, stonks that were fucking pumped up by the fucking Treasury Department. Um, and one of those tickers was Apple. And they left Apple up, right? They left them up, they left them up, and it looks like they're cutting their legs off now finally, doesn't it? Uh, and a few other tickers associated uh, that held up the market in the 2022 trade. They never came back for them, did they? And it looks like they are coming back for them. Uh, so Apple, I like Apple here. I do like Apple. Let's take a look at Apple really quick. Uh, David Ames was asking. Let's take a look at Apple and see what's going on with them. Now, I will tell you this here. I will tell you this here in Apple. Apple is begging for more down. Why am I saying that? Uh, this right here. This monthly, uh, this monthly uh, velo and this quarterly velo uh, is in decline. This is very dangerous. Uh, and I'm going to explain what this means right now. If quarterly velo was in an or if monthly velo was in an accumulation phase, so if quarterly velo looked like this right now, if quarterly velo was here and making a series of new lows and maybe just starting to come up. I would tell you that the that any price check of the uh, monthly, I'm saying quarterly, but it's monthly. Any check of the monthly should hold, but I am very suspect of that holding. I got to be honest with you, because we're still in a decline from an accumulation that lasted for a very long time. And what's even scarier is you had an even larger accumulation on a, on a um, quarterly basis that's still on a decline, a very dangerous. I'm going to show you some examples of what happens on these declines on Apple right now. Okay, I'm going to show you what happens. They fucking they fucking have a they basically have a uh, have a crash on Apple. You see the break of the hourly trigger, or the monthly trigger right there. I want you to see that right there. See that crash on Apple right here? That was December of 2018. Monster monster move down on apple uh so i'm going to tell you that there is no probably no dip buy at this moment on apple uh the monthly trigger i do not trust right now on apple uh at all i don't trust it at all so let's take a look at it here i will tell you that i don't trust it and i'm actually going to expect a break of the monthly trigger on apple let's take a peek at it There's your first target right here, uh, 150. By the time we get there, let's just call it one, 
148, 147. Now, that doesn't mean Apple can't hold itself. So I'm going to show you the path, uh, the path that it is on right now. Whether you like this or not, this is the path that Apple is on. Breach of 160. Things will get nasty here. Uh, that's the path that it's on. If you uh, are looking for like a day trade, you can still trade this in here. This is a higher time frame. Uh, you can take that day trade there. If you break above, yeah, you can take that if you catch the new high, but still, you're still on that track. You are no safety right now on Apple. There's no safety here. The only way that you would be safe on Apple, safety on Apple, is if you were to see a lot of work take place. Uh, you would need to see... So like, like, hey, when do you want to be an Apple buyer? The only say, I mean, you can day trade this shit in here, but the only way to be a safe uh, Apple, new high right here, you'd need to get a new high at 185. Come back down and test this right here. So above 180 on a retest, uh, you can be a test or an Apple bull again. So a lot of work to be done, right? A lot of danger, a lot of like dodging and weaving. Like David AMS can do this. Uh, but at any moment, this can break and go down. This can break and go down. This can reject and go down. Uh, you need all of this work to be, uh, you need all of this work to be a, once again a Tesla bull. Uh, so there is real risk for you on Tesla to the downside. Just be aware of that on Tesla. That's a fucked up looking. Uh, that's a fucked up looking. Um, <laughs> that's a fucked up looking chart right there, isn't it? Uh, so you, so Tesla still in danger. Even if we squeeze up, even if we trade one seventy nine ninety two, you are in danger on Tesla. I don't hate saying that. Who's calling me right now? People calling me in the middle of the day. Like I'm getting a lot of um, I'm getting a lot of robocalls right now. So there's Tesla for you, or here's Apple for you. You are above the hourly trigger. There you go, an Apple. Also note that they're selling right now. They're still selling this hourly trigger. Just grabbing some liquidity, send it down. Grabbing some liquidity, selling it down. I would expect more of the same you know, on Apple as well. So I'll leave that up for you. But you do have one thing in your favor right now, and that is uh, daily velocity is on your side series of new lows, or uh, higher lows, excuse me, on daily velocity. Um, so you should get a squeeze out of that. Uh, what else are we going to do? A you, I forget you said NVDA, I think. You, some of you guys said NVDA. Got to try to remember what I saw on that chat. NVDA. 30-minute trigger. NVDA with a gorgeous double bottom down here. V-shaped recovery. Looks great. I like it. I like NVDA here. Still like NVDA. Uh, you want to catch a new high here? Why is my thing not working here? I like NVDA's chart the best. Uh, you want to break this high here? 
break that one right there 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 We got one. If you're a bull, that's what you want to see. one right there this one should get just higher right there there something just like that just like that next one pound tear PLTR, right? Palantir. Now, I did hear about Palantir getting taken to the woodshed. Uh, let me take a look at this one. Uh, daily velocity, no new lows yet. Uh, no, no, no higher lows on daily velocity. Probably not done going down. Uh, you are looking at coming up, though, right now for a little bit. Uh, I don't think your correction is over yet. Come on now. Come on now. Something like that. There's your V-shaped recovery on Palantir. I'm not going to put your boxes in and all that shit and kiss off with that stuff right there <laughs> there's palantir uh what else do you have uh you are no worries i gotcha uh you've got some you got like your daily velocity is great this could actually squeeze up to here uh but you're probably gonna get another roll down um and I don't like this daily velocity here. I don't like this right here. So my, my real fear here for Palantir is uh, I never like seeing the daily rolling down. I was, that's what happened right there, right? See it? And you most definitely do not want to get caught with like uh, you squeeze up, the daily drags you back down. You come back up trying to escape, and it grabs you right in here, and then boom, straight down. So there is a trap here for bulls, uh, right about $22. There's a trap here for you waiting. You're not out of the woods yet on Palantir. There's a danger zone down here, and then your real trade is up there. Uh, let's just be really careful. That, and that would put you at uh, 20 bucks, right? Nice flat round number. Double bottom on $20. Maybe you'd have a breach of 20 bucks. Everybody panic sell, and when you should have been getting long in there. Kind of matches up with Tesla too, doesn't it? Kind of matches up to an extent with Tesla. Okay, so there's there's a Palantir, and I bet you that's a halfback trade too. You see that? It's almost a perfect halfback trade. Almost, almost erases just about half of the move. You see it right there? 
So that squeeze right there to take away half of it on you. Capitulation move, continuation of the upside. All, all the math's kind of looking like that, isn't it? Kind of looking like that, isn't it? You're going to trade 20 bucks with a... Whoop, sorry about that. Going to trade 20... Whoopsie. Likely going to trade uh, tw <coughs> 20 bucks, and you're probably going to have somebody out there telling you doom and gloom when that's what you should be buying. Uh, another thing on Palantir, uh, if you are able at any point to get up above uh, 2337 with a successful back test, uh, your correction is over. Uh, so if I'm wrong, you know this isn't a business being right. Uh, but if we do go straight up and we start to um, we start to consolidate on the daily trigger, we finally beat the prior high on that next check. That's when you're going to go long right there. Go long right in there. All right, so there's Palantir. Uh, oh, are we, we going to sell this shit or what? Are we going to sell this fucking market or what? Are we up there now? And then I'm, oh, hold on, sorry about that. My bad. <laughs> are we going to finally sell this shit or what? Here you go, Bears, your turn. Are we going to do this or what? Are you going to sell this shit or what? This is your chance. It's right here. This is your chance. It's your ch your time to shine, Bears. See if they can do it. Still no cross of the hourly trigger and the daily trigger. Still no cross yet. Still no cross of the hourly and daily trigger. Still no new low for the bullet Bears. Come on, Bears. Confirm it for us. Still no cross for the Bears. Still no new low for the Bears. If you, Bears are like, Bears are they got like the trimmers out. They're like, they're like, oh, uh, they get the, honey, can you get the vacuum cleaner? And grab me the flow, but you got to take it down a few inches before I put the fucking razor on it. Over there with the fucking straight edge. Getting the fucking straight edge out. No, 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 honey. Don't bring me the can of the 99 cent can of shaving cream. Bring me the good stuff. He's over there with his fucking woolly mammoth fucking brush from, from a fucking woolly mammoth he took out last two years in 2022. He's like lathering himself all up. <laughs> He's like sprinkling fucking old spice on him like the old white bottle with the red fucking goofy cap they had to spin off like their grandfather used slapping it all over his fucking face <laughs> bring me my tuxedo <laughs> you know it was like hairs hanging out he's like forgot to shave the fucking sh forgot to shave just like the last inch of his hair so it was like a couple long hairs hanging out bring my gold bring, bring my, go my gold cufflinks I've been buying gold <laughs> can't wear bitcoin cufflinks can you <laughs> this is it bears this is your time to shine baby you defend the half hour trigger you defend the hourly trigger this is your show. This is your show time. Uh, TSM. 10.56 right now. I got to hold on. Hold on. TSM. Yeah, I don't see anything with TSM. They're riding the train up. Daily trigger still heading higher. Uh, bullish. Uh, as long as price, you got price above, right? It all looks good to me, right? You buy the dips on the daily trigger. Uh, looking for a buy at 140. I like it. I like the stock. Winky, if you're out there, do you have any tickers you want us to put up before you today? You have Bitcoin. Bitcoin logo-shaped cufflinks with, like, Doge on one. <laughs> Bitcoin on the other. <laughs> 
how about a lot of these tickers you guys are calling out are all trading the same so uh, if you're a pro trader you already get some of these um charts from me um oh xom i gotcha no cl right just xom you don't want cl remember we talked about xom a couple months uh, last month we said it's coming into uh seasonality so tsm i'm going to take that off because uh it's trading like the rest of the ai stocks uh like oh yeah xom baby blooding it out trading 120 Ooh yeah let's take a look at X xom that's the i like this one good job calling out xom let's take a look short the fuck out of it i'm not lying short this fucking thing right into the ground uh right into the fucking ground uh so X xom okay seriously short this fucking thing right into the ground right into the ground uh short this thing right into the ground daily velocity looks like it's maxed out looks like it's starting to roll uh they will let they will, they will definitely trade their daily trigger price target 114.50 price target to start 115 or 114.50 uh, in some change let's call it 115 uh price target right here Good one. I like this is a good one. Good job calling out XOM. Hold on. I like he. Uh blood this shit down. Get a, you need a new low down here. You need to you need to you need to break 120, like 119.80. Right? Uh squeeze back up down here. Just start grinding. One, two, and three. For your for right down there. Uh, you want to break uh, 118.32 uh, for a bloodbath to 115 right there. Uh, boom, boom, and boom. Good one. I like it. Price target, XOM, uh, 115. You need to break, though. You need to break $120. Yeah, this might take more time than it looks like need this need that bad boy right there Ooh. you need to drop some bombs on xom good job on xom good shout out good call on that one okay that's all i'm gonna do because we're gonna rotate these fucking things <laughs> we'll never get through the entire list through the day good shout out on xom i like it i like the short There's XOM. Uh, this is PLTR. Ah, uh, shoot, I got the... I got, God damn it. Dag damn it. Mm -mm -mm. NVDA, Apple, Tesla. IWM, Q's, USD, uh, JPY, Pairs, VIX9, Dixie on the move to the upside. Keep your eyes out there open with Japan. Uh, I'm serious. Like, keep your eyes open on Japan uh, making an announcement. They're going to have to do some shit over there, dude. Fucking the yen will be like 25 cents, won't it? Uh, what else we got here? Time frame? Uh, give me a second here and I'll tell you. I, you, know, I, you know what I hate about... The thing about time frame is like... Um, it's, it's either... For me, it's either time frame or... It's either time or... Or it's time or price. So I put more time on to get the price that I want, right? Um, put more time on to get the price that I want. Uh, hold on here. Sometimes they get it earlier. Sometimes they get it longer. Uh, give me one quick second. I'll see if I can give you some time frame on it. Hang tight. Hang tight.
do 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 Come on now. Where is XOM? Oh, it's so fucking beautiful, isn't it? Oh, uh, that's the right time frame right there. Or here, you know what? How about this? We'll do this one right here. We'll get rid of that. Uh, we'll get rid of all that. How about that? Yeah, that looks like that looks like shit. We'll we'll start from. Well, how about we go to? Uh, how about we go from from? How about we do step by step? How about we take it step by step? We'll go. We'll go from trade to trade. Ah, damn. Why don't we take it step by step? Why don't we start with this? Why don't you take instead of taking it all, how about we do just one right there? Uh, how about the fifteenth? You want some? You want some? Uh, you want some better? And uh, yeah, right there. I gotta clean this up. I'm doing this in the fly. You gotta understand. I'm doing this. I'm doing this like. You gotta understand. I'm doing this in like three. Like, well, how long did that take me to do? Uh, like thirty seconds. So, I'm like not writing this the best. <laughs> but a little bit more. A little bit more time. You only need to get. Oh, dude, these fucking charts that rotate suck. You only need that. That right there. You only need to break that right there. Uh, fifteenth, next uh, six session, six sessions, somewhere in there. Does that work? Uh, so next six sessions on XOM. Okay, you got it. Cool. Yeah, bulls can't take over here until you're above the... You actually have the cross right now of the hourly trigger. Bulls still have no trade. Uh, bears are in control right now. No safety trade for you. Uh, statistically, no safety trade for you. Uh, you can win this trade, but you're statistically not going to. If you were to, if you were to replicate this trade 10 times, you'd be a loser 7 out of 10 times. So you just wait. You wait until what? Until conditions improve. Let me say that to you again. Wait until conditions improve. You want to be a trader that can win seven out of ten trades. You have to. I promise you, between the taxes, the fees, the market crash that you don't see coming, like all the bullshit along the way, you need to be like a seven out of ten winner every fucking ten times. Can't be like 7 out of 10 and then be 3 out of 10. Can't be 7 out of 10 and then 1 out of 10. You got to be consistent over time. Uh, so there is no trade for you as a bull here. You have to wait, even if it goes up. You gotta, I want you guys to remember something out there. I want to be very clear with you, okay? We have this argument a lot. And um, I want to be very clear with you. And I want, and this, this, this applies to our chat. It applies to any Discord you're in. It applies on Twitter, Wall Street Bets, Stock Twits. It applies to the news that you read, that you watch, that you hear. Everywhere out there, right? People are like fucking vampires. Uh, they people are like vampires, and you don't you don't see them unless it's after. Always after, never before, right? So one of the things that we do here is you see me, I'm like, hey, he's right, hey, he's wrong. How many times is he right versus how many times is he wrong? 
Uh, why is he taking this counter trade right now? All this other stuff, right? I want you guys to see what the reality is, right? I want you to see what the reality is. It's important for you. Think about this. You're a trader, right? And you read the books. You watch YouTube. You see things on the news. You see things on uh, Twitter, as, a, as an example, right? But you don't, you're not putting it all together with somebody. When you have somebody that's there with you all day long, the reason that person is there with you all day long is so that you can see the truth about being a winner, being a loser, uh, whether it's good or bad, right or wrong or whatever, right? The, the one thing that a lot of traders, young traders fall into, young investors fall into is they see things uh, that aren't real. So this is a prime example of that. This is a prime example of that. Uh, you are in danger as a bull here, okay? So that three out of 10 times where it does go up, right? You will see people in our chat. You'll see people on Twitter. You'll see the some guy on the news. And they'll say, oh, look, we recovered. And you'll think to yourself, I should have fucking taken that long. That's that hindsight 2020, right? It's the hindsight 2020 vision that you have. But the truth is, um, if it breaks to the downside, that person that would have been standing here telling you, look, I was right, will disappear. They'll dis they won't write a news article. They won't be on Twitter. They won't be on Wall Street Bets. They won't be in our chat or anywhere else. They just disappear. Poop, gone. Like a vampire. Now, the problem with that is that you as an investor and a trader um, are, get caught up, right? And you're like, oh, fuck this and shit and all this stuff. I should have done this. And you get trapped into um, making bad trades, truthfully. So you should be trading with these rules, I'm telling you. Trade with these rules because you don't care what people are saying in public. You have to like get a really thick skin to um, uh, to this stuff, and it, like you should be have like a trader log, right? Uh, when I when I waited, when Captain told me to wait, was I more of a winner or less of a winner? Uh, when Captain told me this is high risk and I took the trade, how many times did it go against me versus how many times did it go with me? Um, you get what I'm saying? Now you get some you get some hints here. Like you get some hints when things are turning around, if the half hour is turning up, if the uh, hourly trigger is breaking above, if velocity is on its way back up, are all good indicators for you. Hey, we should take a long, or this is probably bottom. Oh, we got a V-shape, a V-shape bottom. That kind of stuff is all good indicators for you. But safety is completely different, and the probability of you being a winner is completely fucking different. So. That is a hard thing to a hard thing to master. It's not an easy thing to master because when you're in a chat or you're on Twitter, you're like, "Fuck, I should have fucking bought that bottom, man." That 2020 hindsight vision, that shit will kill you and drive you straight out of this market. I guarantee it. You will fucking get, you will be gone out of this market if you learn that bad habit of listening. I mean, you can listen to your, you can listen to your friends, people you trust. Like, hey, that guy's taking a long here. I trust that guy. I trust David AMS. That's all fine, and that's all good. But the general noise, stay away from that shit. Just stay away from it. Trade your rules. Trade your system, and uh, know when you're in high risk, or at least know how to manage the trade if you're going to take it. So let's say you were going to take this long here, right? You know you have the trade there more than likely. That's it. You can jump back in for that right there, right? That's all you can take. You have to get back out again, right? You don't want to get caught in this bullshit in here, do you? Now what are you looking for to take, right? You're looking to take, you're taking, take what? You get a price above, a little tiny back test, you're in a five-second chart. Boom, you got that. Oops, you got it. And bam, you take that trade. That's all you got right there. You have to get out of that trade once more. You know what I'm saying? Or you're raising your stops along the way. I bought the dip, I bought the dip, I bought the dip. My stops are being raised. My stops are being raised. My stops are being raised because I'm in high risk. Does that make sense? If at any point the liquidation break me to take my stops, boom, you're out of the trade already, right? Um, so, so the, you know, like, like you have a five percent chance, fifteen percent chance, thirty percent chance. You got forty forty percent chance, but once you're above this shit here, right? Once price breaks above, 
Once price breaks above this and it comes back down and confirms it with a new high, it always comes back. That's where you're Johnny on the spot and you know, you're like, that shit right there is like a 95% winner. If I take just that trade right there, just that trade, I didn't fuck around with all this diddling bullshit. I wasn't trying to catch a knife, any of the other noise. I take that one sweet ass trade. And I can consistently take that one sweet ass trade and be disciplined about it. You are going to be a fucking rock star. You're going to be a fucking Hall of Famer. People are going to look up to you and they'll be like, that motherfucker knows what he's doing. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. The, this, the, the truth, 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 truth. Because you got momentum underneath you, right? You've got Momo helping you, you've got buyers behind you, right? You've got, you've got some power behind you. It is, it is the safest of a risky, what we take on is risk every day, trying to limit risk, preserve capital, and make money, right? That's your job here um, so that you guys, you guys can be successful at trading and investing. Let me show you guys something. Let me show you guys something cool. Uh, what's a, give me a ticker uh, that's in decline right now in the chat. Somebody give me a ticker that's in decline right now. Give me a give me a ticker that or give me a ticker that's in decline right now. Is it in decline? It hold on. It intc. Uh, you guys are fast as fuck. Hold on. Let me show you guys something here. Give me one quick second here. I'm gonna give you guys an example. Okay, I can simplify this for you. Piton. <laughs> yeah, let me give you a. Well, I think we can use Tesla as a pretty good example. I think Tesla is a pretty good example. So Tesla is currently in decline, right? Let's go down here on the bottom right hand side. It's a good one. Am I in the wrong one here? Give me one quick second here, guys. Look at this dog shit. This is utter fucking dog shit. Tesla's utter fucking dog shit. You're trying to catch a knife, catch a knife, catch a knife. Work hard, work hard. You're trading it for five fucking seconds. You're in it for half a day. You're in it for a day. You're in it for two days. But it's in decline, right? Look at it. It's fucking dog shit. Down, down, down. Squeeze up. Yeah, we're going to the moon. Nope, fuck you. You're back in it again. You know, oh, you might go all the way down there. It's in decline. You're trying to catch a knife. It's bullshit. It's, it's utter fucking bullshit, right? It's garbage. There are better trades. Let me give you an example of what, te like what this is right here, right? This is Tesla. Uh, no, I don't like that. This is better. So this is Tesla. This is garbage. Let me show you a, a ticker that you want, want to trade. So this is GCT. What is the difference in these two tickers right here? You tell me what you want to be buying looking at just these two tickers right now. You want to be buying something in decline, catching a knife? Or do you want to be buying something that's in, in relative safety going fucking up right now? Now, I love Tesla. Don't get me wrong. I love Tesla. Love it. But you're here to make money. You can love Tesla all you want all day long. You can love it all day long, but you're here to make money. You want to buy more Tesla stock on a low? You should be fucking trading tickers like this that are, that are being moved up. They're currently on their way up. They're not currently on their way down. Do you get what I'm saying? So now... You at home should have a list of stocks. You guys see Winky in our chat, right? You got some of you guys have known Winky on our show for years, right? Look at these. Look, why would you want to chase a fucking knife when you've got an accumulation going on uh, somewhere else? So you might be like, well, Cap, I don't know how to find those tickers. 
All you need is to start charting out or looking at 100 of them. Do two a day, 10 a day, five a day, uh, 20 a day. Uh, make an alarm for yourself on Google and say, I'm going to look at 20 tickers every day. 20 new tickers every day or 10. When I'm done with my trading day, I'm looking for tickers that are on the move to the upside. And you start to set alerts for those tickers or start watching those tickers. Why the fuck would you want to be trying to buy a, a knife drop? Why? I don't know why you would. I don't know why you'd be wanting to buy some kind of nonsense consolidation. Why you'd be wanting to buy something that's getting blooded down to the depths of fucking hell. You want to see accumulation. It's an easy life. It is such an easy life. And what you can do is you make money off that shit. And then when, you, when Tesla bottoms, you're cash fucking rich to buy that bottom. Right? You're so say, oh, Cap told me 140. I'm going to set an alert at 140. And I'm going to set an alert above what? So while Tesla's doing its dog shit right now, Cap told me we're going to 140. Cap also told me if I get above the daily trigger, and right now, until I get above 219, we're not safe in Tesla, believe it or not. You're not safe. Uh, so I'm looking for a low. Uh, maybe, you know what I mean, all this money and a ticker that's on the, on the rise. I'm going to buy a 164.68, save some money to buy 140. I don't think Cap's right. I don't think it's going to 140. I don't think it's going to 80 bucks like Cap said. I've got uh, just made $20,000 on, um, on, on a GCT. I'm going to buy right now on the quarterly trigger. I'm going to throw down uh, seven grand. I'm going to hold $7,000 for uh, 140. And then I'm going to re retain seven grand. And I'm going to throw down three and a half on uh, 80 bucks or maybe in full max on 80 bucks. But if we turn around down there at 140, I'll start fucking DCA and uh, all that money I made on a stock that's actually going up. You get what I'm saying? I think you guys do. <laughs> I want to buy the low. Yeah, so while you're waiting for the low, let me show you how that looks too. I want to show you that too. Let's go back to GCT. It's fairly easy to see a low. So look at this. This is GCT. Some of my favorite tickers, IPOs, right? They, they blood the fuck out of them down to zero. And you're watching it down here, aren't you? You're not buying it. You're just watching it. Right? We're still underneath the daily trigger. But what do you see? You see a cross right here, right? Price over uh, a, a, a daily trigger cross of the weekly. Money shot, right? Money shot. So you're monitoring, monitoring. You're not sitting in here coming on my stream and bitching about your favorite ticker not going up, are you? You're not buying any of that shit. You're just watching it. You're on other things. You're not trapped in here from November of 2022 to June of 2023 in August. Can you imagine having to listen to you talk about that shit for fucking a year? Fucking drive me batty. Now, all of a sudden, you see the cross, and you go, oh, there it is right there. I'm going to jump on that bad boy. You know what I want to see you do? I want to see you come into my stream and go, cop, we just had a cross, and we had a blast up here, and we confirmed it, and we're going to rock and roll, baby. And you're just coming to me saying, cop, I just made bank. Comes back down again, and you go, okay, what's happening down here? Came back down. We confirmed the daily trigger again, cap. Are we going up? Well, fuck yeah, let's put a stop underneath this low right here. Let's put a stop down here, get to get our longs on. And oh my God, we got to cross again. Woohoo! Let's party time. Right? This is all party time. Party time, party time, party time. That's all it is. Party time, party time. I want to party. You want to party. We want to party. We want to make some money. That's, this is the shit you want to be buying. You need buying these fucking lows. And, and as you, we get better at this shit, you'll be like, uh, you know what? You fuck this here. I want the low. I want to buy 24. If it doesn't happen, I've got a thousand tickers that I'm watching. 
Now, if one pops up a week, I can probably find one. You want to be a happy trader, happy investor. You want to be dicking around with something on the decline. Oop. Sorry. <laughs> Squeeze it, baby. Oh, do we have the cross yet? We got the cross right there. And what does that say right there? Bear plane. See it? Bear plane right there. Let's see what happens. Let's put this up so you can see this better. That's the daily trigger right there. It's the half hour trigger. I'm going to move this near my face so that you can see that, um, you can see that, uh, that book map. I still got calls on for May 3rd, too. I still have calls on for May 3rd for uh, 5.30. I'm not willing to sell those fucking things because of earnings. I see you guys talking about earnings in the chat right now. Uh, I don't want to. I, I, I'm like, I figure that I figure that I'm like, am I going to like just, is there going to be like a day at like four, like five past four? Where like Spoo's just cranked green bars it straight up to 5.30 and I can be like, get me out of this trade. <laughs> just get me out of this fucking trade, please. <laughs> okay, I got to go. Uh, the stream's going to stay up. Um, of course, I'll put on CNBC and I'll put the new squawker up for you. I have a meeting between 11.30 and 1.30 every week that I have to do. And we missed our meeting last week. Remember I passed out last week? <laughs> Did you guys hear about that? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I had a meeting uh, with Joe and Bork. And I, it, it didn't start right away. So I'm like, all right, fuck it. I'm going to sit down and uh, pet my dog. And I have this like, nice like sitting area with a, a game room and a, a library. And I sat down, <laughs> this like big comfy chair that I have. Like, you just sit there and you read a book, and, like, the heat was on, and it was kind of rainy and drizzly outside. <laughs> it was, like, the like, it was like one of those grilled cheese and tomato soup days. <laughs> and I just, like, I'm, like, I'm just going to sit right here, right? And uh, so I was doing that. I, I fucking passed out. And you remember when Price was coming down to check the hourly trigger? And uh, my wife thought I was, like, supposed to take a nap, so she just let me sleep. And I, like, panic woke up. I looked at the market and I go, holy fuck, we're going down to the daily trigger or the hourly trigger right now. I got to get on the stream. So like run across the house, right? Run down to the office. And then I'm like, here I am. <laughs> don't buy that hourly trigger. Do you remember that? That was like two weeks ago, last week, I think. I was like, don't buy that fucking hourly trigger right now. <laughs> and we blasted right through it. I think that was the first time we hit the daily trigger. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, did. I, I just, like, power napped, like, deep sleep. Yeah, I think it was last Thursday. Uh, Thursday or Friday, I can't remember. It was one of those two days. <laughs> and, dude, I was out cold, like, cold, sitting straight up in the chair, just out cold. <laughs> I 
I think I think Joe and Bork were like, he's definitely sleeping. <laughs> I think Joe and Bork said they called me too, and I didn't answer. Like I didn't answer the phone. It was like not nothing was waking me up. <laughs> oh, thanks, son. It never ends. <laughs> It was pretty fun. That fucking day was what, dude. I, I kid you guys not, right? I never trade the first two weeks of the quarter. I don't care if it's going straight to the moon. I don't care if it's going down the depths of hell. I fucking hate trading first two weeks of the quarter. It's all fucking horse trading. That's all I see it as every time. I'm like, they're fucking squeezing this shit to sell it, or they're fucking selling it to buy it. It's like, it's like all horse trading to me. I feel like I'm. I feel like at the beginning of every quarter, I'm coming into town, right? And I've been out in the fucking, like, high mountain west plains. And I've been on an adventure for three months. And I come into town the last two weeks of the quarter. And I got my bags. And I'm like, okay, I want to cash all this shit in. Uh, I, I lived. So let's fight another day. And then, like, the first, it starts, like, the two weeks before the quarter. And then, but it's not so bad then. You can kind of figure out what's going to happen. And then, um, but the first two weeks, I hate fucking trading it. Um, and I was telling Joe and Bork this morning, I was like, I was like, because I used to disappear. Um, I used to disappear for two weeks. I would stop streaming. Uh, I'd be like, fuck this. I need a vacation. I need to de-stress myself. And I don't want to deal with this shit. And uh, this is the first quarter I've traded two weeks, the first two weeks of this quarter. And I'm fucking and i made money and i fucking still hate it like i hate 60 point up and down moves on nq i mean i, I just it's just it's not i don't hate it it's just that it's like a lot of work i'm like i feel like i'm getting worked over worked over worked over fighting for everything like um dodge this mine i'm in a minefield dodge that mine dodge this mine boom this one caught my leg <laughs> i lost the leg i'm still here though <laughs> i haven't blown anything up <laughs> I dodged three other mines, so I'm pretty good right now. <laughs> Do I have a plan on taking vacations? I think we discussed it here. Uh, I think we discussed it here in the show briefly. Um, we need to plan that stuff as a group so that you guys are aware. And I need to find a replacement or a way to continue to stream, uh, even if I'm on vacation. So I did this, though. Uh, last, what I did was I looked at my, um, so last night I looked at my, I have a TP link router, but it's not, it's like six years old. Uh, now they have these, um, they have these travel SIM routers. I think it's called a SIM router. And I looked at some last night. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is. I'm going to buy a um, a 5G SIM router. They're not cheap. These fucking things are like anywhere from three to $600 for a quality one. What I think I'm going to do is um, if I can, I'll do remote desktop, but I don't think it's going to be the solution uh, because I have to reset my router every morning at home. Um, I run through so much data here that uh, I have to reset it every day. And I have to reboot. Like this morning's a prime example. Um, my computer reset itself for a forced update. I would have had to have been here uh, to... Um, I would have had to have been here to do work. The remote desktop wouldn't have worked for me, I don't think. Maybe it would have, but I'm not positive. Anyways, you get the gist, right? It's pain in the ass. So, uh, what I was, what do you got? Oh, by the way, Oda Nabunga, I've been meaning to talk to you, my brother. Dude, I don't want to out you right here, but I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to ask you a question. Um, do you like um, RPG minis by chance? Are you involved in RPG minis in any way, shape, or form? I'm not going to out you. Because this might, I, th I think I might have seen you somewhere else in the world. Yes! It is you! Yeah, baby! <laughs> it is you! 
Hold on, get a uh, Ubiquity app. Uh, let me write some of this stuff down. Duder. Okay, Ubiquity and the Starlink. Uh, Oda Nabunga. Dude, I was going to buy a bunch of shit from you this week. For my kids and I. <laughs> my kids and I play Dungeons and Dragons, Duder. And I saw your lots on uh, eBay. Oops, shit. I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> Unify. I'm writing that one down. Dude, you got some nice collections going on, my man. You got some nice shit out there, brother. I was gonna buy some of uh oh, so I was gonna buy some of uh Odin or Bunga's stuff, and I'm like, I'm not gonna do it yet until I find out if it's him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wrote down. I got Unify written down. So last night I was looking at. So last night I was looking at um, sim routers for 5G. My thought was, my thought was, if I took a vacation, I would bring with me a laptop with a 5G sim with. Now, supposedly, they're not all the same. The SIM cards, some of them, you can trick them so they don't know if you're using unlimited or not. Supposedly, you can get around this where I can get, like, 500 uh, BPS, three to 500 BPS uh, download. I've heard people having problems with upload speeds, which we need for the stream. Um, they have caps of, like, 50 and shit like that, so I got to make sure that they have, like, uncapped upload speeds. I can get a laptop with a SIM slot. I did not know that. I did not know that. Now, what about an antenna? Wouldn't I need an antenna or maybe an external antenna or something like that for um, maybe plug it outside of a window or something? I'll look into that too. A laptop with a SIM. Now, I did not know that with a SIM. I did not know that. They're built into the frame. Okay. All right, cool. I will look that up because what I was thinking was this. Even if I do take a vacation, it'd be really cool to have the stream on wherever I am and be able to step in at uh, key moments. Be like, hey, man, watch out for this, or here's your market update. Or I could even just do a market update uh, every day or every night. Instead of me writing a brief, I could just say, I could just draw it out for you and say, this is the stuff to look out for tomorrow. We could switch the format. Instead of a live stream, maybe you get a market brief. Uh, just a once a day for an hour or something like that. So I can buy an antenna with the sims that plug into the via USB. Okay. I've heard, so from my friends that have used Starlink, I've heard mixed, uh, mixed reviews. That's what I was thinking. Oh, we could do that. We could do it. I could do a nightly brief with you. Uh, for like an hour, and then just do a simplified stream that's running so you guys have a place to chat. Um, we could do that, too. Yeah, I like that idea, too, Bork. Yeah, I just pay for it month to month, the Starlink. Yeah, it's more convenient if it's if it's okay. I got you, optimizer. Yeah, better with sat sat comms. I don't think it's um. There are some places that I, there are I gotta think about this because. Spoo's right now trying to trade. This is a great trade right here, by the way. This is actually a really good trade. This is a good one. If you want a good trade, here's a good one. This is a great trade right here. You want to take this for a quick rip? You don't enter the trade yet. But you're watching for just the new high right here. Yeah, trading on a mobile phone. No, I need the break. Uh, but I do want to continue to stream every day. My my goal for this year is even if I'm not sitting here with you present, 
that we have the stream. The reason I was looking last night too is because uh, the reason I was looking at my router last night was because uh, fr so tom the reason I even started this was because uh, last night I read the news and my local news station uh, was uh, selling doom. They were like, expect 45 to 50 mile an hour winds starting Thursday and Friday. And I'm like, what the fuck, really? And so I was like, well, I got to break out the router and make sure that my Jenny is ready to go and all this other nonsense. And um, so I was like, I was like, I got to break all this shit out and make sure I'm ready to rock because I can't lose the stream. This is one of the benefits of uh, the jump, right? My goal is to have the stream up regardless of weather, uh, regardless of um, uh, fucking 50 mile an hour winds. Anyways, that windstorm's not coming until after the close Friday, so we should be fine. But I want to be ready for it uh, if it happens. So then I started thinking about vacation. I'm like, well, I'd really like to be able to stop in and be like, hey, I'm here. I'm over here at this place. Uh, how's the market going? Or how are you guys doing? Or that kind of stuff. So I, my goal here is to try to have the stream up as con as consistently as possible. If I am not able to be here because I'm sick or I'm at a dentist or uh, I'm on vacation or something, that there's some kind of like check-in process uh, with you guys. And if there needs to be a stream, the market's fucking burning. I can have a remote stream up and I can sit down with you guys and that kind of stuff. And the other part too is uh, the chat is key for you guys, I think. Uh, you guys seeing each other every day, even if it's not in the Discord, you get to make, all meet up in the chats of Twitch and YouTube. Yeah, when I get the, I know, dude, I got the butt probe coming, dude. I got the butt probe coming. I would love that. You know, I would love Mr. Yen to step in. If that, if that could ever work out down the road, uh, I'd really, you know, what I'm really looking for is, um, I'm really hoping that like John L. Um, I've talked to John L. in the past, but um, about this, and he's been open to it, but uh, there's no conf confirmation. But I'd really like to get, uh, we, we're we're talking to people about two things or three things. Uh, we're talking about having a Sunday stock show back again, and we're talking about uh, having a nightly brief from um, John L or from someone else. So you'd have someone come on at like nine o'clock at night uh, and, and give you an expectation for the next day, uh, like a market prep from their perspective. And then uh, some kind of like uh, classes. If John L was to give classes or some shit like that, uh, like, like record video classes, it'd be really fucking cool. Um, or maybe have David AMS uh, stream at nighttime would be really fucking cool. Trading uh, futures at nighttime would be badass. Uh, be fucking dope, dope as fuck, dude. If we had a, if we, dude, like if we're like a young stock charts, we have like um, like uh, you know, you just have like different people doing different things, and you can tune into different people. Like stockcharts.com has a really cool YouTube channel. They have different people that do different things, and that's like a network of traders. And it's really fucking cool. It, it, like it, 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 those guys are all getting old, so I'm like, uh, start this with some some younger guys, um, and uh. We could rock, it could be rock and roll. It'd be badass. It'd be super badass. Oh, yeah, baby. We got the new high. Oh, yeah. Send it. Squeeze it. Come on. Do not roll it down. What? Oh, there we go. Okay, so I'll be back with you guys. I'm late to a meeting. They're probably pissed at me right now. Um, they're like, where the fuck is Captain? Uh, or not Captain, but Cappy or Jimmy. Uh, I will see you guys in a little bit, okay? Uh, don't, don't go crazy. <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys in a little bit.
and we think that they will build into more of a mid single digit target with margin upside. So it's a good algorithm. If you look at other really solid retail compounders like TJX, they're trading in the low twenties with upside to twenty five times. We're using a similar I mean look at uh look at C N B C this morning. Quality compounders are back one two. And we think it's appropriate. Like, like C N B C this morning is like um like hey everything's awesome man corrections over we're going up i love it <laughs> you guys ready for earnings season 10 a.m eastern they are in paris unveiling their new olympic kits and the focus there is on innovation and lorraine is pointing to the olympic you got potential catalyst you got your low right you guys are all ready for earnings season we're gonna make some money how many years has he been seeing? correction over everybody a few um he joined so he joined right before covid like january 2020 i think was was early so it's a little over four years yeah and, and then that was a, a quick test i think he went to china right before things really started to get bad at the yeah. first market and that's another question for nike right now because it's much slower growth in china yeah i'm looking forward to that of course uh, with John Donahoe. Speaking of CEOs, Amazon CEO Andy Jassy penning a letter to shareholders this morning. A look at the company's AI ambitions. That'll be next. I ain't selling no rip till I see a cross of the hourly trigger below the daily at a new low. I'm not, I'll say it one more time, no sell the rip until a cross of the hourly below the daily and the new low. Bears so far have failed. They still have not gotten it yet. You need to put your backs into it, Bears. You need to put your backs into it. You need to revenge trade. Revenge trade, Bear. Revenge. Avenge me, Bears. Avenge me. That's not my job. <laughs> Let me turn this on for you, too, so it flips around. That's still bullish. It's more of a FOMO trade right now. and On the uh, pair trade, is more a FOMO trade than it is like a, a fundamental trade at this point. It'll become material above 150. On 155, it'll become material above, above from 155 to 164. Shit'll start breaking. Wheels will start falling off. What up, Jimmy Barry? Good to see you, brother. Oh, look at the doom right here. Bear rage right now. Yeah, HSBC expects Fed Reserve to start cutting interest rates by 25 BPS in June. We're going to talk about this later today. Later today, we're going to have a little chat about interest rates. Uh, we got we got some chatting to do uh, about interest rate cuts. And you're going to see this interest rate cut discussion uh, come back into um, favor again. Now that they push no cuts, they're going to switch on you. Uh, is it material? No. Uh, but we're going to discuss what makes it material. Oh, look at that. Nice little rotation out of gas and oil. Gas, a little bit of rotation. wonder where that money went. That's right. JPM earnings tomorrow. We also, what else? We got State Street. I think State Street's my favorite ticker. Uh, of all the reports tomorrow, State Street's my number one. Uh, I did post a market brief uh, with my expectations and all of those. I think all the banks do well. I th like I think I think Jaime. I think Jaime was dropping you breadcrumbs. He was like AI baby. Uh, he was shitting on AI, and um, so he was shitting on AI and. Uh, then all of a sudden he came out this week and dropped a bunch of bombs out there and I was like that motherfucker was long uh, NVIDIA from, from October <laughs> he was long <laughs> he was long <laughs> yeah WFC uh, we've got, I've got a bunch of charts for him I'll bring them up for you brother before the end of the day I'll bring them up
I think they're, I, dude, I want to tell you guys something. Andy Jassy out with his annual shareholder letter this morning. He says the. I want to tell you guys something. JPM, I played a post. If you look at Q2, Q3, expectations for God. So where's what I want to tell you? So I was talking to Binky on the phone two nights ago. And we were discussing UPS and FedEx. And I was like, I'm going to tell you something, man. No matter what the fuck those reports are, the guidance this this quarter, the guidance. Let's say a company comes in with a, a doesn't beat, they are going to guide stupid uh, for the end of Q2 and the end of Q3. They're gonna give you guidance that's like to the moon. Most of your companies out there are gonna give you a guidance of boom. Expect that in, the, in this earnings season. We'll, I'll write that down. We're going to come back today. And I'm going to talk about a few things. We're going to talk about uh, the JPM ship with uh, GDP. We're going to talk about um, rates and ECB. And uh, earnings season as well. And th if that guidance comes out, if they even if they have a bad if you have the bad quarter, they're just like they're like, we're gonna party like rock stars these next two quarters. None of that shit's priced in. Okay, I'll be back with you in just a little bit. Cloud partner. It's also navigating co-opetition, as he described with NVIDIA using NVIDIA chips while building its own. The third tightrope for Jassy, it's M and A. He has been investing in startups with a minority stake and no board seats. Since it is under so much regulatory scrutiny, Jassy did talk about Amazon's failed acquisition of AI company iRobot. He called it a sad story of a great entrepreneurial company. So they merged with Amazon, and the European Commission um, right. blocks it because they worry that we're going to feature our uh, vacuum cleaner, you know, their, their right. Roomba versus others, which of course is not our model because we make actually at least as much money selling third party items as our own. So what happens? We abdicate. The acquisition. Hundred percent, Jimmy. I agree, brother. A third of its staff. The stock price completely tanks. As far as Wall Street is concerned, Jassy has been effectively managing this balance. But you talk to former employees and former executives. Some of the excitement of the Bezos era has faded a bit, guys. Back to you. What, what does that mean, Kate? What, what excitement are they thinking about when they say something like that? Some of the growth era, if you even listen to sort of the tone of Jassy's annual letter, this is you know his third letter as CEO. Bezos was a founder. You think of Mark Zuckerberg as the same thing at Meta. That you think of Bezos as the visionary. He was the guy that came up with the idea and you know was, was the head of the company. I think with that transition to Jassy as CEO, some of the, the, the moonshot of the excitement has faded. Boston, that Fed may President also be Collins. an effect of the higher interest rates and York. just the new normal in technology and companies where they've got to tighten their belts. Mind, and you're seeing no it pay off in Amazon stock. That's what Wall Street investors want to hear is sort of that cost discipline. That's now playing through throughout the company. You've seen massive layoffs at Amazon and other tech companies. So it is sort of an effect of more discipline, more cost cutting, but also new leadership. So you, it's hard to say which it is, but you know, there's a lot of former Amazon executives that are out here in Silicon Valley in CFO roles, running other companies. And that is sort of just the mentality that you hear. And a lot of them left um, thinking that, yes, it's a great quality company, but there's not as much upside, not as much excitement. And it's not necessarily running like a startup at this point. It's a massive company. You know, it's, it's really an established tech name. Without a doubt. And that transition, as you say, from the founder-led company to one that is not is obviously always an interesting and difficult one. Kate, thank you. Thanks, guys. Up next, KBW CEO Tommy Show lays out his top picks ahead of bank earnings. JP Morgan, Wells Fargo City, all reporting tomorrow. That's ahead of our interview with the CFO of Wells Fargo on the show, directly following its earnings report. Don't go anywhere.
We're about to squeeze some faces off right here. Leave no stop behind. According to sources, ECB policymakers still expect to cut interest rates in June. An ECB policy dove still eye cuts in June and July amid benign labour markets. So some ECB policymakers make a case for pause in July on risks from strong U.S. inflation, energy, and Bank earnings on deck. Concerns. Our next guest says all eyes will be on credit after New York Community Bank Corp's special announcement of provisions and continues to look toward the big banks to outperform the regionals. Joining us now is Tommy Show, CEO of KBW, a steeple company. What are you looking for as far as credit and any impact on commercial real estate after NYCB? Well, Sarah, first of all, we thought that credit was going to be the number one issue. And, and by the way, the news of the last couple of days and the dramatic move in the market, um, I think the outlook for interest rates and net interest income have, have reemerged as an equally issue. But on the subject of credit, look, industry has, has done very well on credit. Credit costs have been near zero. We, we are expecting some pretty significant increases in terms of classified assets, and we're looking for a 20% type increase in provisions, but still, we're still well below the normalized level on credit. But we think investors are going to want to see the results before they get excited about these stocks on credit, given some of the dramatic moves that had happened um, uh, in certain cases, like we mentioned, New York community at the end of the prior quarter. Is there so, any mystery still, Tom, in commercial real estate exposure, particularly among these real estate, uh, these regional banks? So we wrote a great report last week where we showed the concentration of commercial real estate in the banking industry. And it's been incredible with how efficient the market's been in terms of stock valuation. So it is clearly the number one issue on investors' minds. Our opinion has been that it's going to be at most an earnings issue for the banks and not a systemic issue for the banks. And the banks with the biggest exposures are going to be the ones that are going to have to deal with it the most. But the regional banks are not in the big cities, don't have the big properties. But we would expect that you're going to see more credit expense for commercial real estate going forward, even though we don't expect to a lot of loss content. But you might see non-performers show up without a lot of loss content. Hey, Tom, it's David. You know, what drives growth here, though? I mean, capital markets are OK. I can't see trading being great. Maybe equity underwriting for some of these banks that care about that has been good. Loan growth, I don't know. Like, where is the actual earnings growth going to come from? Well, I have to tell you, we're expecting down earnings per share for the industry this year. And then we are expecting reemergence of growth next year. But I think you got to look at the story along a longer time horizon. 
The stocks went up 30, bank stocks in general went up 35% in the fourth quarter of last year because the worst case scenario was taken off the table. We had been do the stocks had been doing well with the idea we were going to get a revenue pivot and, an, and, a, and a growth pivot by the time this year was over. I believe that's the big question right now, which is with rates staying higher, is this revenue pivot going to be pushed further out into 2025? And I think that's the story, and that's why we've been reasonably cautious on the stocks. Sure, you know what happens is we think some of the trophies are on sale. But yeah. we think the whole industry is doing this readjustment. And I think you're right, because I think the growth story could be pushed back a quarter or two with higher for longer with rates. With higher rates. But, you know, when I look at it, and we have them up now, I mean, Wells and, and Bank America City, they've had a good run, certainly for the first quarter in terms of the stock prices. Yeah. They, they, and, and you know what? The bigger banks are doing okay. Look, we think J.P. Morgan tomorrow is going to earn 16.7 on tangible common equity. There should be no apologies for any bank that has that level of earnings. And, and we think Goldman's going to earn 14 percent. We think the whole industry earns 12 this year. So the industry is not in terrible shape. It's just not growing. And, and the question is, when does that really pivot and, and, and turn? Tom, thanks for helping us pregame here on uh, Money right. Movers. Tommy Show, KBW, and just a reminder, Wells Fargo CFO will join us on this show tomorrow, 1145, following his earnings report. We're going to talk to Larry Fink of BlackRock, 9 o'clock hour, John Donahoe of Nike. And we're together tomorrow for three hours again. And it's me and David. So we've got Fink at 9, Donahoe in the 10. Wells Fargo CFO, Mike Santamassimo at 11. What about the rest of today, Sarah? Anything we should be keeping an eye on and or data-wise well, or market-wise? Well, we're going to watch this bond auction of 30 years at mm -hmm. 1 o'clock because yesterday's 10-year auction didn't go too hot in terms of demand, and investors required a higher yield premium. Also, we're watching the market because what's holding up the market now is some of the telecom is up, but it's it's this flight to safety in AI that's kind of developed as a theme. And, and Matt Maley of Miller Tabak pointed this out to me. It's not just some of the big, you know, Microsoft, Amazons of the world, but some of the semis, too, that are involved in AI, AMD, NVIDIA, uh, up nicely, TSMC, in this broader market sell-off that is worried now about higher rates and re-emergent inflation. Yep. Andy Jassy's comments, obviously, in the letter, and to Andrew also, the Fed's uh, also helpful in part to, to just continue to stoke that AI fire. Cost-cutting, but investing in AI. That's right. the theme Recent from tech right now. That's going to do it for us here for on Money Movers. Send it over to Scott Wagner in the halftime report. Fewer rate cuts. All right, welcome to the halftime report. I'm Scott Wagner. Front and center this hour, the turbulent week for investors. What it might say about the future of this rally. We'll ask the investment committee and get their best ideas right now. Joining me for the hour today, everybody's here. Post 9, Josh. Brown, Shannon like Sakosha, Jason to continue Snipe, continue Rich Saperstein. Let's check the markets. S&P's gone positive. The Nasdaq's positive, it's as you see. That was a touch negative. Uh, but you did have a cooler policy. PPI uh, today, and that follows that CPI, which uh, certainly frayed a lot of nerves yesterday. And Josh, you told me yesterday afternoon you still think that this is a market to buy, not a market to sell. Yeah, and to recap, one of the things I was looking for on CPI was a viable sell-off. Yeah, I, I had hoped uh, that it would, would have gotten worse. Well. We just, I, I never get enough time to panic these days, I guess, is, is the problem. It's just, there's just the, the kids, uh, the job, there's just not enough. Anyway, uh, I didn't buy anything yesterday, I should have. But I thought that yesterday was a counter-trend move, Judge. That's the term that I used. The, the, the predominant trend is an uptrend. It's not my opinion, that's data, sorry. I think, it, I think it stays intact. If it changes, I'll be the first person to tell you, hey, the trend is lower. It isn't. And I don't think the bank earnings we see at the end of this week are going to be the catalyst to change that direction. I just don't see it. These are companies that are nominally earning tons of money because of where rates are, especially relative to years past. That ain't going to change. Capital markets, not great, but good enough. And then if you look at the lending business, the demand is there and business is getting done. So when you consider NIM and you consider the various factors that are going to impact the earnings we'll see from big banks, they are good to great. Then you look at the asset managers, BlackRock will report. That's not coming off of hard comps. The comps there are fairly easy.
it's an asset manager with bond prices and stock prices rising, I think they'll do well. So I don't think the bank's going to give you the reason to sell. And absent that, the trend remains higher. All right. So, Rich Saperstein, you're getting a lot of Fed speak today around the inflation reports. And the, um, the most recent one is Collins right now um, at noon. So a couple of minutes ago, we can bring you these headlines now. Fed expects it's going to be appropriate to bin, begin cutting later this year. Okay, more times needed. That that seems to be the, the party line at this point. Williams, who's a voter, said rate cuts starting this year. No need to adjust in the quote very near term. He does expect PCE inflation to be two and a quarter to 2.5 this year, moving closer to two percent next year. So, the idea that you're still getting cuts this year is not off the table. And I wonder if that's at the heart of why the bulls are still bullish, because at the end of the day, that's all that matters. Look, there's two types of uh, tightening. There's the tightening like occurred in 99 with Greenspan, where it was preemptive, trying to slow a heating economy. And there's the slam the brakes, which the Fed did uh, to really control inflation. And that's a trickier tightening. So inflation has come down, but it doesn't have a two handle. It's likely not getting there so quickly. But the important point as an investor is to buy stocks irrespective of what the Fed's doing and whether they're going to tighten or not. So maybe they'll tighten two more times this year, two times. Tighten? Uh, sorry, uh, uh, loosen uh, the second half of the year, okay? Maybe not. But the point is to identify names that are generating free cash flows that are going to do well in an environment irrespective of a Fed. Okay, so you've been pretty negative the market for a long time, right? Are you still today? In no. Light? You're not. You're, no. Are you more? So let me ask you this. Um, why don't you characterize your own level of constructiveness, if you want to put it that way, mm -hmm. from somebody who was decidedly negative for many, many, many months going back it, a year, it feels like, right? I think that's a fair assessment of your view of the market. So you tell us today where you're at. So we, uh, let's call it 18, 20 months ago, raised cash and bought municipal bonds at 4% plus yields. Mm -hmm. So we reduced our client equity exposure down, but we captured an opportunity that hasn't come back yet. So we were cautious, created the cash, and then invested in immunities. We're fully invested today, and we think the economy is strong. If you look at wealth in America at $155 trillion, ISMs in manufacturing has strengthened. We've got 26 months of unemployment uh, below 4%. That's the first time since 1947. So anywhere you look, the economy is doing well. So we're fully invested. The question really is, are we hanging on to every move of the Fed mm -hmm. to get a market higher? No. At this point, it is earnings. We haven't had earnings growth in two years. So 23 and 22, the S&P generated 220 in earnings. This year, it has to move higher in order for the market to move higher. Okay. What's clear to me is, is like many, um, not singling you out, obviously, is that you underestimated the durability of the economy. You expected things to happen that haven't happened, and now you don't think are going to happen. Is Correct. that fair? That's fair, yet we didn't feel we were giving anything up by adding tax-free municipal bonds at 4 percent plus. Of course. Which uh, we're happy to have right now. But when you say you're fully invested, what does that fully invested breakdown look like? What part of your fully invested is in equities? Yeah, so if we, we had a client with 50 percent equities, took the client down to 45 percent, added 5 percent to the fixed income side, now that 45 percent is back up to 50 percent. So we're back to par in our asset allocations. So client asset allocations are running anywhere from let's call it 20 to 40 percent on the fixed income side and 40 to 60 percent on the equity side. Okay. I mean, I ask you all these questions because you're one of the highest rated financial advisors in America and presumably, you know, people who watch you on, on our program, they want to know what kind of breakdowns you have. Yeah. Um, you know, they're asking their own financial advisors these similar kinds of questions. Mm -hmm. As Shannon, you know, the, the bulls still feel emboldened. Um, they're not willing to give up the ship just yet because ultimately they think that the economy is going to remain strong and the Fed's going to cut. And they may cut in July and they may cut later than we thought. 
but we don't need the cuts now anyway, so it's no big whoop if we have to wait. So that last point that you just made is the most important point. If you look at the bull story for the equity market, for commodities, for not just here in the U.S., ex-U.S. Um, stocks, you think about you know, the difference in the U.S. economy versus outside of the U.S. And the, and the reality is, is the difference is, is that we have been able to digest this higher rate scenario better than anticipated, both on the consumer side and on the corporate side. So if you, if you look at what the Fed is looking at, they're saying, okay, we have the lever to be able to cut rates. We can do that because we've got a spread between, you know, and by the way, PCE is going to be, you know, in the twos, right? That's what the Fed looks at, not CPI. So PCE in the twos, they have the opportunity to cut rates, but they don't need to. And because they're looking at the economic data that we're all looking at and saying, yeah, there are pockets of weakness, lowering lower income consumers, but the, the reality is, is for the bulls to change their mind, they need to have evidence that the Fed is going to have to cut because the economy is deteriorating. And we're just not seeing that. We're actually seeing, Scott, a reacceleration in manufacturing. We, we've been in a manufacturing recession. It's an, it's an expansion. So that's, that's why the bulls are emboldened. All right. So Jason Stipe, Krinsky over at BTIG <clears throat> says it's too early to buy. City says it's too early to bail. Uh, I'm simplifying <laughs> both. <laughs> In, in some respects, but that's the headline of my takeaway. Too early to buy versus too early to bail. Yeah. You want to weigh in on that? Uh, so for me, I, you know, I, I take a lot of what, what Shannon just said. I mean, PMIs are rebounding, services are strong, labor is strong, you know, the economy is strong. And, and to Rich's point as well, I mean, earnings, we've been in an earnings recession for the last two years. Obviously, earnings, earnings have strengthened and we're expecting, again, they've been revised down from 10 percent to 5 percent, but we're expecting earnings to carry us through the rest of the year. Margins are expanding as well. So for me, I do not think it's early to buy or, or too late uh, to sell. I think this is an opportunity uh, for all market participants to, to get in and stay in, right? And I, and I think that the market is going to give you more opportunities through the rest of the year. So let's play the what if game because that's, you know, what the, you know, the, the bears are going to say, well, what if inflation proves rich too sticky for any rate cuts this year? Okay, that's number one. Well, what if the economy ultimately buckles under higher for longer as the Fed waits and pushes cuts out maybe another 30 days from what we thought into the summer? Is the market adequately thinking about that or, or too complacent about either of those scenarios? Well, it leads to the question of whether 21 and a half times earnings is the new 16 times earnings. And a lot of that has to do with a third of the S&P and large cap tech. But the market's been fueled by AI tailwinds, the prospect of declining inflation, as well as Fed cuts. You now start moving the Fed cuts later or off the table, the market has to see earnings improvement to move higher from here. Which, which is expected. It is. So investors should hold on to their positions. But I, I think we've got to move the ball from the Fed's playing field into where is their value in the market in an environment where the Fed doesn't cut at all? Well, OK, so where is that value? Because I think the broadening trade had gotten legs on the idea of cuts, right? Yeah. You were seeing cyclical areas of the of the economy and of the market be bought on the idea, well, the economy is going to remain strong and the Fed's going to cut. So if I take cuts off the table or at least I push them back, do I need to rethink the broadening trade itself? I think there's a couple of sectors that will continue to do well. And we're overweight, large cap tech and oil. We have been for a long time. And these are generating recurring cash flows and they're returning uh, the capital to shareholders. Uh, I think the broadening trade could occur, yet I would, we're remaining focused on those two sectors right now with our overweight position. So, I mean, your energy call has been spot on. It's, you know, it's up 13 percent. The sector is since March 1st. We all know what it's been doing. Josh, you've been talking about it a lot. Um, materials, utilities, other areas, financials, you talked about at the top of the show. We're going to get some, you know, real world view and earnings in, in the morning for some of these names. Do we need to think the rebroadening trade, uh, the broadening trade, if we are pushing out rate cuts? No, I don't think we do. It's a good question. Like, is the, is the reason we've had a broadening out of the market, is it predicated on people sensing that uh, the Fed easing is coming closer and closer? Perhaps in some areas you could say yes. 
certainly with uh, smaller capitalization companies. But I want to build on something that Rich said, because I think it's really important. You mentioned there being three primary tailwinds that the market has enjoyed, and I agree with all three of those. Mm -hmm. um, Fed rate, the prospect of Fed rate cuts, I would argue the prospect is better than the cuts themselves. <laughs> all right, so that's one. Right. Two, disinflation. Okay, it's, it's not as great as it was six months ago, but we're sort of still on the right track. It's a little bit of a hiccup right now. Um, and I forget what the first one was, but I agree with that also. AI, AI, AI. <laughs> sign. Wait, let me add. Let me add more. Let okay. me add some more. Because these ain't going away. Mm -hmm. yeah. Almost regardless of what the Fed does. GOP. Well, first. I'm not kidding. I'm, I'm, I think people say that's one of the bullish things in the market too, along with AI. GLP one. This trend there. But anyway, you, I digress. You go ahead. No, I agree. There's a bull market in obese people. 100 percent. 100 percent. Yes. <laughs> but what I would add, and not that. <laughs> is uh, we just have a shortage of equity. And the FT did a piece on this a couple of days yeah. ago, and everyone on Wall Street read it. It is undeniable that every year, due to buybacks globally, we remove $1.2 trillion worth of stocks from the markets that can be bought by yeah. investors. It's a fact, and it's not going to change. And in fact, this year, it will go higher, both in the U.S., but now abroad, as country after country look at the U.S. model and they say, actually, you know how you fix your economy? Fix your capital markets first. China's doing it. Japan is doing it. Larry Fink just dedicated his entire Dear Shareholder letter to 17 countries around the world engaging in this idea, hey, let's, let's do what America did. Let's, let's get the stock market fixed. So that's taking place, and that will involve more and more buybacks, which means less and less places for money to go. You got private equity sitting on, what is it, $2 trillion in dry powder? Lots. That's more companies leaving the market. There were 3,000-something stocks. When I started in this business, there were 7,000. Now, most of those missing stocks are penny stocks, so throw that out. But still, the Wilshire 5,000 can't even muster an index. There's not enough public equities to fill it. Yeah. So that is a dynamic. And, and so when people say, oh, in my day, the baseline P.E. ratio was 16, it ain't your day, player. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's my day. <laughs> and in my day, valuations are systemically higher because people need to invest. So do you see any tail risk events out there? Of course, there always will be. Like? When won't there be? Like? Well, the Middle East doesn't seem too cool right now. Okay, geopolitical. Sure, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Oil price spike. That wouldn't be great, except for you and I, because we're, we're over but, but no, but to, his, but to his point, though, those always exist. Are you right. going to take on less risk in the equity market because you're worried about geopolitics? No, no, but that's why you own oil as a hedge. Today. I'm with you on that. Okay, mm -hmm. but there's also one that's going on under the hood, which is Washington's running a $2 trillion deficit. They've got to issue $10 trillion worth of bonds this year. Understood. Okay. Been hearing that for a year. Yeah, but at some point... There's a hibernating animal that's, that used to come out in the 80s that's been hibernating now for 40 years. It's called the, the vigilante of the bond market. And that could occur this year. It's a myth. The, okay. Japanese, the Japanese have been looking for that vigilante for four cool. decades. Well, they're net sellers. <laughs> it's like Sasquatch. China's net sellers, okay? Mm -hmm. The Fed, they might curtail QT, okay? But if you look at a tail risk event that's not being priced in, that's one. It's not changing what I'm doing. We're shortening our maturities on the debt side as a result of that in our bond portfolios as that is a, a risk that's possible. Let me ask you another question. So if you're at 50% exposure into equities, yeah. right, what are you traditionally, like historically what's your number? If you're managing wealth for an extraordinarily you know, high net worth cohort, mm -hmm. You may never be more than 50%. You're mm -hmm. trying to preserve wealth, not create necessarily more at a time where you're taking on excess risk, correct? Exactly. The, okay, so what historically are you? So typically the clients give us, uh, we have one directive, which is the return of capital mm -hmm. is more important than the return on capital. My point exactly. So uh, our equity allocations for those clients have gotten as high as 60%. Currently, let's call it 50% with 30, 40% in bonds and 10, 15% in less market correlated investments. So at 50%, you know, if we've got 4% tax free on a muni bond, that's 8% pre-tax, and we have a target rate of return of 5, 6, 7% a year, 
what do I need to squeeze out of the, the balance now that I have a base of 4% tax-free? Of course. Well, again, return of in your world is more important than return on. Exactly. People have different objectives based on the level of wealth mm -hmm. that they're managing for people. Exactly. So historically, you are now where you traditionally have been. Exactly. H how do you assess what the proper mix is in this kind of market? So I think the, the thing to think about is that prior to, you know, it's prior to 2020, the, the challenge was is that you had to take increasing levels of equity risk because the bond market didn't pay anything. So we had a decade where you couldn't count on that income component of your return, and therefore you had to take on either lower quality credits that yielded better returns, or you had to add more equity. And so I think one of the challenges right now is I think that there's a perception that all of these um, investors will go back and, and anchor themselves to like a 2005 portfolio when there was actually bond yields. And, and I think the challenge is now is that people have been building wealth based on equities for 15 years now. And I think it's going to be difficult to re-anchor those, those investors to say, listen, we're going to cut meaningfully your equity exposure because you can get the yield in the other part of your portfolio. We uh, also, Scott, there's inflation. We, whether it's two or it's three or we didn't have zero. that. We were deflationary prior to the pandemic. So now you actually have to kind of balance out. Do you need your capital to continue to grow in excess of inflation? And so it, the mix is it's not going back to 2005, in, in my view. I think there's still going to be a bias towards a slightly higher equity mix than you've had historically because people are looking at that as a real way to grow their wealth over time and preserve it because the equity equities are upwardly sloping. All right, let's go granular for a minute before we, we take our, our first break. In terms of places you want to be, stocks you might want to trim, it leads me, Jason, to you with this NVIDIA move that you've trimmed. <clears throat> so, yep. you know, you, you join a group of people on this show who over time have trimmed this name. Now, right. it was in <laughs> a you know, a uh, 10% drawdown. Which means nothing. Of, of late, and right. it has been snapped up, including today, by right. the way, with NVIDIA shares up two and a third percent. So why'd you trim it now? As the price target, by the way, goes to $1,110 from 850 at Raymond James today. Yeah, so, I mean, Scott, you know it. We, we talk about it a lot. Stock's up close to 80% year to date. Um, you know, so for us, it's 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 above our benchmark. You know where we are in our growth portfolio. So, uh, and we've trended several times throughout throughout, especially over the last two years. Um, and and for us here, you know, this is not an indictment on the stock. It's not it's not a reaction to what we hear from Intel or other players that are looking to, that are producing chips maybe at a cheaper price. That's not the deal at all. This is portfolio management. As as boring as it might sound, it is something that we need to do. Uh, the GT, GTC. Can. Conference was very impressive. All the partnerships that, they're, that they discuss. I think even what, what's going on with their uh, inference microservices and what they're able to deliver uh, for, for developers for, for GPU chips, I think it's just expanding the TAMP even more. Um, but again, we, we want to take a little bit off the table and look elsewhere for opportunity. All right, let's talk about Amazon too. It's higher today. Right now, mm. it is above mm. a new record closing high. 187.77, thereabout. You see it. There it is. Uh, exactly on that number. The intraday high is 188.65, Josh. So we've got some uh, new air here uh, for uh, shares of Amazon. Look, this was the large cap tech name that I thought would be the best performer of the year. And so far, I'm right. It's, a, you know, <laughs> we got a long time to go. Uh, but the reason that I felt that way um, was, was really that expectations had been fairly tame versus the Apples and the Microsofts of the world. That's a really great ingredient to start with. Um, you, that's when you want to take a second look at stocks, when the street is not looking for huge leaps and bounds. Uh, the hurdle was lower for them to, to leap over. They're very involved in AI, like extraordinarily so. There is no AI if Amazon Web Services is not delivering, quite frankly, most of it. People forget. The question is like, well, where is all the money going to be made? It's not just going to be in semis. In fact, the semi play ultimately is going to get brutal. The platform play is better, less, less potential competitors, more lock-in, customer lock-in. You think the typical customer cares if they're running a GPU from company A versus company B three years from now? No. What they're going to care about are the services built onto their AI 
uh, uh, platform. And that's where Amazon really has potential. Stock is 26% above its 200-day moving average. The RSI is 68. It might not be like the best possible day to buy it, but I will stay long here, and I would not be afraid to get long this, this stock. It's been above its 200-day for about 233 trading days. So the trend is solid, and I think there'll be opportunities on the way up. Um, but I'm long, and I'm really pleased with what I'm seeing here so far. Rich, you're long the name as well as it gets reiterated as a top large cap pick at Evercore ISI. That's by Mark Mahaney. He says that he sees Amazon as one of the few large caps with material multiple re-rating potential this year. Mm. Yeah, and a lot of that has to do with the dynamic of changing their cost structure, which is a large catalyst. And it's moving their cash flow likely from 32 billion in 2023 to 82 billion in 24. So all the reasons that Josh mentioned and you know the analysts on the street are, are out there, but there's also that dynamic in the cash flow. That's Colin says economic Jason, you want to take Alphabet too? Elevated. Because Mahaney also loves that name. Tactical outperform. We view the short term risk reward outlook here as attractive. Believe street top and bottom line estimates are reasonably set up. Our channel checks have been consistently constructive. That's a direct quote from Mahaney in the note today. Yeah, and listen, I mean, for, for Google, we were talking a few months ago about um, the, the, the AI rollout that just didn't go so well, right? But what I will say about Google, even if you, if you flow back to the, to the last report, I mean, operational margins grew 30 plus percent. Revenue growth was up 15%. It's trading at 23 times. And the stock has performed better than a lot of the other major names, um, you know, that we talk about all, all the time. But they're also announced a, a partnership with Apple that I think could be very profitable for them going forward. Um, so I, I like where they are from an innovation perspective and what they've done cost control. Rich, you want to give me 20 seconds on Microsoft? Target goes to 520 today from 465, and that's at Morgan Stanley. Well, I think if investors are going to find certain companies that they want to own in that AI space and, you know, embedded in there, it has to be Microsoft. So it's not a cheap stock, but great companies are not cheap. And, you know, recurring revenues, a lot of cash flow, it's cloud, there's a lot of reasons to own that name. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back and we're going to trade the financials because they are on deck for earnings starting tomorrow. By the way, the worst sector this week, the ETF that tracks that space, the XLF, is below its 50-day moving average for the first time since November. We have a lot to talk about. We have a lot to trade between that and a lot more when we come back after this. Are you following the Halftime Report podcast? What are you waiting for? Look for us in your favorite podcasting app. Follow the Halftime Podcast now. In five minutes' time at 12.30 p.m. Eastern, we get Bank of England's Green speaking on a panel at the Delphi Economic Forum in Greece about lessons learned from the last economic crisis. And Fed Collins says wage growth consistent with half back to 2% inflation. Fed Collins says first quarter CPI figures are higher than I had hoped. Fed's Collins says it's too early to make sense of recent rise in productivity.
Like Sam's Clubs. All right, welcome back. Let's talk about the banks because they do kick off earnings season officially, Shan, tomorrow. I mentioned some of the damage in that space. Month to date, the stocks have all not performed very well. This sector was one of the better ones uh, over the last, I don't know, five weeks. Have things turned because of rates? I mean, I think there's there's some concerns around that. I mean, if you look at the banks, they're, you know, they have been beset by continuing increasing provisions for, for credit losses slow loan growth that Josh talked about earlier. Um, and there has been an expectation that, and there's been a wide divergence, right, between the big banks and the regionals, and obviously that's been in place since early 2023 with everything we've seen in the regional banks. Um, but I think that you're also, this is a second half story, Scott. And so, but but to put it on, put a point on it, estimates have already been revised down for the big banks for 2024 by 10%, for the regionals by tw almost 25%. So you're not coming into this with these really constructive viewpoints on banks for earnings this year. And so while the, the, this near-term overhang from this you know, changing rate environment, whether mm -hmm. it's June, July, or September, there's some of that has already been priced in just from the low expectations that are being set. What you could see coming up over the next few days is that you could see Surely no major credit surprises. You could see, screen. you know, maybe like modestly increasing loan growth. And for the big banks, you've got investment, you've got investment banking and wealth management that's going to that if, certainly are going to look better in the second. If half we're of the focusing year. on the, the biggest banks, why do you think it's a second half story? Because from a because I think that they are expecting that they will get that rate lift from a net interest income perspective in the second half of the year. And so they're going to guide for better results in their true banking segment in the second half of the year. Also, there's an anticipation that that capital market activity is also going to pick up in the second half of the year based on the fact that we're seeing, you know, a, a found foundationally stronger environment for equity issuance. Rich, so if I own the JPMs, Goldman's and Bank of America's as as you do. How am I supposed to feel about this space today as it's suffered, as I said, some, you know, technical damage below its 50 day for the first time, the XLF is since November, but also some questions now if rates are going to remain higher for longer, delinquencies go up, charge offs, all that kind of stuff to, to, to be concerned about. Do I need to rethink the financials trade? Well, years ago when uh, Reagan was president, <laughs> You know, you used to be able to buy these, uh, these, this industry below book value and you sold it at one and a half, two times book value. Today, Bank of America is one and a half times book. JP is 2.2 times book. Their return on capital is 11, 12 percent. So they're doing well. They're expensive. But keep in mind, Bank of America had $130 billion of unrealized losses on their balance sheet and their hold to maturity portfolio. That's now down to $100 billion. So would I be adding them here? Probably not. Are we holding them? Yes, we are. You, you in that camp? I mean, you love J.P. Morgan better than all of those banks because that's the one I think that you own the only one, right? I don't feel the need to own the group broadly. If they work, J.P. Morgan will be among the better performers. And if they don't work, well, then I don't have to wake up and be like, Oh my God! Do I literally own Wells Fargo? Mm -hmm. Like I don't have to have that. I don't have to have that conversation yeah, right. with myself. So that's where I am. Look, uh, J.P. Morgan is going to do four dollars four uh, fifteen cents a share, according to consensus. That's not a huge jump over the prior year, but it ain't nothing either. Uh, quarterly revenue forty one spot nine six billion dollars uh, for, the, and, and and that's versus thirty nine billion in the year ago uh, quarter. So I mentioned nominal. Uh, growth that we would see from the banks. That's what I mean. It's not like all of a sudden banking is an amazing business. It's just that it was so bad in 22 and coming out of that in 23. And now you've got a, a, a better environment overall. JP Morgan trades at a premium, which Rich mentions, but I would argue with good damn reason, 22% CAGR on earnings per share growth in the last three years. None of the other names can say that. 13% over the last five years. So that's not just a recent phenomenon. I expect JP Morgan to have a good quarter. I remain long the stock. I think it's worth more than $200 a share. I like the fact that it's down. A little bit of a gift here. All right. I should remind all of you, too, uh, BlackRock reports tomorrow, and the chairman and CEO, Larry Fink, is going to visit with Squawk on the Street tomorrow. Don't miss that. It's first on CNBC, and it's always interesting to hear from Larry Fink on, on our network right after their earnings are released as well about that and the greater sort of investing environment. 
Let's get the headlines now with Dom Chu. Hey, Dom. All right, Judge, a rule, a judge, a judge rule today that New Jersey Senator Bob Menendez and his wife, Nadine Menendez, will actually stand trial separately for their bribery case. That judge made the ruling due in part to Nadine Menendez's health and that she would need to find new lawyers within 30 days as her current team would have to step aside due to conflicts of interest. Senator Menendez is scheduled to stand trial on May 8th. Well, USAID USAID Administrator Samantha Power said it was credible to assess that famine is already happening in Gaza. She noted at a congressional hearing that prior to October 7th, the rate of malnutrition was nearly zero, but now it was one in three children. Power's response makes her the first official to publicly agree that famine was already happening in that war-torn region. And crews are working quickly to patch a 60-foot crack in a Utah dam that could endanger a town nearby. While state and local officials believe the dam is not in danger of breaking, they have warned the 1,800 residents in a nearby town to be ready to evacuate if those conditions do worsen. Uh, some stunning video over there. Judge, I'll send things back over to you. All right, I appreciate that, Dom. Thanks, Dom Chu. Up next, we'll do our calls of the day. We got trades on Costco and Chevron, Amex, and more in two minutes. Fed's Collins says short-term inflation expectations are now consistent with the 2% inflation goal. Do you want to stay up to date with the latest and be on the bleeding edge of news for non-farm payrolls? Then sign up today and get our special offer of Financial Juice Pro for a year's worth of our service for the price of one month and save 92%. CNBC. We're back. We're going to do some calls of the day now, and we're going to start with Chevron. Take a look at shares because the target was raised today to 195 from 170 at Scotiabank, upgraded to sector perform, uh, outperform, excuse me, from sector perform. Rich, you own it. As yeah. you said at the top of the program, you are way overweight oil. Why this name specifically? Well, you have Exxon, too, I should say. And Canadian Natural Resources. Okay. Uh, we just 
we're, we're overweight oil, and generally it's geopolitical hedge. Uh, their earnings contribution to the S&P is going to be 10 percent, yet their market cap exposure of the S&P is only 5 percent. But with regard to Chevron and Exxon, we're talking about companies that have gotten discipline in their capex, so they're generating now roughly 12, 13 percent operating cash flow, free cash flow, 7, 8 percent. What are they going to do with it? They can dividend out, buy back stock. So in an environment where you have an uncertain Fed and you want a geopolitical hedge, Chevron, Exxon, all these names are great, great ads to a portfolio. All right, let's take a look at shares of Qualcomm, too, today. Uh, because they were added to the negative catalyst watch at J.P. Morgan. Jason Snipe, this is going to be yours. Price targets 170, so a couple bucks below where it is now. They still have it rated overweight. However, they say we are yet to see any significant change in the fundamentals for the smartphone market with the recovery expected to remain muted in 2024. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I will say this about Costco. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Qcom, uh, Qualcomm. I mean, for me, you know, the stock is up 18 percent year to date. Uh, the, the multiple has been driven up some, right? So it's trading at 17 times now. Um, Android has recovered. Uh, so automotive, automotive as well has been driving growth for, for, the, for the company. So and I, I think they have a solid IP and silicone uh, Silicon business. So, um, and IoT has been a little bit soft in the last quarter, but I think that, you know, with the multiple expanding some, there, it's probably, you know, in, a, in somewhat of a limited growth rate of 11%. Um, I think that's where a little bit of the concern is. All right, you said, you, you, you accidentally said Costco, so I'm going to give you <laughs> that did. one now, okay? <laughs> because you have that, and it was reiterated uh, as equal weight at Wells. The, the stock's obviously done well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they just say it's too expensive for us right now. Yeah, I mean, the multiple has expanded quite a bit. I mean, it, listen, this, this, the price action has been really solid over the last year and a half. Um, there's been some softness in discretionary spend, and I think that's what's been a little bit challenging for them going forward. But essentials have been good. Kirkland's been really strong. Um, the multiple is a concern, but, but I think that, you know, in, in a market that we're in, Costco is the best retailer in that space. All right, Josh, you flagged NASDAQ for our viewers uh, days ago. Well, Barclays does today. They initiated overweight price target 76. That's about 20 percent upside from here. Clear path to double digit EPS growth is what they see. Yeah. And that's uh, a couple of days after Morgan Stanley said it's a top pick with an $80 target. I think ultimately uh, as an investment, the stock works its way higher because there's a lot of scarcity value here. There just aren't that many versions of what Nasdaq is and does. Of course, we're sitting here at their largest competitor. Uh, but Nasdaq's got exchanges all over the world. And as I mentioned two days ago, they've also been diversifying. So it's not just markets related revenue. They've been acquiring software businesses. There's a very healthy portfolio there of ARR type businesses, which is what Wall Street loves. The annually recurring revenue model yep. coupled with, I think, a significantly stronger IPO market in the market side in the second half of this year I think you've got a double-barreled shotgun approach, and I think the stock works its way at least to 76. So I am long. I like the technicals, and I like the fundamentals. Jason, uh, go quick on Amex, because Deutsche says it's a good place to hide. Those were their words. Safest place among the card issuers. Yeah, so I, I really like the consumer that they obviously focus on. Um, you know, credit quality is, is strong. Amox, Amox plays well um, in that space. And I think for me, you know, as, as I look forward and I, and I look at the quality of the consumer and, and where business travel is starting to grow, I think I, Amox is our favorite spot. All right. So good day to hear from Mike Santoli. Obviously, every day really is. But especially today, given this second uh, inflation print, a lot of Fed speak, markets acting interesting today, too. So we'll talk to him next.
www.thepatriotsocialdemocrats.com. We have a news alert on OpenAI's Sam Altman. I want to get to Steve Kovacs. So he was on Capitol Hill, and our cameras were there, too. Yeah, that's right, Scott. He was coming out of uh, Senator Todd Young's uh, office just now. He was uh, uh, Senator Todd Young. He's a member of an AI task force that was appointed by uh, Senator Chuck Schumer. And this is coming after uh, Sam Altman spent the last few days in the Middle East talking to uh, potential investors and government leaders about raising money and plans for his grand um, ambition uh, to create this whole chip network, so to speak, uh, for artificial intelligence. Uh, our Karen James Sloan, she was there on the ground as he came out of the senator's office. Uh, here's what he said about that trip. $8 million. How are you? Did you tell me how your meeting went? I think it was great. What did you say to Tom Young? Uh, we talked about the need for the U.S. to have a, like a general policy about AI leadership and development and sure we're able to deliver all the benefits of these services. Did you talk about your chip? Did you talk about AI chips and whether the United States is going to approve chips, it? Chips, energy, the whole package of what it takes to be able to deliver, deliver AI. Tell me what you said to uh, leaders in the Middle East about AI yeah, chip funding. Uh, it, well, it wasn't just about AI chip. Sorry, let me explain. Funding is obviously part of it, but there's like a very complex supply chain. There's a thing that we'll need to figure out about how we're going to do security and policy for this. So it was a it was a conversation like we've had in many other countries. Um, around the world about what it takes to do this as a global a global effort. What about here in, uh, in the Senate right now? They're trying to get through some kind of AI policy, but do you feel it's taking too long? And what should be the priority? Well, I, that's one thing we're asking is, is, like, what are they thinking about what the priorities should be? There's obviously a lot to do. It's a complex thing. Um, so, but we've been, you know, asking for updates on that in meetings. I don't think we have a view yet on when it'll happen and exactly what it'll look like. Have they given you any updates? Uh, they don't, I mean, obviously they don't say, like, it'll happen like exactly this on this time period. So Scott Altman there talking about his trip to the Middle East. And you might remember a few weeks ago, we got that headline, that report saying he was looking to raise trillions of dollars for whatever these ambitions are to make uh, artificial intelligence more powerful and capable. But like he just told um, our Karen there, uh, Karen Jane Sloan there, he also said it's about more than that. Enormous amounts of energy is going to be required to run these data centers and really achieve the vision he's thinking of. And then on the legislation front or the regulatory front, also talking about meeting with lawmakers there. As we know, he was on Capitol Hill uh, about a year ago uh, talking about what his view for AI regulation should look like. Nothing has happened for then, and also our Congress has been really slow to act on, you know, previous generations of technology like social media and so forth. So not a lot of regulatory action going on there. Though I will mention um, Repub uh, Democrat uh, Adam Schiff, who's running for Senate in California, he's, he's in Congress now, uh, did put out a bill yesterday saying uh, that these uh, companies should disclose if they're training their AI models on copyrighted data. But some interesting uh, stuff there from Sam Altman about what he's talking to uh, leaders around the world about, Scott. I appreciate that. Steve Kovac, thank you very much. Sure. Nice job from our D.C. Bureau as well to get that exclusive video and sound from Sam Altman on the Hill. All right, Mike Santoli, he's next with his Midday Word. Eurogroup's Donahoe says inflation is coming down fast.
Accessing the Apple M4 Mac to design to bring AI capabilities and boost memory, so Apple's first wave of M4 Macs to debut late this year, early next year, as they plan to revamp the entire Mac line with AI-focused M4 chips. Apple ticker AAPL. So in 10 minutes time now, the top of the hour, the US is due to sell $22 billion in a 30-year bond sale. The prior bid to cover was 2 spot 47 and the prior high yield was 4 spot 331%. Looking at notes from analysts here, as JP Morgan strategists see an additional concession needed from uh, Wednesday's closing level to digest smoothly, flagging the long end looking rich along the curve. Also making note of the latest CFTC positioning data, which shows that speculators were net short 55 spot 7K long bond futures, and net short 313K long bond futures, seen as a possible source of covering demand. Senior Markets Commentator Mike Santoli joins us with his Midday Words. Good to see you as always. So yesterday we were down and out, and today we're back. Yeah, back to a degree, Scott. And also, you know, yesterday down and out for sure, but it was relatively contained. I think that you, you got into this position where the, the rise in longer-term bond yield just throttles the market breadth, right? So the, the internals of the market look pretty weak yesterday. They don't look great today, but there's not a ton of motivated selling across the, the big caps in the index because we are going to get earnings coming through. And the other thing about PPI today, to the extent you want to extrapolate it out into the PC inflation number in a couple of weeks, um, it should come in not that far from expectations, which itself is not that far from where, you know, the median Fed official says that core PCE should be at the end of the year to accommodate at least some easing. So I don't think that the story was entirely upended, even though we had a market coming into April that probably was going to be needing to back off a little bit and cool itself and, uh, and you know, maybe it's broken some momentum in the short term. Yeah, and undoubtedly, I guess, a sigh of relief in some respects yeah. from from the bulls. I'll see you on closing bell. I look forward to our conversation then. That's Mike Santoli, our senior markets commentator. We're going to do final trades next. Plus, we have a new buy from Rich Saperstein. We'll detail that coming up too.
on the trial. In five minutes time now at the top of the hour, do you see the US selling $22 billion in a 30-year bond sale? So the prior bid to cover was 2 spot 47, the prior high yield of 4 spot 331%. All right, welcome back. I teased a move that our Rich Saperstein has made in the market. You bought Fidelity National FIS. Why? It's a $40 billion software provider to the financial services industry, 2% dividend yield. But 80% of their revenue is recurring. They're growing at 6%. They have a 9% operating cash flow. So you take out the dividend, they have some capbacks, and they're going to start doing some very significant buybacks. All right, how recently was, uh, was the buy made? Still buying. It. Are you still buying? It? Okay. Bond Appreciate you mentioning it. Treasury mm -hmm. uh, let me remind you what's coming up on closing out. bell as well today. We Auction have Cameron Dawson with me, Joe Ternova. We have the former Dallas Fed president, Robert Kaplan. <coughs> also, just added an interview with the Wall Street Journal's Nick Timoros on what the Fed's going to do next. So uh, mm -hmm. I hope you'll join me at 3 o'clock Eastern time as we catch up on all things markets and I take you through the final stretch. Let's do some final trades. Shannon, why don't you start us off? Uh, I'm going to talk about commodities. Uh, this is my contrarian trade of the year, and um, we're finally getting some steam behind it. So happy to see uh, happy to see some motion in commodity prices. All right, Jason Knight. Chubb, a lot of excitement around insurance. Operating income was up 40 42% year over year. I like this one. 
All right, Rich Saperstein. Chevron, great returns of capital to shareholders and a geopolitical hedge, and I love the sector. All right, obviously do. Way overweight energy, <laughs> says Rich Saperstein. <laughs> All right. Treasury when issue Josh 30 year yield. Uh, uh, toast. Six, six, Not just because I love being asked to give someone a tip auction. when they hand me a muffin, <laughs> but because they have earnings coming up on May 7th, and I think we'll see uh, a good quarter, so I'm long here. All right, good stuff. I'll see you in a couple hours. The exchanges now. Scott, thank you very much. I'm Tyler Matheson in for Kelly Evans. Here's what's ahead this hour. The market fixated on the macro, but that's a good thing, says one of our guests, helping to set up into earnings, which he says couldn't be better. And he's ready to put his cash to work. He'll tell us where. Plus, the street underestimating Apple once again. That's the gist of a new note from Bank of America. The analyst behind that note is here to make the case. And some five years after WeWork's implosion, Adam Newman takes the wraps off a new venture. Our Dieter Bosa is there live and will speak exclusively with Newman in just a few minutes. You don't want to miss that. But we begin with today's markets and Dom Chu, as usual, with the numbers. Hi, Dom. All right, so Tyler, what we got right now is a market that's floating right about near session highs right now. It's been a relatively calm trade compared to what we saw yesterday after that hotter than expected consumer price index report. Today's producer price index report came in slightly cooler Bank than expected on certain measures, and the rate stock market the is Federal reacting Reserve commensurately. You can kind of see there the S&P 500 is up about two-tenths of one percent, ten points to the upside. Again, right just below session highs. The Dow Industrials off about one third of one percent. You can see they're down 115 points, 38,347. The Nasdaq three Composite seven, up about three quarters of one percent, 117 spot, points to the upside. The last trade six, there, 16,287. And again, at the lows of the session, the S&P was down roughly 22 points. So we'll keep an eye on that. Also, thematically, that interest rate trade, we talked about it yesterday. The two-year yield is seen by some traders as more of a proxy, if you will, for what the Fed could do with interest rates over the course of the next several months. Right now, those the yields are just about flat on the session. We did see some volatility around that PPI number. Currently, that two-year yield just a hair below 4.96%. It pushed towards 5% before those numbers came out, got as low as about 4.92%. So again, a volatile trade there, but still holding near highs that we saw from yesterday. And then it's a not merger Monday or takeover Tuesday. We'll call it a takeover Thursday story on this Friday Eve, and that's Alpine Immune Sciences up 37%. Vertex Pharmaceuticals will buy Alpine Immune for roughly $4.9 billion in cash. That equates to $65 per share. And what this does do for Vertex's biggest acquisition to date is give them more access to a kidney disease treatment portfolio that Alpine has. So a big move in the merger markets on a Thursday. Thursday, Ty, I'll send things back over to you. All right, Dom, thank you very much. Stocks are stabilizing today after a PPI, a measure of wholesale prices, rose two-tenths of a percent in March. That is less than expected, but just by a smidge, providing some relief after the big jump in consumer prices yesterday. One of our guests says the market's fixation on macro issues means the setup into earnings season could not be better. Joining us now, Andrew Slimman, Senior Portfolio Manager at Morgan Stanley Investment Management, and Subhadra Rajapa, Head of U.S. Rates Strategy at Societe Generale. Welcome to both of you. Andrew, let me begin with you. If I'm understanding you correctly, the, you, you, your theory is that people are so focused on rates, the macro picture, that they're going to be positively surprised after this period of sort of consolidation when earnings start to come out. And exactly. that's going to power the, the market higher. Exactly. We've had kind of a 3.5%, 4% pullback on macro issues. But, yes, we get the banks tomorrow, and then next week is kind of a lull. But then the week after that is really earnings season starts in full. And I think it's going to be pretty good. The indications, it's going to be good. And what you don't want to happen, Tyler, is the market to be red hot into earnings where expectations are really high. And then if companies meet, then the stocks go down. But that's not what we're seeing now. We're so fixated on the macro issues, people have kind of forgotten that earnings are around the corner. And then don't forget, right after earnings are over, the blackout windows, you know, real companies can start buying back their stock again. And bu stock buybacks are a big driver of the market. Does history uh, confirm this, this sort of thesis that you're putting forward here, that if the market's got its eye on one ball and, and the other ball comes in, it's going to move higher? What we know is kind of how a stock's done recently has a perverse, you know, inverse relationship. So if I look at a stock like NVIDIA, let's say, well, the stock's just dropped 100 points. 
the stock's actually not done very well the last few weeks. So kind of the setup mm -hmm. is is good. So the the the, the data suggests that you always want to be wary of stocks that are red. They have done very, very well recently. Subhadra, how does, uh, does Andrew's thesis strike you, number one? And number two, what are you looking for for interest rates as an interest rate uh, sort of strategist and theorist? Uh, what are you looking for here now that we've gotten back-to-back -back, uh, inflation reports, one hotter than expected, one maybe a little cooler than expected? Yeah, so I think Andrew sets the stage for the strong economy from a uh, from an equity perspective and earnings perspective uh, and from an inflation perspective what you're seeing is you know inflation is turning out to be a lot more stickier uh, than investors anticipated and the fed anticipated and that really means that uh, the fed is going to have to keep policy on hold perhaps for the remainder of this year as they navigate a bumpy road through inflation so uh, we got PPI today, which was on the positive side after a really, um, you know, I, I would say an upside surprise to uh, CPI yesterday with 0.4 prints on headline as well as, as core. So I think this is, uh, we're looking at a picture where inflation is going to take a lot longer to normalize, and the Fed is probably going to have to keep policy on hold for a lot longer than the market was anticipating coming we into this year. We will come back to that thought because it's a very provocative one. It is, a, a, I guess, a little bit of an outlier, uh, certainly compared with where most strategists were six, uh, ten months ago. Meantime, 30-year auction uh, of bonds uh, up for auction. Rick Santelli has the results for us. Hi, Rick. Hi, Tyler. Indeed, this is the third tranche of the Treasury offering of $119 billion of coupon supply in the form of 22 billion 30-year bonds. It's a reopening, second time, adding to an issue. What was the yield? The yield was 4.671. One NASDAQ basis point 1%. tail. The one issued market was trading 4.66%. So a higher yield in the auction means government sold at a lower price. My grade for the demand at 1 o'clock Eastern for this 30-year bond Bank auction Bingham's by investors, a C minus, C minus, better than recession. yesterday's tens. There was one bright spot. It wasn't the pricing. And if you looked at the bid to cover, the indirect bidders or the dealers, in each case, it was the worst number since Nova of last year. So not a huge amount of time, but definitely in the wrong direction. The one very bright spot was is that direct bidders at 18.3% was above the 18% 10 auction average, Tyler, and it was strong. the best since September of 23. You can see yields pretty much didn't move much on that, but that isn't the point. The point is, is that whether you're looking at five, sevens, tens, twenties, or thirties, all their yields are higher, building on yesterday's big move that occurred, of course, at 8.30 Eastern on the hotter than expected CPI. We want to continue to monitor whether these long and mid-dated maturities remain higher in yield, lower in price versus yesterday, because that would mean fresh high yield closes for all those maturities over the last five months. Back to you. All right, Rick Santelli, thank you very much. Subhanna, let me go back to you um, and, and sort of pose a longish question. You know, if I look back six months ago, an awful lot of people who sat, maybe not including you, but an awful lot of people who sat in seats like yours and the market more broadly seem to be predicting or discounting the possibility of as many as Bank six Finland's interest Green rate says cuts I expect to hit in the inflation target in May. Uh, you've now gone all the way to the possibility or probability of no interest rate cuts in 2024. Why and how has that happened? And where were you on this issue six months ago? So we were unfortunately on the wrong side of the equation coming into the year. We were on the camp expecting nearly six cuts for this year and an expectation for a recession by the middle of the year. And that really hasn't panned out. Um, the data England's has been extraordinarily resilient. Inflation, inflation remains high and sticky. So really, um, and you look at uh, corporations and corporate profit margins, they've been extraordinarily resilient to higher interest rates. So uh, what you're seeing right now is a recalibration, if you will, on the policy path from both the Fed as well as uh, ourselves, uh, given the fact that inflation has remained high and sticky and growth has also surprised to the upside. You're looking at above trend growth, growth for the first Bank quarter, perhaps uh, somewhere between two to two and a half percent. So the again. momentum 
coming out of the fourth quarter has really continued in the first quarter having, uh, you know, and, and that's part of the reason why we've had to recalibrate so dramatically this year. I appreciate your candor and your confessional spirit there. And I have to say, one of the signs of intelligence is the ability to change your mind when the when the situation warrants it. Andrew Slimman, let me turn to you. Can the market continue to move forward if interest rates don't move lower markedly this year? And oh, by the way, what's your assumption on where markets will end the year? I mean, excuse me, interest rates will end the year. Gosh, I'm, I'm a portfolio manager. I think it's on the equity side. I think it's as long as rates don't go substantially higher, I think the market can go higher and end of the year higher for a key reason. And one of the things I've always said is I hope there aren't six rate cuts. I've said this all year because if the Fed can stay on hold and not have to cut, it means the economy is doing well. Doing okay. Yeah. And if the economy does well, remember, Tyler, at the end of this year, we're going to be pricing off of next year's earnings. And right now, the consensus is $277. If all I do is put this year's multiple, that gets you to mid 5,000s on the S&P. Now, you can say the multiple's too high or you can say earnings too high. But as long as the Fed is saying we have the, we have the ability to be patient, and that's what I'm hearing from companies. One of the benefits as a portfolio manager, I'm listening to these companies and they're all telling me, business is good. Yeah. That tells me earnings are going to come in. And that as I and where we're going to end the year, that puts $277 of earnings for next year on so the you're table. You're not saying the Fed doesn't matter, but you're almost saying it. I am. I am. I would be very nervous, not that this is going to happen. If the if Jerome Powell came out and said, we got to cut, I'd go, uh-oh. He sees something that he sees something he, I don't see. Yeah. And then that would make me question whether my earnings thesis would be correct. So the fact that the Fed is saying we have the wherewithal to be patient is a good thing. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Andrew, always good to see you. <laughs> Subhadra, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Always good to see you as well. All right, coming up, Deirdre Bosa is sitting down exclusively with Adam Newman as he unveils his newest venture aiming to, quote, transform the residential experience. But is it really disruptive or just another real estate play disguised as tech? We will ask him after the break. Plus, Wall Street back at it again, according to B of A, underestimating Apple despite its historic outperformance. The analyst behind that call joins us next with why he still sees Apple rallying more than 30% from here. The exchange comes back right after this. See you then. This is The Exchange on CNBC.
Welcome back to The Exchange, everybody. Nearly five years after WeWork's implosion, remember that, Adam Newman is back now in the spotlight unveiling his newest venture. It's called Flow, and it aims to, quote, transform the residential experience. And he's already got the backing of Andreessen Horowitz, who gave Newman $350 million a year and a half ago. That is the largest individual check the VC firm has ever written in a funding round, Surely expecting valuing the startup the at a billion dollars. Adam Newman joins us now, along with Deidre Bosa, who's in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, for Flo's initial launch. Deidre. Tyler, thank you very much. And Adam, it is nice to see you. Thanks for welcoming us here for launch day. Um, you're launching your new venture today, Flo. I know that you've been heads down over the last few years, just concentrating on developing it. I want to get into it. I want to get into WeWork, which I know you're trying to buy back. But first, I thought we might just address the elephant in the room. Some people might be surprised to see you on our screens again. What are you going to do differently this time around? Well, first of all, thank you so much for coming down here to Flow Fort Lauderdale. It is an extremely exciting day for us, but let's start with that. We built a global brand. We had over 10,000 employees that were so passionate. We helped redefine a category, and every single thing we did had to do almost anything and everything with community. I am the kind of person that actually learns more from their mistakes than from their successes. So all the great things we did in the past, we're going to do again. But then I had time to reflect, for example, partners. I'm so grateful and lucky to have Mark Andreessen and Ben Horwitz from A16Z as my partners. For those of you who don't know, they both come to my board meetings, and our boardroom is exciting. And for those of you who don't know them, they speak their mind, if you want them to or if you don't. So there's more debate in the boardroom than there was before. Debate is an understatement. <laughs> there are lively discussions that can go all over the place. They're also a great partnership themselves, so it could be them and me and They us. hold you more accountable? Everyone's holding everyone more accountable. And I have the pleasure to working with them, and they are entrepreneurs. This is actually their third business. So it's one thing to have investors who are giving advice. It's another thing to have entrepreneurs who you consider peers that are working with you. That's one example. The other one is something you just said. I've taken my time. We did not rush, we did not rush to launch this brand. Mm -hmm. We've been running this business for the past two years. We built our operating systems. Mm -hmm. We built our technology, back end and front end. We rebuilt processes. We rebuilt a property management company. And we did all of that to practice and test and see what works right. and what doesn't. And even before we launched the brand, this building that you're in now is 95% full. Other Florida location is 96% full. And that was before the brand. Right, so I wanna get into Flow and this business model. Your mission, I'm gonna read from your website, revolutionize the residential experience as a virtually integrated, vertically integrated real estate owner operator and technology innovator. What does that mean? So I'm not sure where you read that in the website, but it's it's actually more about coming to your higher self between you and yourself, your neighbor, and the world. So our mission is actually bringing everybody together. What you read, I think, is from the bio, which is a little bit of what we're doing. But I will explain. Is that accurate, though? Are you a real estate owner, operator, and technology innovator? Extremely accurate. So Flow is an experience-first residential real estate company. We're I'm vertically integrated, so we have technology, we have operations, and we have uh, the people that bring it all together. Also, as you can see around you, design is a very important aspect of what we do. And by bringing all of these things together, we had a theory two years ago that the buildings will become more valuable. In both of our Florida properties, we're already starting to show that with much higher performance. Are the buildings more valuable than when you bought them? So more valuable, now we're asking a real estate question of cap rates, yeah. but if you're asking if the buildings have a higher NOI, net operating income, okay. than when we bought them, this building you're sitting in has a 40% higher NOI than when we took over 18 months ago. And does that mean that you've increased rents, rent growth, which is also a metric that's a, important in the that's industry? That's a great question. We also increased rent growth, but some of your viewers might say, oh, Miami's rent growth are up. So actually, Fort Lauderdale, where we're at, rent has gone down 8% in the past 12 months. So we've increased our rent, but also we lowered churn. When people like being in a building, when they actually feel like they're part of a community, they stay. When people stay and there's no churn in the building, it increases occupancy and increases the value. But that's just one so example. So just to be clear, you are increasing value and that's reflected in the value of the real estate that you own? So I'm gonna answer it very precisely. Another lesson. I'm gonna answer it very precisely. 
we've increased the net operating income of the building you're sitting in by over 40% since we took over 18 months ago. If you wanna say what it's worth, that's a question a for people metric. who buy. It's a different metric, but NOI is how we're measuring it okay. and, the, and the value of the building. You only know, by the way, what the building is worth is when you sell it. So what you're describing, there's another word for it. It's purpose-built rentals. It is a large category already. It's not new and it's not technology. So why is Flow different? Why are you calling Flow a technology innovator? Great question. We talked about partners. Mark and Ben are technology investors. When we started, well, now they're real estate investors also. Well, you know, it's funny. Tesla is Tesla a car company or a tech company? So I think I think we live in a world today where you can look at the entire categories. If you're not leveraging technology to make things better, then you're stuck in the past. The All right. Y'all don't mind when I'm not here when the market's booming, do you? <laughs> well, 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 how the cookie crumbles. Well, well, well. How the cookie crumbles. <laughs> We're in a correction cap. <laughs> 500 up 0 spots 6%. NASDAQ up 1 spot 2%. Dow up 0 spots 1%. Spot gold also rises 1%. <clears throat> Dude, I told you that we didn't confirm a correction. What part of that? You have to confirm a correction. You cannot say it's a correction unless you confirm it. You have to confirm the correction. You have to shut the door. If you don't shut the door, what do you get? What do you get if you don't shut the door? Let's take a look. We've got the vol curve, the SPX at the money vol curve, it's getting slammed down. You got it, Winky. You got it, Winky. Winky knows. I know Winky knows. I know some of you out there know exactly. I know some of you guys listen very closely. Been listening since day one. You got to confirm the correction. If you can't confirm the correction, you ain't got no correction going for it. You ain't seeing the weekly trigger. Unless you confirm with a cross of the hourly trigger below the daily trigger with price going below the daily trigger to a new low and then coming back for that second new low, right? We talk about it all the time here, right? We talk about when we go up. We always say things like, hey, we came down here, came down here, came down here, and we bounced. And that you need to come up here and make the new high and then pop back down and you're off and running, right? Same thing on the inverse, right? If this was upside down, you need the same thing, right? You have the immediate blast down, whoop. You come back up here and you bounce around a little bit, right? You get the hourly trigger down here crossing the daily and you need that new low, don't you? Tag it right there and down to the, down to the depths of hell. And this is the inverse right now, isn't it? That's what we're with right now the inverse of that and when you can't confirm 
confirm the corrective behavior, you know what happens, right? I know you know what happens. We go back. We find out if they're really sellers up there or not, don't we? Find out where the real sellers are. Now we're going to go to the trigger screen really quick. Look at that gorgeous fucking recovery. At 1.30 p.m. we get Feds Bostic speaking, who participates in a moderated conversation on leadership and financial services. There is Look at that. But there will be a Q&A. Look at that beautiful thing. Let's have a let's let's diagnose it. Right? Let's let's do a diagnostic here. Let's take a look. Whoop. Let's take a look. Let's just clear all this out. We'll just start from scratch. So let's have a look at it, okay? Let's have a little diagnostic here. This is a time for you to learn. We come down and we test the hourly trigger, right? Come back down, whoop. No hourly trigger though, right? Hourly trigger's up here, right? Bank of England screen says no cross of the hourly trigger. Still far too high. No cross of the hourly trigger, right? We have price, price below. We have a new low, but we don't have the follow through by the hourly trigger, do we? We don't have that, right? We don't have the secret sauce, do we? So you get the blast down, you get a new low, but you don't have the hourly following through, do you? Okay, so we'll go back up. Let's, what do we do? Wham, wham. With the latest and be on the bleed. Right? We did not get a new high, did we? Then sign up today and get our special offer. We did not get a new high. We got an inside day. Then we got another inside day, right? We came down and bounced up. You got a new, you failed to get another new high, didn't you? Another failure of a new high, right? What does that mean? We go down, right? And now you've got the hourly trigger coming down. Dun 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 dun. And what happens in here? We pay close attention, right? We pay close attention. So what do we see down here? We get really close down here, don't we? And what do we do when we get close down here? We look for a couple things, don't we? Every time, don't we? Boom. Did we get a new low? No. We did not. That's a failure by the algorithms. They intentionally did not get a new low. They would have gotten the new low if we were going down. We also had the crossing of the hourly trigger. What did the bears need to do here? Tell me. I want to know. They needed the hourly trigger to cross, and they needed a big fat red ass candle right here didn't they they needed blood boom 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 and catch that new low did they do that no they did not do that so what is the response to not doing that that right there every single time then i told you this may or may not work out for you in here, right? Why did I tell you that? Because they could have reversed it on you whoop, and sent you down to the depths of hell. I said to you, when you get above here, you're going to get a quick back check. And when you do, it's the most high probable, best paying motherfucking trade right there. And where the fuck is it going? To the moon, baby. And it is printing fat fucking dollars right now, isn't it? And we're closing the motherfucking gap to the upside. All the way up here. Now, this is, you could also measure this as a halfback trade. There's going to be some of you out there that are going to say, yeah, Cap, but you're not going to get it all. You're only going to get half of it. Shortly expected. I can agree with that. But what do I want to tell you about this? What is important about this part of the trade? Right, so we got this right here. That's a 1.71%. So we'll just make it 8, 80%, we'll say. And 80%. <laughs> Whoop. Got that already, didn't we? That was way over there, huh? Look what that brought us. 
Might as well close the rest of the gap all the way up here, huh? We're already above that. So we're looking to go where? Right up here, aren't we? That's 52018. But I want to tell you something. Here is the important part. Now that we are here, what is important? I need you to tell me what is important. I want you to write this down because I don't tell you this too frequently, but I'm going to tell you this rule. I want you to write it down at home. I want you to do whatever you need to do. Type it out at home, whatever it is. Bulls cannot fail to get a new high. Listen to me closely. Bulls cannot fail to get a new high to change direction. The daily trigger is still going up. We had one brief moment. One brief, what do we had a brief moment right here. We had a brief moment right here. No confirmation. What do bulls need to do here? I'm going to tell you. They need to get a new motherfucking high. They need to get up here. Why? To stay alive with the bull thesis. Even if it's just a tick. Just a tick. They need the tick. What would this do to a bear? If a bear saw that right there, what would a bear do? They would get freaked out. So we're going to snap a line up here, right there. Boom. Just like we did for the bears down below, right? We did that down for the bears down there, right? We're going to do the same thing in the inverse. Not good enough for Captain Jim James. Not good enough for Captain Jim James. Not good enough for the halfback trade for Captain Jim James. Captain Jim James wants a fucking moonshot to a, to a new high from this previous high right there. Why do I want that new high to a tick? So that when we pull back down over here, we bounce on down over here and all that stuff. By the time we get there, that hourly trigger is going to come up. Oof. Just like that. And what happens in here? Woo, 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 woo. You get the big boys coming in. The big boys come in, and they rip this bad boy where? Where do they rip it? Where do they motherfucking rip it? Oh, yeah, baby. They rip it to this one right here. Woo. And they rip it to this one right here, don't they? Right, right up there. That's that all-time highs. Let's look at this declining highs here and look at look at where look at where we wind up here look at where we wind up so you'd want to see something like this wouldn't you we come on up like this right we grind like that right and they're going to try to send you down right get you all freaky deaky you're going to hope that, that holds you and we're going to break right above to that all-time high. That, not all-time high, but previous high, right? Now it doesn't matter. That's all we need. All we have is that. That's all we need. We'll come back down here. That hourly trigger will come up right on this trend line right here, right? That trend line will come right down just like that, right? That hourly trigger will come right up, start consolidating, consolidating, and boom, goes the needle right there. Boom. So bulls still need some work, don't they? This guy up here, what is this guy? Who's that? That's your big gym bro, isn't it? That's your that's your uh that's your old gym bro up there. Your old gym bro came back down, didn't he? Your old gym bro works out his legs. He came down there, didn't he? Dropping heavy bombs on you. Your old Jim Bro came over here too, didn't he? So a lot of risk as we come in here, isn't there? That old Jim Bro, where do you think he is? He's right there. He's like, fuck you. Come on up here. I'm going to send you back down to the depths of hell. So what do we need to know here? We need to know that as we approach up here, you de-risk right? You de-risk. 
Because without a doubt, this guy is going to try to send you to the depths of hell, isn't he? He's going to try. It's worked for him how many times now? It's worked for him. It's worked for him once, twice, three times, right? It's been working for him, hasn't it? It's been working for him, hasn't it? A series of higher or lower highs, series of lower lows, right? Except for this last one right here. Didn't get the new low on this one, did you? So, as we head up here, you already know that there's some sellers up in here. And you might be saying, well, Cap, you just told me every reason for us to go up here, right? You're probably going to need a little bit of help to beat these bad boys. What are you going to need to beat these guys? You're going to need Momo, momentum, aren't you? You're going to need a little bit of help from some Momo down here, huh? You're going to need a little bit of help with this half-hour trigger crossing above, aren't you? So as we make our way up there, as we make our way up here, you want to pay attention to two things. You want to keep your eyes on that, on that hourly trigger, okay? You want to keep your eyes focused on a cross of the of the um, half hour trigger because this actually the half hour trigger see how it's below the hourly trigger it's bearish right when that half hour trigger crosses over it gives you some insight so if we start blasting up here and these gym bros try to step on you you want to lean on this for the weight to get above these old gym bros so you can get above here and start making your way higher. Make sense? If you overrun the old gym bros, what happens? What happens? They get a margin call. They get a, they get a maintenance call. They get a phone call that says, hey, old gym bro, close your shit or start paying me to keep short. Guess what these guys do? They close, and we really moon. We start going, you know what? We're past you, buddy. And we're going to rip your faces off now. And you're going to see 526 and change. You get what I'm saying there? So the old Jim Bros are probably right here. Do you want to be long up in here? As we approach this, do you want to be long? Fuck no. And I bet a whole bunch of you are like, I'm going to get long when we get right here. N fuck no. You are looking for a reversal up here. Whoop. And you're going to be looking to try to buy this hourly trigger. Now, you don't automatically buy it. You want to see price come down and bounce, right? And bounce. Get a new high and be like, you know what? Fuck you, we're going higher. And you're like, oh, I'm on that, Johnny, on the spot. You don't want to see us come down and break through. You want to wait until it gets back up there again, right? Make sure there are actual demand and buyers down there. Make sure this isn't just a squeeze. Make sure you're not on the wrong side of the trade. So as we come up in here, be aware that the Jim, Jim Bros are here, right? Be aware that bulls need this new high, right? I'm going to write this in here. Bulls need the new high. Five twenty one point fifty one for continuation. Now I don't mean continuation. I know a lot of you out there like to say weird shit. You're like, oh, you said continuation cap. I mean, we need to go up there and then if we get the pullback, that's your continuation. This is where the continuation actually executes down below, okay? So, oh, hold on here. Stop it, stop it. Okay. So, be scared of this up here. Watch your hourly trigger. And I don't care where that hourly trigger is. I don't care if that hourly trigger is here. I don't care if that hourly trigger is here. I don't give a fuck if that hourly trigger is right there. Wherever that hourly trigger is, and these sellers come in, 
wherever they roll this over on you, you're going to be there to buy it. Wherever this hourly trigger is, you're like Johnny on the spot, ready to rock and roll. You need the momentum to get you over these gym bros up here. And bulls need this 521.51 for continuation. You understand me? I hope you understand me. <laughs> so we'll leave this up right here. Bulls need 551 for continuation. How does this look? I'm gonna I'm gonna draw it out for you how it would look. I'm gonna draw it out for you to show you what it would look like. So it's something like this up here, right? A failure. You're going to get a failure in here. Likely a failure. Come all the way back down to wherever that hourly trigger is, right? And you're going to get that new high right there, okay? You'll come back down to this, daily, uh, this hourly trigger again. And then you're going to blast right through it. You understand? Now, from this point, there should be a pretty big pullback. Like blood, ooh, doom. But it ain't going to matter because you're going to go right to the fucking moon. You're going to go straight up here. And there's your all-time high right there. Now, how long does this take to play out? More than today. The only thing you're looking for today is that bad boy right there. That's all you're looking for. At least, how about this? I'll give you Friday. You need that by Friday close. I'll give you a little extension here. I'll give you a little extension down here. Between now and Friday, by the close, you need this for continuation. You need this for continuation by Friday close. And you are going to get sent to the depths of hell up here, but it's going to be just fine if you do. Probably right there. Yeah, somewhere in there. Let me take a look. Something like this. All right, you're going to squeeze that. And we're going to blast right through. You're going to be pissed off. But cop, it broke through. I'm going to show you where the buyers are. Right there. And these buyers are right there. And that's your thingamabobby right there. And you're just going to attack this. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, something like that. And you're going to rocket ship this straight up. This is a great trade right here. This, this one's even better. So three-part trade, right? One, two, three. And you might actually get it right there in that third one. It's possible. But this one's going to make them stinky. This is like when they, when they, when like they, they do like a quick bloodbath and you go straight up to the moon. So I want you to pay attention to this. Get rid of all that crap on the screen. Bulls ball back in their court right now. One minute trigger. Whoa, we got to bring that over there. Come on, Bulls, baby, do it. Bulls, baby, do it. Uh, Arley Trigger is still on the daily trigger right now. Expect volatility as we get up here. Expect volatility up here. You know how to trade this too, right? We do this all the time, don't we? How do we trade these consolidated moves? Really simple, right? I'm scared, Cappy. You don't be scared. I ain't got no need to be scared here. This is your support right here. All you're looking for is a new high, right? All you're looking for is a new high in a smaller time frame. Whoop, right up there, right? Come back down, and where are we going to next? We're going to go to 519, probably. As many as five European there. Central Bank governing council members appeared to take longer than some of their peers to be convinced of keeping 
of keeping interest rates steady at Thursday's policy meeting, people familiar with the matter said. <sighs> yeah, and so we need to get we need to get the half hour trigger or the hour trigger off the hourly off the daily trigger right now. Use just like I told the bears, you use pullbacks to the half hour and hourly trigger as a place for you to launch. Why do you do that? Because it's behind you as momentum trying to help you. It's the place to start with longs. Same with the daily trigger, same with the half hour, and on intraday too. So even one and five minute triggers are the same thing, just with less oomph. A real time service. Think about these as like, uh, you got a little bit of oomph off the one minute, you got more oomph off the five minute, bigger oomph off the daily, bigger oomph off of the uh, hourly trigger. These old gym bros are pissed. Oh, what's that? Oh, let's remove this so you can see it. I think you just got it. I think you got it. Uh, it's close. That's guy. It might work. That might be enough. It was really close. Now, if we fail to get this new high, right? What happens? What do we do? Tell me, tell me in the chat, like, Cap, if we fail to get a new high with conviction, we roll down then and check the five-minute trigger, don't we? Right? Make sure that those buyers are still there, right? You want to be paying attention to consolidation and ensuring that it's not distribution. Why do we have the yellow box down here, right? Why is the yellow box down here, Cap? Well, if they bring this blood this down and get a new low, they turn it into a sell down to the five minute, don't they? do <laughs> I love you, Winky Face. I miss you, Winky. I love you, man. I appreciate you um, keeping as my friend on email, man. Uh, you make my world, man. I want you to know that, brother. Uh, you really do make my world, man. Like, when I have, like, Winky, like, at nighttime and I'm all stressed out trying to do research and shit, and you send me an email... Take it all away, baby. You're like Calgon to me. <laughs> True. <laughs> I read that by uh, Visionary. I love you, man. Oh, dude, I love this fucking market. It gets so stressful. So much work. And it, like, wears you down to nothing. You're, like, I'm, like, sitting here over here going, oh, fuck, there was, I'm, like, this, this, yesterday, at one point, I thought yesterday was Thursday. I was so worn out. I was, like, I, I was, like, I'm, like, fucking, uh, fucking, uh, Mr. Yen's, like, how in the fuck do you do this all day long? I'm, like, dude, you understand, don't you? And he's, like, yeah. He's, like, that shit's hard-ass work. I'm, like, dude, fucking A, man. Like I feel like a, like the past two weeks been like a rodeo. I feel like a goddamn hey, get on the get on the fucking horse. Uh, here you, you're all bulled up into the clothes. We're gonna send it down sixty fucking handles tomorrow. <laughs> Are you all bared up right now? We're gonna send it up sixty handles on you. Fuck you again. <laughs> no thanks, FX Trace. I love all you guys, man. You guys are fucking. You guys are fucking G's. All of you guys are fucking G's. <laughs> I know it's like every fucking day, right? It's like, it's like, God damn, like, what are we doing? Like, break the 
fuck out, please. Break the range. Get out of the goddamn range. Oh, it's so fucked up. Can you imagine being a bear right now? Oh, welcome to the party, bears. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shit.
<laughs> the fucking bears. <laughs> How does it feel, bear? <laughs> Fuck you too. <laughs> Oh, let me bring it up here. Whoop. Roger that, Winky. Look at that, huh? R3 right above. You see it? R3 right above. We have to get, we look at this. R3. Continuation. R4 is right up here. There's R4. And there's R5 up there. Vic's nine day getting rejected off the monthly trigger. Keep your eyes on uh on Vic's nine day that where are we at? Hold on. Come on now, get back to that Vic's nine day. Keep your eyes on this Vic's nine day over here. We've been ricocheting in here, haven't we? Look at this. Ping pong, ping pong, ping pong, ping pong, ping pong, ping pong, ping pong. Send it to the depths of hell. Send it to the depths of hell. Yeah, I missed it. By oh, wait a minute. I got you, Winky. We got it, brother. We're almost there, my man. I still have 530s on for May 3rd. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just give me a tick, baby. Give me a tick. Give me a tick. Just give me the tick. Give me the high ticky. Yeah, dude. I didn't get shaken out of that shit. I was like, fuck you. <laughs> Joe Donut closed this Fridays. <laughs> he was on the phone with me like 10 minutes ago and he was crying. <laughs> he's pissed right now. <laughs> he's he had like uh he's got I think he had like 515s or 520s for Friday. <laughs> he kept the 530s on though. <laughs> There was a lot of cursing. <laughs> there was a lot of cursing. <laughs> there was a shit ton of cursing. There was definitely a lot of cursing. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having a beer right now. <laughs> Oh, dude, I was buying calls last night, Winky. Uh, in the I was I was buying calls last night in the after hours between four and four fifteen. I was like I was like DCA and DCA and DCA and 
And people are like, why are you saying, why are you calling for a down move tomorrow? I'm like, if you're buying calls, I'm like, I have to be responsible. <laughs> because we are in risk, right? So you're like, I have to be responsible. Just because I trade with a lot of risk doesn't mean I shouldn't be responsible. Like, I gotta, you guys have to know where the risk is, right? I can't be like, oh, yeah, we're, we're all buying calls. Can't do that. Can't uh can't can't be a responsible person and not say there you go that's the downside move five oh six. No, that's just because I'm doing sh nasty shit doesn't mean that uh I'm ever gonna like tell you to do that shit. My own personal trading is not what we should be looking at. GCT baby, GCT now above its daily trigger with a buy. Uh, bid coming in on GCT. Let's look at it. GCT looking pretty juicy here. They already tagged this one. Let's see if they can get the new high up here. GTC looking sexy. Look for a dip buy in GCT on any kind of a back test. Uh, they're breaking through their plane of, uh, GCT breaking. Oh, you see that new high? GCT is breaking its consolidation plane right here. I want you to see this. So GCT was in a bull flag. Right down there, just snapped up. Apple trading its day, its hourly trigger. Apple, Apple trading its daily trigger. Bullish. Now I want to tell you something about Apple now. Now let me stop this stuff. Let me go through all this. So Apple squeezing above its daily trigger. The trade is dead right now on Apple. You want to look for uh, consolidation in Apple and a, and a reversal to the upside. So right here in Apple, you want to see uh, one more new high right here. Apple with a recovery. Not as much risk as this morning, right? So let's look at Apple here. You want to see Apple trade 174 and uh, 173.90 or so. One thing I want to warn you about here is that your uh, hourly trigger is still way lower. So you need this hourly trigger to come up here, okay? You need the help of this hourly trigger. Uh, but Apple now trying to trade 174. As we squeeze above here, where these old Jim Bros are up here, keep your eye on Apple uh, for a reversal when the old Jim Bros were near these old Jim Bros up here. Keep your eyes on Apple as an indicator. They are participating with the greater market right now. Apple looking much healthier than it was earlier. Nice recovery, Apple. Good job. GCT looking nice and sexy, looking for a dip buy back down below. 3263. They're trying to close out a bunch of stuff over here. You got this one over here. Bamo. You got that one right there. Got a lot of stuff to beat. Got a lot of work to do. You got the new high right there. That's good to see. This new high right here is good to see. Uh, watch out for these uh, moves here. These are uh, very volatile moves right here. When you see these uh, tweezers, I'll always be suspect of them. They're very dangerous. These are reversal candles.
IWM with a recovery right now. Coming into its daily trigger. IWM with some recovery. That's good to see. Did you guys notice that they're they're bringing back the talk today of a rate cut? All of a sudden, rate cuts are back on the table today. If you haven't noticed, they're talking about it all over the place again. Dixie getting blooded right now. Uh, downside target on Dixie, This is a nice candle for uh, USD JPY. This is a nice candle. I like this so far. This is good. Smash into that. Q's, baby. Q's trying to close their gap today. They just got their new, uh, they just got that new high right there. That's I like seeing that. I like that. I like seeing that. They want to catch this one right here. Like seeing that. Did Apple NVDA? Woo! Look at NVDA. Hello, NVDA, baby. Palantir with a recovery. Palantir with a recovery. XOM. Oh, dude, XOM. Okay, so XOM. Uh, you need to watch this very closely here. If XOM. Okay, hold on here. So XOM failed to get a new low. XOM failed to get a new low. That's not good. Uh, they're at 121.74. They will trade... 122.40, and they will likely trade all the way up because they failed to get the new low right up here. A new high at 122.91. Uh, fair chance of it. Fair chance of it. Failed to get a new low on uh, XOM. Dude, the Bears can't get it done. What are you doing, Bears? Cannot get it done. Uh, we will likely get an all-time high, oh, not all-time high, or at least a high on um, on XOM as well. Due to that, they're coming into their to their hourly trigger right now. Failure did not get the Bears needed to get below one twenty twenty four, and they failed to do it. Failed to do it on XOM. Watch out if you're a bear on XOM. Tesla. Ain't doing shit. Tesla ain't doing shit. Another dip buy down below on Tesla coming into its daily trigger right now. Pay close attention to Tesla here. They have not had a chance. What, what's going on right now? Oh, did I draw that for you on the chart it's over there? Oh, is that where we're going? What's up? We going up there? <laughs> Tesla, Tesla, man. I mean, can't get over the daily trigger. Can't get over the daily trigger. Do they get over the daily trigger now? Let's find out. Oop, get rid of that. Let's see if they can do it. Let's see if they can get up to their weekly. Come on, Tesla. You can do it, Tesla.
Come on, Tesla. IWM struggling, or not IWM, sorry, HYG struggling a little bit. Dixie bottoming-ish right now. Watch out for Dixie looking for a bottom. VIX uh, trading only 15.15 right now. Still heightened on uh, on uh, VIX right now. NDX trading 18.292 right now. You guys want to do it again? Let's see if we can build another consolidation box over here. <laughs> let me turn this back on i apologize dixie watch out for dixie down here we're gonna do dixie on a one minute target we're gonna put dixie on a one minute so we can just keep an eye on the oh that, look, look at how stupid that looks that looks very limp and limpish Watch out for a pullback here on di on uh, the market. For Israel remains ironclad on threats from Iran and its proxies. The VIX nine day looks like it wants to keep heading lower. Do you want to stay up to date with the latest and be on the bleeding edge of news for non-farm payrolls? Then sign up today and get our special offer of Financial Juice Pro for a year's worth of our service for the price of one month and save 92%. So what else can we take from here, right? We checked the one minute. We checked the one minute. It might be appropriate here to see a... Um, 
it not not guaranteed here, but we might be ready to come back down here and check that. Just keep your eyes on a pullback to the five minute trigger. That five minute trigger will likely be right about here. Let me get rid of some of this stuff. Clean this up a little bit. Ooh. Ooh. Hello, mother. Hello, father. Ho, 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 Oh, it's so close, isn't it? So close. It's so close. Oh, 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 loop, sir. Oh, yeah. If, if bank earnings are good, uh, watch out. If bank earnings are good. Dude, do you guys see the JPM shit that I posted to you? Let me show you guys something here. I swore I posted this for you. See that one right there? You want to see some hot sausages? Uh, let me just make that small over there. What do I want to show you here? What, am, what, what can you take away from this chart? Tightening. This is where we're going up, right? What is this showing right here? We are loosening even if they tell you they're not cutting rates. It means that they're injecting money into the system. It means, remember when they remember the other day when they had the minutes come out and they said, yeah, we're almost done with our repo operations, right? Yeah, I remember that. They're injecting money and they're not doing the treasury shit anymore, are they? So conditions are loosening, aren't they? Conditions are loosening. What else can you see here? What else can you see here? What does this say right here? What does all this say? Real US GDP growth impulse 
from GSFCI, three, three quarters centered moving average. What's the expectation right here? What is that green mark? Oh, you got you got you can't see that. Hold on. Hold on a second here. I gotta bring this in. Hold on. What does this say right here? What does that show? This is 2024. This is Q2 and Q3, right? So if we're coming into the start of Q2, right? The start of Q2, what do you think guidance is going to be from these companies? What do you think guidance is going to show in here? We're gonna have a fucking stellar 2024. What do you think they're going to say in their guidance? Burr, baby, burr. Burr, baby, burr. What else can you d d divine by this? There's some other stuff you can divine by this, right? Do you know what else you can divine by this? 2022, right? What happened in 2022, Mark? It went down, didn't it? What happens in 2024? Market goes up, doesn't it? Into at least Q3, doesn't it? Q3. What happens in Q3? Election season, doom and gloom. Up, oh, but you trap the bears. Whoop, and come back up. Right? For the end of the year, right there, right? Just look at that chart right there in front of you right now. And they're telling you that was the top, right? That's what they told you, right? They told you market top, never going to see another high this year. Oh, really? Oh, really? Okay. What about all that money that's coming in? What about all that money that's coming in? What about all that money that's coming in? You're telling me they're going to be bloodbath in this market when GDP is fucking ripping? Get the fuck on out of here. Fuck the fuck on out of here telling me that shit. Telling me that was the fucking top for 2020 fucking four. And you're coming into two giant fucking GDPs. Giant. Market top my dick. <laughs> Market top my dick. <laughs> fucking GDP is fucking on fucking fire. <clears throat> uh, so the bottom charts are on 30 minutes. Uh, some of them are on one day, like the, um, I should write that, like the U.S., uh, Japan is, uh, or uh, yen is on one day. I should write that in. At the dump, generally speaking, the charts down below are um, are thirty minute charts. Uh, the chart up here is I cycle through from one day to four hours to one hour, thirty minutes for the velocity, and then a one minute chart for trading. Let me ask you another question. I got a whole bunch of questions for you. So, um, let me ask you another question. Uh, do we got guys in here? We got, dude, David AMS trades a fucking five second chart. <laughs> five second futures chart. You think I'm bad? <laughs> Look at David AMS is like, I fucking trade the five second chart. Fuck you, Captain. <laughs> He is built different. <laughs> Fucking savage. <laughs> we should trade like the one second chart one day. <laughs> F 
fucking catch heat from all of Twitter. Finn Twit come on the fucking show and just start ragging on us. <laughs> just make an announcement on Twitter and be like, the show is now trading the one second chart. <laughs> <laughs> the uh oh fuck yeah dude i love that man dude i used to trade with him i used to trade with him for uh, him and i were in a trading room together it was fucking phenomenal absolutely fucking phenomenal he'd be getting done i'd be getting started we'd give each other uh what we'd expect for the rest of the day it was fucking awesome <laughs> we we did so we'd go to, we were in this trading room right we were in this trading room and we'd fucking go in this trading room and we'd day trade all day long and people would just get quiet <laughs> and we would like it was like it was like it was like watching like uh two basketball players like it was like watching two college players outrun a bunch of NBA players. We we're just like boom back and forth, boom, 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 back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, lay up three point shot, fucking sky hook. And then we'd be like, All right, we're done, have a good day, and we'd be out of there. <laughs> it was fucking awesome. <laughs> It was fucking awesome. <laughs> Couple quick fucking trades. This kind of shit right here, right? You go in there, grab a few fucking points, like whoop. Fucking just trade this shit right here. Bam, in and out. <laughs> Bam, in and out. Bam, in and out. <laughs> I used to trade a one minute like that here in the show. And people were just getting fucking smoked. So, because there's a delay in the show on YouTube, I wasn't tr I wasn't on Twitch at the time. So people were like 15 seconds behind, and I'd be trading like three, four candles, <laughs> and I'd get out, and be like, I'm out. I bought for 10 cents, sold for 18 cents. I'm out of here. Can't do that shit anymore. <laughs> people were getting all fucking. People were blowing up accounts. That's true. <laughs> oh, snow. Yeah, I'll check snow for you. Hold on. I'll do snow for you, brother. Hold on. We'll add snow to the mix. Snow, baby. Moonin. We got snow over here. Woo-wee. Snow. Trying to regain. Oh, go back to snow. Let's see. Let's, uh, barely lost this. So, I gotta get closer on this one. Uh, you've got a target here of uh, 159.71. You're going to expect to move higher, though. You're going to expect to move. Um... One sixty ninety eight is what you want right there let me make sure that's right hold on This is a hard one, man. This is a really hard one. You got a lot of volatility up here. Uh, you got a lot going on. Uh, I'm gonna tell you this. You have a ton of you have a ton of traffic in here. Uh, you have a you have a fuck ton of volatility in here. 
you really need um for bullishness you need to be above 16701 you're likely going to grind in here uh, there's a high probability of you um there's there's like a zone of there's like this whole area in here uh this whole area in here is is very volatile for you you got a lot of grinding in here you're not out of the woods yet on this one the, the reason being is because you have like a, a tick here you got a tick here you got a tick here like you need a new high there you need a new high there you need like a little one right there you got another one there somebody fucking hates snow i don't know who hates snow but um you got a lot of work see what i'm saying like can you see this on the screen it's not that you can't get up there um There's like volatility. You have like a lot of um. You have a lot of like fuck you. You're not. You shall not pass. I drew this. I drew this in just saying you need that. Like you need to get up there, but seven cents a gallon. It's likely going to be more like two dollars and sixty five cents a gallon. It's likely going to be more like this. Natural gas may futures set up down seventy six cents. Slam. Down, slam, down, slam, down, slam, down, slam, up. You got, you have a lot of work in there, and you're probably gonna get blooded at some point down there too. Five dollars and two cents a barrel. That's down one. You got, you have a lot of work ahead of yourself. Three eight percent. What they're trying to do to you is blood you here. Um, they're trying to catch you in here. Do they have earnings coming up? Protect your trades from macro. They want to trade you down here. Attribute Pro. Now only $99 a year for our real time service. That, this is a tough one, man. Yeah, they're trying to get you back down here over here. They're trying to get you over here. Let me look at this for a minute a higher frame. Someone's stinky. This is all good. This is all good. That's all good. That's all good. Series of higher lows, higher lows. I will say this. If you can get through all this shit up here, you can get above that daily trigger, right? You mean you will close you will close all this out. Hold on, let me get rid of this stuff. It's it's not necessarily negative. You just have like someone doesn't want you going up there. You can see it. I don't know. I, what I, my my guess here is that it's um. I, my guess here is that someone above all of these people here, uh, are trapped. That's what my guess is. You're below the monthly trigger. That's negative. Uh, you've got a lot of trapped souls in here. Like here to here, these guys are all trapped. So, um, the only point that I would make to you would be, do you see how we came up right here and you broke above that same band and you like literally rocket shipped? I would expect the same thing, like grind, 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 and then, uh, boom down boom down um uh, and then some kind of non the, the your one major issue is this shit up here um but i like the chart i, I can't say i don't like the chart you have some positivity here though too i want to show you that so uh your monthly trigger was violently down and it's now starting to flatten a little bit so your correction is likely over uh, but you have a lot of work to do. You you def you definitely have a lot of work to do. So, um, 
We de you definitely have a lot of work to do. This band right here, this is your shit band over here. They don't like when you go up above this thing. You see how that is? You can just see it, right? You get up above this band and it's like grind, 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 then squeeze, pull you right back down, right? Steps of hell. Grind, 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 squeeze, pull you right back down. Squeeze, pull you right back down. This is a big band of, um, it's not bad. It's just once you get above it, you move, right? Look at that move right there. Big fucking squeeze on that one. Uh, so I'll say this to you on, uh, I'll say this to you on, on snow. Once you get above this band here, this volatility, you have the potential to squeeze your face off. So if you can, if you can get above here, get above here and come like right here, the moment you get to 165, 84, this is like Apple, right? The moment you get to 165, once Apple gets above its daily trigger, you are extremely bullish. This is the big trade right here. Bunch of money in here. Uh, a lot of hard work here. And then, you know, this is where the money trade is. This is where you start making some bank. Almost like risk-free shit. Nice chart, by the way. I like it. I like snow right now. We'll leave this one up and we'll continue to monitor it. I like the ticker. Old Jim Bros over here. Uh, whatever risk you have on the market, I'm going to warn you here. Uh, if you've been making money right as we approach this red bar above here, uh, please take your winnings. Um, do I think we get above this? Yes, I do. Let me look at this one more. I just want to make sure I got this right. I want you to know that it gets very dangerous when we come up here, okay? Just note that it gets very dangerous. As we come up here, take some of your winnings off because at any moment, I want you to know that at any moment, when we go up here, uh, you can get a red bar to death, red bar to death, red bar to death. So just, just on these PTs are extremes up here. Head on a swivel on this stuff. Raise your stops as we go higher. Know where your support is. I'm still long. I'm not taking anything off. Uh, I'm long until 5.30. So I, I've, I'm positioned right now. Uh, I want 5,300. I want, I want all time highs and then I want 5,300. All time highs is, um, you need this for continuation. This is your PT four right here. There's a lot of work in here. There's a ton of work. See all that? That's a shit ton of work for bulls. This is a lot of resistance here. This is like snow. This whole zone right here is like snow. They do not, sellers do not want you getting above this. Um, 
And Bulls need this 521.51 so that we can trade all-time highs up here. Uh, where is it? 525.80, I believe. Yep, top tick right there. Not even that far away, are we? Not even that far away, are we? Not even that fucking far away, are we? Now, what happens on this right here? I just want you guys to see something, so... Extends advance to 4% for biggest gain in 11 months. Now, I want to show you something up here that's important, okay? They're going to pull it back on you. They're going to rug pull you at some point. You're not, you're likely not getting through this stuff, all of this, without the help of the half hour trigger or the hourly trigger. Just be aware of it that we're coming into some risk. Peel a little bit off, take some off, raise your stops. If you get stopped out, get stopped. Take the stop out, take your cash and say thank you. <laughs> thank you, market gods. I made money today. I want, I want you to see something else, too. I want you to see something important here. Remember when we were down here and I said to you, I'm going to delete a bunch of this shit. I don't want to delete this stuff, but look at the structure here. Remember what I said to you earlier today? I said, wait until the trade shows itself to you. Let the work be done on it. The moment the work's done on it, this is the free trade right here. This is the money part of the trade. You make bank on that trade. And it's like a 95% of the time winner. If you were patient and waited for that part of the trade right there, you let the work get done. You didn't get thrown down below. You didn't get thrown down below down here. You were patient, right, with your trade. You should have taken the trade right here. And this is a free money trade right here. It's a gorgeous fucking trade. It's beautiful. Absolutely stunning. If you were able to get on that trade, congratulations. Congratulations. You did it. We're coming into the top of that trade right now. I'm going to show you one more thing. It's important. $89.74 a barrel. I want to talk to you guys about something important about the structure of this trade. So, you're not long here. You're, you could be for brief moments, like I'm long there, there, I'm long there, I'm long there, I'm long there, but, but not like committed. Does that make sense? You have a lot of risk of rolling. This is where you're long, this part of the trade right here. This is the money part of the trade. This is where the risk comes in. So where's your biggest danger? Your biggest danger is entering the trade here. Your biggest danger is entering the trade there, and your next risk is at the top of the trade up here. So if you're in this part of the trade right here, you make bank in here normally. This works up and down side, the downside and upside work. If this was flipped over, right, this is where it would squeeze on you and take all your money, right? This is also a place where if they reverse it on you, goes straight down to the hourly trigger, take all your money. So like this is the beautiful part of the trade here and here. Right in here is like the money trade. If you can always get into this part of the trade up or down, uh, you're going to be a very successful trader. If you're the kind of guy that's trying to buy this shit, you're going to have a lot of losses. If you're the kind of guy that's jumping in on a trade up here, you're going to have a lot of losses. This is the sweet spot right here. This is a gorgeous sweet spot in here. Risk-free money-making, usually. Not risk-free, but, you know, 75 to 95% of the time, uh, you should be a confident uh, long in that, in, that, in that part of the trade. Like, confident. Like, I'm not worried. I've got the risk on. I know where the sellers are. I know where the buyers are. Where the, where are the buyers? We know where they are, right? The buyers are right here. These are the buyers. We know where the sellers are. They're, hold on. Sellers are up here. This is the risk-free zone in here. 
buyers, sellers, risk-free. Same thing in the inverse, too. I should, I should move it down a little bit, but. Buyers. Last known sellers. Easy money. Easy money right here. Easy money, like taking take candy from a baby. They said when I was a kid, taking candy from a baby. This part of the trade, eh, you could leave some runners on if you wanted. Let's see how this plays out. In my view, we need the half-hour trigger to help. Uh, at minimum, the five-minute trigger, if not the half-hour hourly trigger. We need some help. So let's see what happens here. I think we come back and retest the five-minute trigger. I do. I think we do. So I think we're going to come back down here, break below. But we're going to test that right there. I think we do. I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but I think we, I think we need help. How do we know if we don't need help? You know that too, don't you? I think we roll. But how do you know if we're going to go higher? You already know how to do it, right? You don't need me. Get rid of all this shit now. Get rid of all that shit over there. So how do you know if we're going to go up here? You'd be like, hey, Cap, what about, uh, what, if, what if we just keep going up? Well, you just snap it like you did before. Right there is a little, another little yellow box, right? Uh, you put another little yellow box in the one-minute trigger, right? Right here. Right there. No difference. Same shit. What time is it in the afternoon? 2.47, right? Almost 3 p.m. Power hour or sour hour? I would suspect that we pull back at the beginning of power hour and they run it up into the close. That's my suspicion. Let's see what happens. Let's check where uh, VIX 9 day is. Check where VIX 9 day is. Uh, we got some more blood here possible. We actually got a new low here. That's good to see. We could still squeeze this, though. You see that See that? Uh, that rolling right now of the hourly trigger? Yeah, US uh, D Japan's getting another a bid right now. Uh, Q's coming into it. Some uh, some volatility. IWM looking for a trade back to retest the hourly trigger. That looks like a pullback's coming. GCT, baby, making a fucking face ripper. Apple with a face ripper. They got their new high. They, look at, they could use a pullback. Uh, NVDA could use a pullback. Palantir still rocking and rolling. XOM still rocking and rolling. Tesla looking all bulled up. Snow coming into its first real resistance. HYG rolling over. That's giving you some warning right now. They're testing HYG testing its one minute. Um, it's one minute trigger right now. Rolling over slightly. VIX bottoming pattern. Dixie flattening a little bit. We're probably getting a pullback here, so be careful. First target on the pullback. 51766 
HYG telling you a little bit of a pullback coming. Sorry, I'm yawning. I'm very tired here. I'm extremely tired. What the fuck happened? Dude, what the fuck happened here? Oh, I have to trade this. Oh, dude, what just happened? What just happened to them? They just traded their year trigger. Did they just go bankrupt or something? Oh, no, 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 no. You buy this. Fuzzy Panda? Who the fuck is... I mean, I know who he is, but... Insurance? Oh, no. Can't say fraud. Can't say fraud. That's a big no-no. I don't care about sexual assault. Uh, you can't say fraud. If you say fraud, that's bad news. I tell you guys that all the time, right? There's like one word you never, ever, ever say, fraud. You say fraud, bad news. Let's look at Globe, Globe Life. Oh, holy shit. They just tagged their yearly trigger. Holy fuck. 55, 20. I'm going to warn you with something here. I want to show you guys something here, okay? I want to show you guys some shit. I was just talking to you about this with Tesla, wasn't I? I just talked to you about this about Tesla. You see that gray line right there? And I told you, I said, if you see this tag, this this uh, uh, this six month trigger, you start seeing shit like this right here. It's always either a, a stock market crash, like a world war. If you ever see the S and P five hundred do that. It means that we're going to have something really bad happen, like nuclear bombs going off, uh, World War III. And if it's an individual ticker, like Tesla, some really bad shit comes out. When people make complaints about fraud, uh, when someone, someone mentions the word fraud, is bad. Real bad. Trading 47.56 right now. Some guy out there was in puts. Let's see if there was any, oh, let's see if there's any hint of this. Ah, uh, there was already a hint of this, though. There was already a hint of this happening. They, there was some warning going on. Someone knew what was up back on uh, the 8th of March. That's not normal. Uh, you already had the cross on. The cross came out on April 3rd. I want to show you guys something here. Let me show you guys something cool. Let me show you a beautiful thing right here. Let me show you what a correction looks like. You see that right there? Let me show you something out there. You see how you see how price didn't even bounce on the hourly on the daily trigger? It just went right through it like butter, right? Like butter. Come up once, twice, three times. As that happens, what would I tell you? Right there, what would I tell you? And they got the new low, right? What would I tell you? About that, what would I have told you about that ticker on the 11th of March? I would have told you get the fuck out of that ticker. 
and you're fucking going to protect yourself, wouldn't I? I'd be like, you get the fuck out of that ticker or your max long puts, right? So they knew about this. Someone knew about this. Uh, someone knew about this back on March thir- March 12th. And look what happened. Ooh. Then look what happened. You got the you got this cross right here. Look at this cross. Daily trigger crosses the weekly. Let me tell you what happens on that shit. Bye bye, bitches. Now you're getting the weekly and the daily cross on the weekly immediately. What do you think happens in here? If you saw that, if you didn't see any of this, and you just saw that shit right there, good fucking night. 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 See you later. See you later. Bye bye, Globe Life. And you ain't no fucking way. And let me show you something cool about this. When you see these three crossing and that violence right there, bye bye, bitches. Gone. This is going to pull back, by the way. Trading 47.56. Coast to coast. Sixty four percent of its value gone. Motherfucker. Oh, dude. Oh. If you were long globe life and you had the triggers, you would have been mega hedged in here. And been get you would be you'd be rich right now. You'd be mega hedged in here. And you'd be fucking filthy rich. No triggers, you're fucked for life. Bye bye. That's a night. Thanks for thanks for calling that ticker out. We'll keep an eye on this ticker. We'll keep this up here. Oh yeah, they're super fucked. We'll keep an eye on this ticker. I'm down to trade this, believe it or not. We'll leave this one up. This is why you pay attention to corrections. This is why you watch like a hawk. Like a hawk. This is why you confirm corrections. It's why you don't call a correction unless, unless there is one. This is why when you do confirm a correction, you fucking get out of the way. Get out of the goddamn way. Yeah, I don't like the name. I don't like. I've seen this. Um, this I've seen this company before. Uh, this uh, fuzzy panda has been wrong in the past. And uh, this fuzzy panda, uh, they called something else recently that, not recently. I want to say the past year, maybe that wound up being bullshit. But, um, like the sexual assault. I mean, no, I'm not. That's not that that's okay, but. The shit that always gets a company is it's never sexual assault. It's always fraud. You mentioned the word fraud. Oof. Hands off. Hands off. Fuzzy Panda claims to have confirmed this with undercover investigations in the company. During the time the firm claims its agents were told about uplines, offered cash and drugs, and were told to lie about their addresses to regulators. Uh, I'm going to assume that somebody got a hold of this. Uh, f- oh, okay. Uh, Warren Buffett sold a stake in the company after 20 years and warned not to invest in charlatans in the insurance industry. Uh, when, I want to know when, um, 
when Warren Buffett sold. I bet it was right around where that shit started going on. Has to be. Yeah, the front dude. Uh, there's like one dirty word in the in in like in public companies. The biggest dirty word is fraud. You know who's a good example of that? You know who's a good example of that? Um, I was I was long. I think I was long or something on uh, Sam Adams. And um, I was long from like really low. Uh, I'd been long Sam Adams for a long time, and um, I went into their earnings report and their their fucking CFO or some shit. Their CFO didn't didn't give a um or didn't uh, didn't um. Uh, what the fuck is it called? I'm, having a mind. I'm really tired right now. I'm sorry. Um, Sam Adams didn't uh, like update their guidance, and they knew that the uh, seltzer beverages didn't do what they wanted them to do, and so then they didn't re they didn't give a they didn't re give a re guidance, and um, they, they didn't give more guidance. So what happened was I was in the or I was in the uh, earnings call and the guidance. Yeah, dude. So when that shit went down, right, I was with some friends and I was like, look, here's the deal. Sam Adams basically committed legal fraud. You had like three or four top guys that were selling shares and they didn't um, they didn't come out and, um, and um, re-guide, right? They didn't say, hey, look, uh, the seltzer shit didn't take off. They didn't drop that information until they went to their guidance. It was basically legal fraud. It's, but it's still fraud. Even though it was legal, it was fucking fraud. And uh, people are like, where do you think it's going to go? I'm like, it's going to fucking zero. Well, not zero, but it's going like to fucking zero. Uh, you, don't, you don't get away with that shit. They don't put, like, who, who doesn't put up with that shit is the banks. The banks want to know everything uh, before you do. They want to know everything before you know. They don't care if you don't know. They don't give a fuck if you don't know. But if they don't know... They get angry, like bankers, market makers, the the people that own the market, like the the people that this is their market people, they will fucking drop you like a bad motherfucking habit, period, like fraud. Never do the fraud. Never do the fraud. You're the fraud, you're fucked. <laughs> Don't do the fucking fraud. <laughs> it's the only thing. It's like the golden rule. <laughs> if you do that shit, mm -mm, bad habit, rug pull. <laughs> See you later. And they did that to Sam Adams. They rug pulled that fucking company, and they ran that shit down to fucking nothing. Do you remember when that shit happened with, with Sam Adams, dude? Dude, whoa. Where's Sam? Where's, where's good old Sam Adams? You want to see what happened with Sam Adams when they did that shit? I forget what the ticker symbol is anymore. Yeah, Sam. You want to see when that shit happened to Sam Adams? I was there for that one. That was some gnarly, gnarly, gnarly shit. Right there. Fucking fraud. Legal fraud. Right there. People are like, what's, what's going to happen? I'm like, that shit's going to fucking zero. Get the fuck out right now. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> and where did they take it? Where did they take it? The Sam Adams, where did they take it? Here's their six-month trigger. Let's look at it. Where do they take Sam Adams? To the fucking cleaners. To the fucking cleaners. And it's still going down. Trading 291 right now. And where is their yearly trigger? 178.52. I'm telling you, you fuck with these guys, right? And their market? They will fucking bury you. <laughs> they will teach you a lesson to never do that to you ever again. <laughs> ever. Ever, ever, ever again. <laughs> ever, ever, ever again. They will 
fuck you. <laughs> I remember the day it happened. I was like, I can't believe I'm hearing this right now. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, they knew about this and didn't tell anybody. <laughs> like, well, you, you can't do that. <laughs> Not as a publicly traded company. You can't do that. <laughs> Private company, you can evade that shit. You can, like, be mysterious and shit, but to the public, you can. But I'm telling you what, a publicly traded company, pull that shit. Bye-bye, bitches. <laughs> oh, dude, I was so mad. I was so angry. I was so angry, Winky. I was fucking furious, dude. I was so mad. I was so mad. Like, all they had to do, dude, all they had to do was, like, re-guide. They just re-guided it. Everything would have been fine. I mean, it would have gone down, but not like it did. It would have gone, oh, we're recovering the one-minute trigger right now. Look at that. We're going to turn that back into green. That's bullish. Okay, the bulls are fucking maintaining right now. You can't do that shit. You, you, you do that shit, they, 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 dro they drop you like a bad habit. They teach you a lesson. These guys do not fuck around. These guys are monsters. They are fucking monsters. They're evil. Like if you think your dad was mean to you, pff, you meet some Wall Streeters with some money. They're monsters. GL was halted. I think it's a good trade. I think there's a, I think there's a retrace trade on this trade. It might be worth just buying shares. I mean, those are some pretty serious allegations, aren't they? Those are some pretty serious allegations. 40 bucks. Let's draw it. Let's snap a line. Do you guys know how to trade these? Do you guys know how to trade these trade? You guys know how to trade this shit? It's pretty easy. It's just like a it's just like an I, an IPO. You start there. Ugh, sorry, yawning. You start right here. You don't take a trade there. You just watch it. I realize it's stopped. I realize it's been halted. I get it. I get it. It's been, it's been halted. How many times has it been halted today? Anybody know how many times it's been halted? No, 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 no. no you know, yeah, you sell it into the ground. It's not right away. <laughs> we can sell right away. It doesn't matter if you break below or above. How many times have they halted it? <clears throat> is, is it like the oh it's a lot they might have it's it's probably shut down for the day then it's probably there's a i, I forget what the limit is. is it three or five eight times no fucking way at least six i figure what the rules are what are the rules i think there's a rule i thought there was a rule that um if you halt so many times in one day they stop trading i forget what the rules are now they changed the rules in covid i think uh, remember they made some rule changes? Oh, they only apply for indexes? Okay, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I thought they, I thought there was like some rules for like across the board that they changed. Yeah, I, don't hold me to this. I, I used to know the, the rule changes, but it's been a long time since, um, I've tra traded those halts. We used to trade that shit every week, right? <laughs> <laughs> we halted again. <laughs> Everybody go get a bear. <laughs> Let's see if they start it back up. Trade it's on discount right now. <laughs> you guys want a discount? <laughs> you got it. <laughs> this is the same kind of shit you just wait for um now this might not turn around, but if it does you're looking for um you're looking for this right here and just that right there Jesus Christ that's a big fucking move I didn't even notice that holy fuckers look at this this is thirty eight dollars and you have to wait for fifty two to jump back in 
This is dangerous as fuck right here. That that this is very violent here. You might want to get some calls right on the fucking bell. Oh, here comes the thirty minute trigger, baby. Woohoo! Oh, here it comes. Ooh, this might be juicy. This might this might get pretty juicy here. Hourly trigger, half hour trigger racing down to meet price right now on GL. Coming down to save the day. You could get a big giant squeeze here. That shit could come down here. Price can get back above. Woof. It's running again. It's back up and running. It's on again. It's running again. Let's watch it. Now trading 44.88. Off a low of uh, GL with a low tick of 39.81. GL trading like a fucking meme stock right now. Now trading 46 flat. Target to the upside, 50 bucks. 38 to 50 dollars. This is going to be wild. Watch this shit. Trading 46.21. There's a gap right here. Price target 47.58. Stops below at 39 dollars. I'm going to switch to one other thing here. Hold on. I'm going to give you guys some targets here. First target hit forty seven fifty eight. Next target fifty fifty five thirty one. Then fifty eight ninety five and then seventy four fourteen. I don't know that you get that one.
GL, baby. Trading forty seven almost, forty six fifty. Trapping the bulls in here on spy, man. They're killing you on spy, dude. Come on, spy. I'm gonna grab. I'm gonna get some zero dates here. Three sixteen in the afternoon, or maybe one dates. Our early trigger is not coming up to help right now. See if we can grab some zero dates here. <sighs> oh, yeah, I want that one right there. Now trading forty seven sixty on GL. Trading forty eight thirty nine right now from a low of thirty eight fucking dollars. Holy shit. You'd be waiting months for that, right? On a normal ticker. Thirty eight dollars just now to forty eight ninety three. Fuck. That's like a three month trade, dudes. Right, right, Winky? $38.95 when they when this when the uh halt came off, right? It was at thirty eight ninety five. It's now trading uh forty eight fifty fucking two. Woof. Well, there's another gap right here, too. I, didn't, I missed that gap. I didn't see it. Oh, I saw it. It's right there. I saw that gap. It's right there. Trading 49.28. We'll see if they send it back down on hitting $50. Jesus Christ, I can't believe it just went from $38 50 bucks. It's fucking insano. You guys can't see me out there? 
the spread is ugly. I was just thinking about buying the stock. I'm like, I don't know if I'd be trading options. I'd be like, you just buy the underlying. Or is the spread of the bid ask on the buying the stock crazy right now or no? You can see me on Twitch? Okay. Thanks for saying something out there, guys. You just buy the fucking stock. Fuck the, fuck the options. Just buy the underlying. Raise your stops as you go up. Well, that's somebody's whole fucking... You know, Wiki's got it right. That's somebody's whole fucking year right there. Dude, can you imagine, like, being long that ticker and not having a hedge on with the cross? Oof. I feel bad for anybody that was like, uh, I had a grand in there, and now it's worth uh, $5. Yeah, I'd be buying the underlying. Not anymore, though. It's too late. Well, it's not quite too late. You're above the one minute trigger now. You should be able to get uh, to 50, 56. Do you think there's any funds out there that was long that shit that are like, all oh, that shit's coming back? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is going to be the new meme stock, isn't it? <laughs> be like an 18-year-old kid be like, you know about a company named GL? They got things going, moving up for them. They got accused of fraud. They're going to bring it right back. It's going to be back soon. Load up on it right now. There's going to be a lot of bag holders. <laughs> Been long, been long, uh, been long GL since April 11th. You remember that back in 2024? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a new Wall Street bet stock. Without a doubt. I did a bunch of dual di due diligence. That fraud shit was bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't do not mess with options. Uh, Winky, good job saying that. They will reprice those options. Uh, do not hold options overnight. Do not hold them to a halt. None of that shit. And if you're buying stock, if you're buying stock out there, right, make sure that you're buying it through a prime broker. Listen to me closely. I should have said that earlier. Um, uh, you should all have. Uh, I should say this to you guys. So this is um, education time. If you ever trade shit like that, right? Always a prime broker. Always. Never Weeble. Never Tasty Trade. Never a broker. Prime bank. Always. Exactly. No Uncle Tony's. <laughs> no, I'm with you. That's a very good point. Yeah, exactly, go team. Or go tent, yeah. Uh, you use a prime bank because they can back uh, the, the securities with cash. With hard cash. Brokers don't do that. They have to put up more cash. Uh, so you have liquidity and they won't stop you from trading. Uh, they will accept your order to sell. Dude, always a prime broker. Always a prime broker with this kind of, that kind of shit. Always, 100%. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly, SGL. <laughs> Are we got Aces 10? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so the, all these brokers have to have a cash balance on hand. In case you lose your ass, right? <laughs> and if they don't have that cash, they have to come up with the cash. And if they don't, they get stopped from allowing, being allowed to uh, offer you liquidity. So <laughs> the only people that can do that are prime banks. So like Charles Schwab, 
Like Schwab kind of sucks, but you should have one of your brokerages should be from a prime bank uh, for buying and selling volatile instruments or not instruments for products. Always. Had a high tick just then of 5107. See if they can keep pumping it up right now. Uh, be very, always be careful of that shit. Like always a prime bank for volatile stuff. Uh, you know, there's another one. There's another lesson in this too. That And GME was the first time that, that shit happened. If you guys look back way, 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 way long time ago. Uh, for you youngins, it would be like half your life. But uh, go back and look up the history of Vix, uh, uh, Volmageddon. And there was, like, people partying, right? They were just fucking partying with the VIX products, like, ball suppression shit. They were fucking partying it up, dude. And when those, when that shit imploded, nobody got paid. Like, everybody lost their fucking money. There were people that were, like, shorting that made millions and millions and millions of dollars. They didn't pay that shit either. They just said, fuck you, you're not getting paid. Yeah, there's a real risk if you're shorting something, right? Or not short, there's a real risk that let's say you like buy all the puts the right moment and a fucking ticker goes to zero, that you're not, you're never getting paid. I kid you not, you're never getting paid. You tell you to go fuck yourself. That's true. Dude, Enron was crazy. I, 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 I kind of knew a couple of those guys. Uh, like, not, I didn't know those guys. Um, I didn't know those guys, like, I was friendly with them, but I was in the same room with them here and there uh, in Vail. Vail's a really small place. Uh, those guys hung out all the time. Like, Kenny Lay and all those guys, they, they would hang out and party all the time. They were fucking drinking. They were drinking Cristal and fucking Louis Trey. It was out of control. You knew when those boys were around. They had more fucking money than God. So they those guys had houses all up in um in uh what do you call it? Uh where the fuck was it? I'm trying to remember now. Uh the ski resort up the road from uh Vale, whatever it's called. They give you the co hot cocoa and the cookies and shit. Anyways, they had houses up and if you go skiing at this what the fuck's the name of the mountain? Hold on a second here. Uh, Beaver Creek, as it's called. So in Vail, right? There's a right up the road from Vail. There's a place called uh, Beaver Creek, right? If you ever ski there, if you ever go skiing in Beaver Creek, when you if you if you're not a member, right? If you're not a member of the resort, if you don't own a home in Beaver Creek, that's right. If you don't own a home there, they make you park at the bottom of it. And you take a gondola up. They hand you they hand you cookies, warm cookies and hot cocoa in the morning. And you take a gondola above where these homes are. Those guys lived in there. Like all the Enron guys owned homes in there. And they would go to Vail and they would go to this uh restaurant. Um there's a restaurant called I think it starts with a G. Uh, but it was at the top of the mountain of Vail, and they would go up there and fucking party. Um Hold on, let me look up the name of this restaurant. Uh, I don't know. Is it the Mountain Standard? Nah, it's not the Mountain Standard. That's fucking Mountain Standard is owned by Sweet Basil. That's a good fucking restaurant, though. There's like a private restaurant uh, at the top of Vale. Nah, not the 10th. Uh, unless they changed the name of it. But there used to be like a restaurant that was a part of Vale. 
Um, uh, nah, you, what was it? Gorse, not Gorse, such. Um, anyways, all the presidents used to go up there and eat and shit. And, uh, it was like a private, like a private place. And, uh, those guys used to go up there and fucking party, dude, and go crazy. Game Creek Club. That's it. Game Creek Club. That's the one. Game Creek Club. You got it. That's the one. Game Creek Club. Good job. Been a long time, dude. I haven't been in, I used to live in, I lived in Vail for, uh, seven years. Six or seven years I lived in Vail. Something like that. It was fucking awesome. I lived there during the uh, run up to the to the implosion. <laughs> it was fucking awesome. It was awesome. You think they'll pay the uh, 520s today or no? Uh, Jimmy, you don't have to wait for tomorrow, brother. Just um, sit on your hands until the bell. Sit on your hands until the bell, Jimmy. Uh, if they ramp this into the bell, brother, that would be the time to do it. If they ramp this up, you want to buy it here. Bulls need that right there. You're gonna you're if if we ramp it into the bell right now, uh we can have a pullback. It's okay. Here's another note too. Uh if we do get this 52151, uh that's not good for bears. Bears do not want to see that. You know, there's a there's a part to this here too. If we can't get it done in cash market, they do it in overnight too. So, uh, be aware of it. Yeah, just sit on your hands, man, for like five minutes. You know, they did that shit. Remember the other day when they did that, Jimmy? They were just fucking ran it up, and it was stupid. Remember how fucking crazy that was? They. I was talking to Joe. I was talking to Joe um, last night. No, I was talking to Binky, and I was like, "Dude, I was like, so remember we burned, right?" Uh, let me see here. I'll show it a better way. Dude, Game Creek Club. I had a friend that worked there. I used to get into that place. Um, Game Creek Club. Long time since I've heard that. So, like, I want to show you guys something. I was talking to Binky the other day, and I'm like, I was talking to Binky, and I'm like, I'm like let's go back and examine this. So this is the other day, right? So the other night I was on the phone with Binky late. I Binky called me and he was like, dude, he's like, he's like, you need a fucking break. He's like, take a break. So this is what I want to show you guys. So if you were short right here, right? Say you were short. Right? You got you got stopped out, right? 
If you didn't get stopped out, you're in full panic right here. Like, panic. So just think about the, just think about the management. Think about the management, like, think about the management. You're thinking, we're going to go down here and blood it, right? And you get trapped here. And you panic, right? Squeeze it all the way up to right here. And then think about this. Let's say you took a short right here. Come into the open. Nine, nine o'clock in the morning, what do they do? They stop your ass out again. And then, boom, drop you. Like, that is not an easy thing to short, is it? You know, you know who made a lot of money here? Anyone that bought puts. If anybody bought put there, they couldn't get out over here. So they might have been, like, panicking here, but they couldn't close them. So they saw this, bam, they made money. But I, my point here is that, uh, my point here is that this must have been brutal to short. There's no way this was easy. And then you wake up, and what do you see here? Like you're you're stopped out. You couldn't get in right here. And then what do they do to you right here? They fucking come straight back up on you. It's kind of wild, right? And your puts down here are losing value right off the bell. Like right off the bell, they're stealing your put money. You can't say that you can't say that this was an easy trade. There's no fucking way. For some people it was, but for a lot of people, I can't say that that could have been easy in any way, shape, or form. And then dead sideways the rest of the day. Like that's no fun, right? This shit right here was brutal. Long, short, I don't care. This, whatever you were, you had to be fast as fuck. Fast as fuck. Fast as fuck. Even me, I was like. I was like, yeah, you'll get 516. I was like, we'll, we'll tee it up to 520 in cash, go to 516, then be off and running. And they went right fucking underneath it, and they ticked it underneath it, didn't they? Like, this was some real, 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 real craziness. Real craziness. Like, perfect, perfect, like, all the right places, right underneath. They knew exactly what it was going to be. Uh, I, no and yes. Yes and no. They can be really good to you. You can make a lot of money in futures. Uh, but you definitely want to tr learn how to trade it with somebody, uh, with a partner. You need to trade it with somebody. And there's a lot of shit you got to learn. Uh, but they can be very profitable. I, I would say to you this. If you ever want to learn futures, uh, find someone to teach you. Uh, paper trade a ton of it. Then go to a prop firm. Don't use your own money because you can get really hurt. And I mean really hurt like really bad where you're like changing your phone number, dropping all your email addresses and you move. <laughs> you can really put a hurting on. Yes. Uh, there are futures traders in our discord. If you hook up with those guys, they will show you the way. Uh, there's a, the one thing I would say to you, I think there's more to it than this, but, uh, the, the biggest glaring thing is, uh, defined risk. Say that with me. Defined risk. If you spend 10 cents buying an option, you can only lose 10 cents buying an option, right? <laughs> he's, he's lots of stops. <laughs> Like, you, you have to be a well-disciplined trader, and you live by rules. You live by them. There's no hunching or hunches like, oh, I think we're going up. <laughs> like, you don't, none of that. If uh, cooking a, uh, an entree for dinner, you could make adjustments in it, it's more like baking. 
where it's exact. You need 28 grams of sugar. You need 50 grams of flour. What are you doing with 55 grams of flour? Why are you doing 55 gla- grams of flour? I told you fucking 50 grams of flour, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's very surgical. <laughs> rules. And those rules, guess how those rules are come up with? From a lot of fucking pain from people. A lot of fucking pain. You want to learn quick, you learn in futures. You'll learn a lot fast. (laughs) Right, exactly. (laughs) Futures pain is real. And you, you, you abide by the rules. You do. You abide by the rules. You'll see a lot of trades get where you, like a lot. There's like a lot of hindsight in, in futures trading too. Like if you follow your rules and you're like, oh, I just made a thousand bucks, right? And you watch price get away from you to the upside or downside, even if you were on that side of the trade. You're like I took my money and ran. I could have made thirty thousand um, dollars. You you let it go. You're just like fuck it. You can't submit to that. You have to stay in your rules. Consistency is the key. AMD is on the move right now. Yeah, defined risk is a big part of uh, owning an option, right? Uh, Defined risk is a good thing for uh, young traders, right? Young young traders that are trying to learn options. Um, Cheap options are good. Uh, don't be out there, like, learn how to trade options with, like, fucking, you know, I just bought a $15 Tesla call. Don't do that shit either. That's stupid. That's stupid fuck. That's stupid shit. Uh, and you also need to know the feeling of, um, of not paper trading. Paper trading only takes you so far. Uh, prop trading only takes you so far. When you have real money in the line, it's a very different thing. Uh, you trade differently, too. Uh, your behavior is always different with real money in the line. Always different. And no, you're not a better trader with real money in the line. Don't believe that either. You're just your 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 full behavior is different across the board. You worry more, you get more upset, you get more happy. A lot of people will trade well, and then they suck. Or they trade bad paper, then they trade great with money. What do I think about prop firms? Uh, I think they're I think they're good. Uh, I'm with, I'm with Mr. Yen on this. Like, you're trading a sim basically. You're not trading real money. You th- they tell you that you are, but you're not. They will pay you. You get paid. Uh, if you're any good at it, they'll offer you a job. Uh, they'll actually offer you a job to trade for them, uh, trade their money for them. But I don't think prop, I don't think prop trading is a bad thing. Uh, if you, like, you have a 20 grand in your bank, right? And you can put up 250 to 500 bucks and trade somebody else's money. No brainer. No brainer doing that. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, we got approached. Uh, we got approached recently uh, to uh, start a combine, and we've discussed it, but there's nothing set in stone for it. Uh, but we've talked about it. Um, we talked about it about two months ago, three months ago. Um, and if we ever do it, I'll tell you guys about it. Um, because a lot of you guys come through us, right? Let's be honest. Uh, we've got five or six thousand people watching the show every day we've got another 
uh restreams uh restream the show being restreamed in blogs and discords and shit probably another i don't know five thousand people watching uh we have hedge funds that have told me that they the play us in their, in their hedge funds so uh we trade spoos right so we're, we're like right up the alley we're like prime like if we're teaching you how to trade zero dates with spy you'd make a jump easily to futures um you'd, you'd be you'd be a good futures trader you're like a nice you uh i would think of it like you're in basic training with me and then i send you off to boot camp or to uh, ait and i go here you go uh you're a good trader we have some things we have to do though uh so like from my pers so right now we're building so we have some developers right now working on a uh paper trading uh we're developing our own paper trading program right so what we want to do is now we're about to have a breakout here on a uh you're welcome jimmy barry well i think the thought would be um that uh we'd start a paper trading thing right in the discord and if you'd want to participate uh you'd show your entries your exits uh we would have david ams teach you and uh, whatever and his guys teach you guys and then we put you to the prop trading firm and uh let's trade their money uh we don't want to send you guys there to put, see here's like so what what um yesterday Yesterday, when I was talking with uh, when I was talking with Mr. Yen, right, and he agrees with this too, right? He was talking the same stuff. Like, I wouldn't want you to just go to a prop firm and pay them two fifty or five hundred every week. Like, blow up your five hundred bucks, blow up your five hundred bucks, blow up your five hundred bucks. You kind of spinning your wheels. You want to like go through a boot camp with us, so that if you put five hundred bucks in, you're actually making some money. So, um. I would think that uh, we might do it. I don't know if we're going to do it or not, but if we did, we might do it. Uh, one of these prop trading firms said that we could uh, have our own prop trading firm. So uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. We're, I haven't spoken to him uh, in a while. So uh, if that happens, uh, we'll, we'll talk about it. You, you'll find out about it. It was actually a part of a conversation we had today, as a matter of fact. In this meeting I just got away from, uh, was in that was a part of that conversation uh so we we would teach you guys to uh um to to trade before you get to that point I'm back testing the one minute trigger right here trade is dead below the one minute trigger I retire right now. I did retire. I retired um twenty years has it been? I retired um Jesus Christ, uh Well, so I retired seven or eight years ago. And then um I was uh trading. I owned some homes. I had some uh, construction guys working for me and stuff, uh, rehabbing houses, doing flips and things like that. But I was kind of retired, like semi retired. And uh, I got bored. Uh, I was trading and I was like, I got bored. And then my friends were losing all their money. And I was like, fuck this. Let me help you out. Let me teach you how to make some money. Uh, uh, got a bunch of friends, uh, taught them how to make money. And uh, then they were like, dude, you should do a show for people. Or no, they were like, you should record some videos and get this shit on record recordings. And uh, so I was like, okay. Uh, so I made some recorded videos. And uh, then they were like, dude, there was like something happening. And I was like, oh, dude, you, you guys are like right here. You do this, do that. And they were like, dude, do a live stream. So I did a live stream. And uh, we 
traded with. A lot of those people are still here today. Uh, almost all of them. Uh, the original, like, 100 to 300 people, they're all still here years later. Um, so that's what we did. Uh, and I created a community of friends, right? Just a larger community at this point. Oh, oh, the doom and gloom down here. Oh, the doom and gloom. Uh, and we came to that point. Uh, so we did what we, we set out to do. Uh, so what we set out originally to do was to just do this. And we were like, well, let's do this until we don't have any more fun, right? Uh, it'll just be free, all of it free. Uh, we, we did what we wanted to do, and then we just came to a point where um, for us to continue to do it, we'd have to um, go to a free a freemium version uh, just so that we could, what we want to do is be able to pay for the, um, uh, the div it's like right now, uh, I don't know if you guys know this or not, you guys may or may not know this, we have developers working on a bunch of shit for you guys. That shit costs lots of money. Uh, we, we have like a, we're spending a lot of money right now trying to, um, go, uh, become like a, we're like, what we're doing right now is just a beta. It's just like beta at this point. Uh, we hope to go alpha in the next month or two. And matter of fact, that's, when we're having these meetings on Thursdays, it's to see where we are. Uh, you guys are going to be like, like quickly, you're going to be like, whoa, what's this? Whoa, what's that? Whoa, what's this? Whoa, what's that? Oh, they're stinky up here, huh? Old Jim Bros. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. <laughs> it's been more difficult than I thought it would be, too. Uh, along the way, I have had a lot of promises made to me. Um, and it's been hard to get those promises fulfilled. And this is from a lot of people, like, uh, I've hired a lot of developers. I've hired a lot of, uh, I mean, a lot. Like, I've probably hired at this point 10 or 15 developers. Um, it's not easy. And I, I, and I, my expectations are high. Like, I need it to be this. Uh, you heard me say this on the stream, right? A million times. How many countdowns have we had to launch? M more than I can count. Um, and then it doesn't, it doesn't meet my expectations. And I'm like, I ask you for this, and if we either take, we either get that or we don't do it at all. And so, uh, it's been a, it's been a long hard road. It's been a long hard road, and we're coming at this from a perspective that's unusual. Uh, normally, you're like people come at this and they're like, uh, I don't know, I want to make money selling a service or something. Uh, we were never, we never had that intent. And as a matter of fact. Um, uh, my partner is Joe Donut because I said to him that I was afraid that I would turn into that person. I was like, I don't want, I was like, I need a, my, my brother's keeper. Um, kind of like a, um, so I was in the army, you have a battle buddy and, uh, I was in the army for a long time and, uh, they impress upon you the importance of having a partner, uh, because they protect you, they help you, they keep, they, they have an objective viewpoint on things. Um, they make sure that you stick to your values, uh, who you are as a person. Uh, it's an important part of life. And so I've always been like that as a, an adult. Like I have my wife beside me. Um, and uh, so, and Joe Donut, he's a longtime friend of mine that uh, he was like a future business leaders of America. And like, he's like the most straight laced person you would ever meet. Like he is the most straight. He is like the, you know, white, perfect teeth perfect life worked very hard went to all the great schools did everything perfect and um would never ever endanger anything um i never wanted to be around like um stock pumpers or uh the bullshit that goes on in discords any of that kind of stuff any of the scam running any of the any like behind the scenes shit um and so having him there is um for that reason Oh, he's here. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, it, that has to do with that stuff too, right? The accounting, the IRS. Um, is somebody fucking doing something nefarious in the background? You name it. 
I mean, we're in financial education, right? So a lot of nefarious shit happens. It's common. Uh, you attract scammers. You attract bots. You attract fucking uh, Russian hooker bots, right? You attract uh, wolves. You attract all these different things. So you try to surround yourself with people that you trust. Uh, like That's why David's here. I've known David since uh, we were just two guys trading in a room together. And uh, he was never a nefarious person. He's a very, very loyal, honest, trustworthy, um, good person, a good man. Winky. You see Winky here, right? Uh, dude, Winky's like one of the fucking nicest, uh, most pleasant, honest people you ever meet. Uh, Bork. Uh, you start looking at the people that are around here. John L. You start looking at these guys, right? One by one by one by one. And uh, you find out that none of these people would ever keep company uh, with, with shit bags and fucking dirt bags and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so you have to surround yourself with those people, uh, with good people. Re it's required. Yeah, it's, re it's required. Uh, it, can quickly, it can quickly go fucking sideways. And I want nothing to do with that shit. Uh, and Joe doesn't either. Like, I don't need this. So uh, my skin in the game is not like I have to have this today. Uh, as a matter of fact, we did this, for, did this for free for three fucking years. Free. Three years. Uh, all by donations and support. That's it. Uh, donations and our money. Wherever, whenever it took our, needed our money, we got our money. And we, we bankrolled the whole entire thing. And it was because um, our intentions were clear. Oh, yeah, I'm in, I'm in 530 Cs. <laughs> I'm in 530 fucking Cs. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm bulled up, man. <laughs> I'm bulled the fuck up. I am not, as I've stated before, I'm not a seller of the rip. Uh, I'm a buyer of the dip. Uh, we were in a zone of, um, a zone of danger yesterday. Uh, so... Uh, my recommendation was that you uh, sit on your hands or you put on some protection. And uh, we still had no confirmation of uh, no, no confirmation of um, uh, a seller up scenario. We still don't at this point. Um, oh, thanks for the 2.1 uh, uh, dude. Uh, TPC, baby, trade podcast. 2.1 billion uh, MOC, sell, MOC sell side. Let me put some music on for you guys for the end of the day. Oh, I can't. You know what? I didn't get pretzel yet. I'll do, I promise I'll do music. Promise I'll do music. I've been demonetized now. Like the past fucking three or four weeks. <laughs> uh, if you're going to trade the MOC sell side imbalance, you take the trade for a one to two weeks out minimum. Remember, on this run, bulls need to get to uh, 521.51 for continuation. This is still the run. Uh, this run has not ended. Uh, this run ends below, though, 515.42. 515.42. You cannot lose the hourly trigger. I want you to know that. You cannot lose the hourly trigger. The run cannot end for bulls. If the run ends for bulls, right, it's not good. I want to buy this right here. I want to buy this shit right now. I can't. I'm going to wait. This is what I should be buying down here. I'm going to wait for the hourly trigger rechest around here. I'm going to wait for that one right there. All right, if they get us down here in the after hours, I will. How about that? Give me a second. Uh, 
I'll stick around with you. I'll stick around and see if they can get some low right here, and I'll try to grab some. Someone's angry, man. Somebody's super angry. They're saucy. Yeah, if they can get us low enough in after hours, I'll do it. I'll get some one dates for tomorrow. Oh, they're fucking pissy. Stinky fucking peats, aren't they? Let's see what they're doing here. See what they're trying to do here? They're like, fuck you. Oh, they're fucking mad. Same guys, right? Like clockwork. Guys are like clockwork coming into the market. They think they're so slick. These guys think they're slick as fuck. Oh, uh, they're expensive as fuck right now, dude. Uh, no, I'm not buying one dates for tomorrow. Thirty deltas or eighty cents. I'll wait until the open. Thirty deltas, eighty cents. No, thank you. If your thirty deltas were twenty cents, I'd buy them. No thanks. <laughs> They're like, "Are you gonna pay sixty cents for this trade if you want?" I'm like, "No, thank you." I'll keep watching them right now. Yeah, I'm watching this right here. This is a halfback trade right here. They're doing it in after hours, which is nice. It's actually kind of nice they're doing it right now. They're erasing this move. Normally, you'd erase this move in the uh, open, right? You'd erase all this stuff here, at least this much. They're doing it right now. It's pretty nice to see. There is a bear flat or a bear uh, plane here, but I don't know if it's real. Price target tomorrow. Uh, price target tomorrow. Uh, five twenty-two, five twenty-one. I think you're gonna get five twenty-three up here. I think you get this tomorrow. I think your price target tomorrow is 523.93. Um, so that just heads up. I don't know if they're going to just squeeze it up there and call it a wrap. Uh, bring it back down. Uh, so if you want just heads up what I think tomorrow, uh, you're likely trading 523 by the close tomorrow. Um, the safe bet for you is to wait for a dip to the hourly trigger on the open tomorrow. Uh, but I don't know if they do it in the quickly, like in the overnight, and then bring it back down for the close. Yeah, it is fake. Futures are fake. After hours are fake. I I always I always think that this this move at the end of the day is fake. Uh, after hours and uh, the in the um, first few minutes of the of the open. Like, this whole move is usually fake. All that shit comes back on the open every time. Every time they take that out. There'll be the hourly trigger right here. Fair chance we even open tomorrow, like, right here. And then right off the bell we go. So I'm going to be flat right now. Maybe they wait until uh, right at 9.30 we start ramping. I'm fine with that. Yeah, it's all fake. Uh, if you want the truth, if you want the real truth, it's all fake. It really is. Even the dome. The dome is fake. The whole thing is fake. Uh, prices are fake. Um, you want? I'll, I'll tell you some shit you wouldn't believe. I don't say it on stream because people that argue with me, so I don't want. I don't bother. <laughs> like seriously, like all the news, like the news really doesn't matter. It's all pre-planned. 
Um, it's all, it's all, it's all accumulation and distribution. It's what it is. Accumulation distribution. It's all it is. Or I should say it's accumulation distribution, but the price matters more than the shares. It's like accumulation distribution of price. That's, that's fucked up to say, right? It's real. I, I don't talk a lot about it on stream. I try to keep that. I get I piss people off saying that. Uh, but it's real. Yeah, I know no shit, right? That shit bugs me too. Um, that shit, like some of that shit, really bugs me. I get the math behind it, but you're already on it. Good job, Gary. You can always buy the open too, dude. You can always DCA the open. If you if we open flat tomorrow and they rip it on the bell, then um, just uh, go two or three strikes hot or two two or three strikes closer che for cheaper and chase. I'll be here with you tomorrow. So I'll, if if we open flat tomorrow, I'll, I'll we'll talk about what to do. No, 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 no. Um, it's very similar to does. Um, it's very similar to does uh, the Fed does the Fed operations actually make a difference or not? Even Fed presidents have admitted that. Uh, the market doesn't drop. Uh, you guys ever been here in a day and we just dropped like forty handles out of the blue, no reason given. Uh, you ever see like a um, a fake news story, like a real true fake one? Uh, you'll see it float around Twitter. Uh, they'll say, oh, a bomb went off in the, the Pentagon. Market goes down 100 fucking points and then immediately recovers. You're like, no, no, that shit's fake. There's nobody buying and selling fucking $50 billion in three minutes. I'm sorry. $500 billion in three minutes. The shame happened. I realize that they're saying the demand has gone away, so the price has gone away. Where the fuck's the money gone? Sorry. <laughs> All right, so I'll tell you guys this. You know how I go over the events with you? Uh, if, if I wasn't on stream with you guys, I wouldn't even look at them. <laughs> they don't mean anything to me. None of it does. Like, it's just uh, you, accumulate, you, you accumulate and you distribute. That's it. Accumulate, distribute. On a schedule. On a time clock. On a calendar. Yeah, exactly. The order flow guys know this too. Uh, you, you ask order flow guys this, they'll tell you that they'll tell you they believe that shit too. The order flow, even the order flow guys that believe in order flow, they're like, yeah, I believe in order flow, but I know exactly what they, what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Bitcoin. You you guys have all heard rumors of Bitcoin, right? Uh, there's only like. There's there's an argument that there's only like the majority of Bitcoin is only held by a few not a few but a very small group of people, um, and they make the decisions on when it goes up and down. <laughs> I really am a believer in accumulation distribution. Uh, that's why I, I don't go into it a lot, but price action is king. Um, follow price over everything. No, no, it's not Freemason stuff. It's just it's their market. Uh, you, you know how you can tell? Or if you read, I'll, I'll get some books together for you guys to read. Uh, I'll gather some books for you guys to read from actual uh, professionals that are honest in their books. And then... Um, You know, like, um, I'll, I'll give you some books for, for you to read. It's, it's their market. They make the market. Uh, you don't make the market. We don't make the market. Uh, we never will make the market. It'll never be our market. It'll never be allowed to be our market. You know, when you see glimpses of this shit, 
uh, you know about the the unlit markets, the dark markets, stuff like that, right? Uh, so you got that going on. Um, you have uh, banks just sued uh, three order flow companies, not order flow, uh, three um, uh, option tracker companies. They were able to assign uh, what the banks were doing. They just got sued by banks for tradecraft uh, infringement. Yeah, because banks don't want you fucking knowing what they're doing. Uh, that's real. There's a guy, I forget his name. I'll, I got to find this guy. He wrote a book about, he went on a circuit for a long time with the uh, in these big Ivy League schools. Uh, but he talks about how, um, he talks about how, like, uh, the banks know everything. They have offices in every fucking country. They know exactly what's going on. They pay mafiosos. They pay, uh, uh, like, the, back in the day, the KGB and shit like that. There's no more KGB, but... Um, they know most things that are going to happen before they happen. Most. And when they don't, you always see price revert. Every time. Every single time. If there's something truly unknown to the market, price always reverts on that news. Every single time. Uh, so they can position themselves. What's that? Yeah, I'm not talking about traders. Like traders are different. Uh, there's like, there's different. Uh, there's different functions in a bank or in a hedge fund. Uh, but then there's like the people that rule the fucking money markets and liquidity providers in the money markets. And order flow knows before you do. Even even your order flow, even when when you're buying an option, they know the price before you do, and they will make they will actually they will actually not fill you and make you chase, so that you're not ahead of them. And that's that's a, an honest. They, they're honest about it. It's not like it's it's not like it's a hidden secret. <laughs> it's it's not a hidden. It's not like oh, it's like nobody knows. They they admit to this. That's how they make money. Or right, you're getting delayed. You're actually getting delayed data. You can see it too. If you open up like three or four brokerage brokerages, you can actually see the bid asks are different or delayed more from one to the other. How do you win? Uh, their job is to take all your money. It's hard to win. Uh, normally for me, my preference is to get with them, try to trade, try to find out where their momentum is and follow them where they're going. So if I, I that, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a big momentum. I don't know if you know that, but I'm a big momentum trader. So if the momentum's going up, I'm going with that, if the momentum's going down, I'm trying to get out of the fucking way. Right. That's right. That's usually the best thing you can do. It's usually the best thing. It's usually the best thing to do is find out what they're doing, and follow them. That's right. It's their way. If it's not ours, absolutely every time. That's right. Trade what's in front of you. That's true too. Absolutely. No, no matter. Like you can come up with a plan. You can be a bull. You can be a bear. Um, I say I use bull bear, not because I want to. I use that terminology because I know that you guys use that terminology not you specifically you might not but i use it specifically because uh it helps to bring you in to teach you about supply and demand and be like okay uh i'm gonna teach you about supply and demand now what the real shit is where are the buyers where are the sellers or if we don't know where's the last known place of those buyers or sellers and try to figure it out. Sometimes we don't know. Sometimes we're like, oh, we think they're right there. I think the buyers, matter of fact, right here, right? I was like, I think they're right here. They were a little bit lower, weren't they? They were down here. A little bit farther down, weren't they? That's why I use old Jim Bro and, and uh, young Jim Bros. Uh, it's just a, it's just a, it's like a, um, what do you call it? A heel. These are heels. It's like wrestling. Here's the bad guys over here. Here's the good guys down over here, right? <laughs> no, the this is momentum right here. All of this that I use is momentum. So here, I'll show you something cool. Hold on a second, I'll show you something cool. Um, delete all that. So this is all momentum-based trading, okay? The triggers and velocity is momentum-based trading. 
and it goes back to the beginning of the stock market, and it's also accumulation and distribution. So it's both together, okay? Uh, I'll show you something. Uh, here, I'll show you something cool. This is the NYA. We'll spend some time together. You guys ready? It's Thursday. It's Friday. Tomorrow's Friday. Kind of a kind of an easy day. This is the uh, New York composite. If you don't know what that is, I'm going to teach you what it is. So some of you guys know what it is, but one of my favorite one of my favorite uh things to check out. NYA. Why do I like the NYA? Here, let me get rid of this down here. A quick second here. Why do I like the NYA? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this small, okay? Sorry about that, but uh, hold on. Put this up here. And I'm going to mute my screen, okay? We got a few minutes. We can go over this. You should stick around for this. You guys want to see this. This is important. If you don't, if you're not sold on the triggers, some of you actually know that this this is what hedge funds use. By the way, if you don't know, uh, this is what hedge funds use to trade. Often, a lot of times, this is what hedge funds use. You just use trade. So the system that we use is very similar to what not all hedge funds, but what a lot of hedge funds use. Okay. So, in my view. The stock market is made up of accumulation and distribution over time. Uh, humans have humans have the an innate um, wants to accumulate, distribute over time, and uh, they do it cyclically. And you can actually map it. can actually map it going back way, way farther in time. Uh, so this is 1968, right? We can go, we, we can go to the 1800s if you want. Uh, I can bring up a different, uh, a different chart if you want to go back, go back all the way back to the, um, to the uh, 1894. If you ever want to do that, I can do that with you too. We'll do the NYA, um, but this, this works fine for right now. Uh, what I want to show you is, actually, let's go. Let's go farther back in time. Hold on. Give me one quick second. Can I go back on this one all the way to the beginning. I think I can. Nope. Why can't I go all the way back to the beginning right now? Yeah, I can I can get it. Hold on a second here. Let's see how far back I can go with this one. We're gonna we have some fun here today. There we go, right there. There it is. Right down there. Hold on. Give me a second here, boys and girls. We're gonna go back in time. We're gonna get some fun here. We're gonna do some. We have some fun here. Uh, keep going. I'm breaking the internet right now doing this. You turn some shit off in the background. We're gonna go way back in time. 1897. Woo! 1897. And uh, we're going to look at 
I, I have more of these, but what I really want to show you here is that if you go back to the beginning of time, right, we start to establish uh, accumulation on different accumulation and distribution on different time frames. Here's a great example right here of uh, peaking out on a price divergence to the upside. And that actually is predicting a crash. Uh, we're peaking out, peaking out, peaking out right there, right on a top. Uh, then we have distribution. This actually predicts uh, crashes, believe it or not, whether you know, I don't know if you know that or not. Uh, but not only does it predict crashes, uh, you can predict and we'll do a we'll do a, we'll do a learning segment on this more in depth at some point, but I want to show you something else that's cool. You can actually predict um, peaks right before we get to a top. Do you see it? So you can measure accumulation on multi time frames, and when they all coalesce, you can say we're going to have a crash. This is back in 1929, 1929. So you could have predicted a crash in 1929 here. And you could have, remember people were jumping off buildings, committing suicide. You could have said before we get here, you could have said, we are going to crash. Now there's something else cool about this. There's something else cool about this. You can also predict where we're going to crash to based upon the event or catalyst or catalyst as it's happening. And I'm going to show you this through time, okay? And I want you to pay close attention to what I'm showing you right now. Very close attention. This is the 1929-1930 crash, okay? Do you see this line right here? This is the one-year trigger. So you can tell yourself something. If we were to go into a depression, you can make a thesis. If we were to go into de de a true depression, we've only had one depression. We will break through the yearly trigger in a very violent way. Now, I actually have triggers for this too, but I don't show them to you guys. Um, but you, it, it's too messy. So... You can make a posit here. If we ever have a depression, we will break the one-year trigger. So even today, if we were, if this was this price action was today, and we blasted down to the yearly trigger and we broke below it and rejected it, I would tell you we are going to have a depression. And that would be that move right there. Now I want to show you some other crazy shit, okay? We were in this depression for the 1930s. We recovered. We went back into the war, right? 1940. And we stayed underneath that yearly trigger, didn't we? So if we had a world war, we would trade underneath the yearly trigger as well. So only, historically, only in times of a world war or a depression will we expect to break the yearly trigger. Listen closely to that. As we came into the end of the war, we recovered. We were, the war hadn't ended, though, had it? But the war was coming to an end. World War II, right? What do you notice about this moment in time? Same thing, right? Accumulation, distribution, peak. See it? Right there. 
you can predict the crash before it happens. Make sense? Didn't happen so much here, did it? Peaked out a little bit. I guess for the time, let's measure that and see what that was. Ten percent. Not quite a crash. Just a pullback. What else do we know about this, though? We didn't give up the monthly trigger, did we? We didn't give it up. And then what do they start doing down here? They started accumulating again, didn't they? So you're like, oh, shit, we're going to crash, we're going to crash, we're going to crash. We didn't crash. They started accumulating again. We're back in risk on. Shit, we got to take the market up, right? And they ramped it again, didn't they? So let's look at some more crazy stuff. See the same thing right here? See the same thing right in here? Coming up into a top. We're coming into a top of the market. We're coming to the top of the market. Bam. All the way up. All the way up. All the way up. All the way up. 1987. Remember, they told you they didn't know what was going to happen, right? They tell you that, right? They didn't know. They fucking knew. They fucking knew. But we didn't have computers then, did we? Bam. Crash. Before it even happened. Let's go to today. Let's look at some fun stuff. Before we got to 2019, what did they know? What did they know in February of 2018? What did they know? We were due for a crash. We got a little one. They bought it up some more, but then what else did we see? Declining. The entire time. So we were due for a crash for COVID, weren't we? Say it with me. Yes, we knew that we were going to crash. We needed a catalyst. But what else can you tell from all of this? What else can you tell from all of this? Let's go back and look. Let's go back and look. Dot com crash. Where did we go? Six month trigger. Where do we park it? Where was the bottom? So the so if we have another dot com crash, where would we expect to trade? The six month trigger. If we were to have a crash like two thousand seven and eight. Where would we expect to go and tag perfectly? The year trigger. In the 2007-2008 crash, if we had slipped into a depression, that would have, do you remember when George Bush was sitting on the, on the Capitol steps and he was out there and they were whispering in his ear, you got you to gotta, you gotta release the money with the Senate in the next three days or America's not going to have a paycheck. Walmart workers, McDonald's workers, will not have a paycheck. Guess what would have happened? We'd have slipped underneath and slipped into a depression. Make sense? So you can start to posit things, right? You can say, if we have a dot-com style crash, the lowest you should go is the six-month trigger. If you were to have a major financial meltdown, you would expect to go to the, daily tr the, the, the yearly trigger. If we were to go to a depression, you'd expect to break 
the yearly trigger and go lower, right? If you have a normal crash, where do you expect to go? Where? Tell me. It ain't this one, right? It ain't that one. It ain't that one. It's this one right here, the purple. The purple. This is your quarterly trigger. Your, remember this one that I show you here. Remember that one specifically. So we come into 2022. And we're in a bear market, right? And Mike Wilson came out, and what did he say to you? I expect a move down to what? Right there, 3,200. Remember that? Dow Jones Industrial Average. Or 32,000, excuse me. On SPX, this was 3,200. That When he was calling for this at SPX, it was because he was looking at this fucking chart in his fucking office. So let's look at where we're at right now. What would we, what would we be looking for for a top in the market? Let's look and see. We got a peak right here, don't we? We ain't got shit down here, do we? We have lots of room to go, don't we? This fucking thing hasn't this fucking thing hasn't even gotten started yet, right? Let's just start start just starting. So are we due for a correction? You goddamn right we are. Will we get a correction soon? Yes. But this shit down here ain't matching, is it? So, let's say we get a correction. Stick around with me, gang. And we can actually, look at this one. This one's really high, isn't it? So, your expectation here is going to be, well, we know that we can get this high, right? We know on a weekly basis we can probably go up for a couple more weeks, can't we? We can, and we can come back down, and have our correction this year, major one, big one, doom and gloom, horrible. But we're just getting started here, aren't we? And we're just getting started down here, aren't we? Now, when we're peaked out up here, when we're peaked out up here, and we're peaked out right there, what am I going to say to you? So what am I going to say to you at that point? We could be right up here. And you'd be like, Cappy, you're out of your fucking mind. We're not going to crash. And I'm going to tell you. I'm going to come to you, and I'm going to say, I'm going to say to you, I'm going to say, this fucking thing is about to crash because you're up here, you're up here, and you've come down and up now at the same time. And but we're, we haven't even shown this yet. It's still up. We're still up, and I'm going to come to you on stream, and all those motherfuckers, I shouldn't say motherfuckers, but all those motherfuckers out there that call tops all the time and call bottoms all the time to you and are wrong all the time, I'm going to tell you, remember all those times those assholes are wrong? This is the fucking time to sell it, and I don't give a fuck if we go up another fucking 10 points. They're going to sell the fuck out of this thing. Because what's going to happen is this stuff will start to pull down as price is climbing. There'll be a divergence in price and the, and, the, and the selling of the underlying with you not seeing it. You'll actually see the roll over here, the roll over there, and the roll over there from accumulation. 
you'll see price heading higher, and they're making you the fucking bag holder. Do you understand? So, when I was down here telling you in October, you buy the fuck out of this, it's because I knew that they were fucking accumulating it to go up. And when they back-checked this shit and you said it was going to the shithole, I told you, fuck you, no it isn't. Because they were accumulating on these fucking velocity tracks to go up here. So currently, we are due for a correction. I know that. You know that. We all know that. Now, are we due for a crash? No. Are we due to trade right here? No. Are we due to trade right here? No. Are we due for a hard bounce right there? You goddamn right we are. You buy that with everything. Now, let's say tomorrow, let's say tomorrow, uh, something really terrible happened. And we had a uh, World War III started with China and Russia all at the same time. And you asked me, hey, Cap, where are we going? I would say to you, well, uh, I know for sure that the last time during World War I and World War II, we went down to this right here. If we had a housing meltdown, where did we go? Right here. If we were to have a what, a a a, a, a mag seven, mag seven uh, started to collapse, we'd go right here, wouldn't we? If we were going to have an actual stock market crash today, do you know what today's price is? It's right here. If this market was to crash today, if this was the top, I got you a target right there. And what's the greatest trick that what's the greatest trick that Jerome pulled on your ass? Do you know? Do you know? The greatest trick that Jerome Powell pulled on your ass was time. Time. He bought time. Why did he buy time? Because up here at this crazy top with the crazy shit that happened out there with inflation and the market going crazy, right? We had real risk for danger down here, didn't we? For a severe downside move. Well, guess what he did? He bought time for this number to come up. See it? Came up. So now, this is what's called a soft landing. Now, instead of your risk being there, it's here. So he helped you from all the way back down here. He helped you from this right here. He helped the market from going from there, that severity. From market crash all the way down there, he only took it to right there. So he saved you. He saved your ass. He, what, a, what a good guy. He saved you down here. That's a soft landing. This part of it right here. So, if we have an exogenous event, if we have an exogenous event, <laughs> if we have an exogenous event, we know where it's going. If we begin to go from, uh, uh, from the daily trigger, we see the daily trigger cross. And here's the other thing. I got all kinds of cool shit for you guys. Here, I'll show you one more thing.
I want to show you something else. Notice how the daily trigger does not cross the weekly trigger. Notice that. No risk of crash. No risk of crash, right? All pullbacks. The daily trigger did not fall. Guess when the daily trigger did fall? Right when we're about to crash. The daily trigger crossing the weekly trigger gives you a warning of a potential crash. Sometimes it resolves to the upside, but until then, you're on crash warning. They even gave you an out. We crossed. They even gave you an out with price right there before they really dumped it down and really dumped it down and really dumped it down. See it? See, even this shit didn't cross, did it? Well, it crossed. It did. Well, it did cross right there. Let's look at this pullback in price, but no daily trigger. Watch that. The daily trigger never came down, did it? Just a pullback, or it's a correction. I should re rephrase that. Just a re just a correction. That's it. So we so the daily trigger we can make a posit that when the daily trigger crosses the weekly trigger. When the daily trigger crosses the weekly trigger, we are we are at risk of a crash. Risk of a crash. Now it can resolve back to the upside, but until it does, you are being warned. Imminent crash on its way. With proof. With proof. Not fucking crystal balls. Not crystal balls. Not furu, not any of that bullshit. So when you hear me say these things to you, and someone out there might say to you, that guy's just a fucking furu, they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. They're out of their fucking minds. And to further that point, when you hear them telling you we're going to go into a correction, they actually are the fucking furu. They are the people that don't have a proven system that'll fucking tell you lies because they don't have a way to find out, are we in a correction? Are we in a bull market? Are we accumulating? Are we distribution? Are we going to crash? Are we going, is that thing just a correction or is it a crash? How do you identify the two? I showed you, I showed you price go down without the daily trigger and then come straight back up. That's a correction. I showed you when the daily trigger does cross, that ain't no correction. That's fucking risk off. And people call that shit all day long. You see that shit in the news. Yahoo, fucking Benzinga, fucking FinTwit. You fucking name it. They call that shit all the time. And they have no fucking idea what they're talking about. And the worst part of it is, right? Here's the worst part of it. Here's the worst part of it. When I see million follow motherfuckers out there saying that shit, I go... There is no confirmation of what they're calling right now, and my mind is blown that they're calling it without the confirmation because they got to have some other shit because they're wrong nine out of ten fucking times, 20 out of fucking 40 fucking times. So that's my point to you. And velocity is a key part of this. It's the triggers and velocity at the same fucking time. You got to look at both. And you, what you see, end up seeing is you see the accumulation over time. Then you see them fucking getting out the velocity is leaving on higher time frames, yet price is continuing higher. It's a warning to you to get the fuck out of the market before it happens. And then you see the cross of the, of the daily over the weekly, and you go, fuck that, we're out of here. How many times do they call that shit? How many fucking times? All the time. They do it here. It's going to crash, going to crash, going to crash, going to crash, going to crash. We're too high, we're too high. Going to crash, going to crash, going to crash, going to crash. Not until this moment are we going to crash. And they call it all the time. They don't fucking ever stop fucking calling it. And they're always fucking wrong. So 
Jones. That's true. And people out there know that about me. Mr. Yen said it yesterday. He knows. He fucking knows that I know when we're going to crash. He knows that I know when the where the bottoms are. He fucking knows. He knows that I know when to call a correction. He knows I know when to call a crash. He knows I know when to call a fucking bottom. Every fucking time. Not sometimes. Not one time. Not three times. Not five times. Every fucking time. <laughs> go see who follows me on FinTwit. You should see some of the people that follow me on FinTwit. You should. Go look sometime. <laughs> it's the guys that know. It's the guys that fucking know. The guys that know what they're doing. The, the real gangsters out there. Real gangsters. The real guys that know where the tops are. They know where the bottoms are. They know where the accumulation and the distribution is. Um, so I don't know what else to say to you. And no, they're never going to tell anybody. They're never going to tell their friends. They'll follow Jim James. I'm going to have 20,000 followers for the next 20 years. <laughs> but they're watching. <laughs> I, I assure you that they're watching. I would. I'd be fucking watching me. If I call a correction, you fucking watch the fuck out. If I call a bottom, you watch the fuck out. If I call a crash, you watch the fuck out. That's true. <laughs> all right. Anyways, you all have yourselves a wonderful day. Don't go telling your fucking friends. Just keep it between us. Just you and I. Don't tell your friends. Don't go fucking tell your buddies. I don't want 100,000 followers. I want you. Just you and I, we're hanging out. And we'll do this together, okay? We're going to become friends. We're going to hang out every day. Five years from now, you're going to become fucking awesome. And 10 years from now, you're going to be rich. And I don't know what else to say to you. When I'm dying, you're going to come visit me. <laughs> all right. So I love all of you. I will see you all tomorrow. 446 in the afternoon. Good luck to you tomorrow. I'll see you at 930 in the morning. I'll try to be here early. If, if we're flat on the open tomorrow, I'll try to be here so we can look at some options uh, right on the opening bell. I love you guys. I'll see you all tomorrow. Sorry for the rant. If you stuck around, you learned something today. If you didn't and you get out of here, tough fucking tough titties. <laughs> All right, let's get the fuck on out of here, boys and girls. <laughs> they and thems, let's go.